Welcome to the best course for learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript by building fun and modern projects. In this brand new course, you will learn how to build modern responsive web apps using HTML5, CSS3, and vanilla JavaScript, all from scratch without any copy pasting of a code. It is completely fine if you have no prior knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. All HTML, CSS, and JavaScript syntaxes are explained in detail. All the projects are independently created from scratch, and you can start from any of them. Just choose the projects you are interested in by watching the projects preview. The HTML, CSS, and JavaScript videos are separately recorded, and if you want to learn, for example, only the JavaScript part, simply skip the first two parts. All the project's source codes are available in a GitHub repository, which is provided in the course resource section. This is a fun project-based course that will teach you about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript while building modern, super cool, and responsive websites. My name is Sahan and I'm a web developer with over 16 years of programming experience. I will guide you throughout this course and answer the questions you may have. If you're excited as I am to learn about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and build super amazing websites, then let's get started. Welcome to the project. In this project, we are going to create a dad joke generator. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have a new morphism design, which we are going to make using CSS. Then we have a container in the middle saying dad joke generator. And if you click on this button, we're going to get a joke here that is a typical dad joke. If you click again, we're going to get another random joke. While we are waiting for the joke, we see updating and loading effect inside the text and the button. So we're going to learn how to create the loading effect using JavaScript. Also, we're going to learn how to handle the errors using try catch a statement. So we're going to use JavaScript to add these functionalities and also we're going to use CSS to make this beautiful design. In the next section, we're going to start with the HTML part of the project. So see you in the next section. Welcome back to the project. In this section, we're going to create the HTML part of the project. As you can see, I have put the final version here for our comparison and to compare our project with the final version. As you can see, we have a title here, a paragraph showing the joke, and also we have a button here saying, tell me a joke. The first thing we need to do is to create an HTML file. So we need to open the Visual Studio Code. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code, but you can use any text editor you prefer. So I'm going to open the Visual Studio Code. We need to close the Get Started tab. And here inside the File menu, we click on Open Folder. Here we can create a new folder, which is going to be our project directory and we need to create the files inside that folder. I would like to create the project in my desktop. So I click here on desktop and here we can click on the new folder to create a new folder. And I'm going to call it the name of the project, which is dad jokes generator. After writing down the name of the project, we, we can click or press enter to choose the name. And now we can click on the select folder to select the folder. This is going to open the folder inside the Visual Studio Code. As you can see here, inside the Explorer, we have the Ad Jokes Generator folder. 
Now we can create the HTML file here. First we close the get started tab again and here we click on this icon to create a new file or we can right click and click on new file to create a new file and we call the file index.html and this is going to open the file on the right side which is completely empty but we can use an exclamation mark to create an HTML boilerplate. So we write down an exclamation mark. This is going to suggest us the uh, an auto suggestion from Emmet abbreviation, which gives us this boilerplate. So we click on the first auto suggestion to get the HTML boilerplate. I'm going to explain this one briefly if you, this is your first project. So the first line here is the doc type tab ta tag which is going to tell the browser what version of HTML we are using. As we are using HTML5, we need to have only HTML here. Then we have the HTML tag which covers the head and the body tag. The lang attribute inside the HTML opening tag sets the language of the page. And as we are using a, a language in English, we need to set this one to EN. Then we have the head tag, which has the metadata tags and also the title tag. The first metadata tag sets the char set attributes and HTML5 recommends us to use UTF-8 because UTF-8 nearly contains all the characters and symbols. So the users inside our website or the person who is using our website won't have any problem seeing the characters and symbols using inside our project or inside our website. The next metadata tag is the compatibility metadata tag, which tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine, which is Edge. Then we have the viewport metadata tag, which sets the width of the screen to the device's width. This means that when we are using a smaller screen, like a mobile screen, the width of the browser the width of the page would be smaller when we are using a bigger a screen like a tablet or a computer. The next section is the initial scale level. This one sets the initial zoom level of the browser and by default it sets to be 100%. So if you want to browser to be in 90% you just put Point 0.9 for example. Then we have the title tag which sets the title of the page. The title is now by default is document but it can be anything else. So let me show you this one inside the browser. So for opening the HTML file inside the browser you can go to this uh, folder that you have created. You open the index.html file or you can use an extension called live server that we have in installed. If you want to install this one, you just use Ctrl Shift X to open the extensions and here search for live server. This is the extension I use to create a live server. So you can here click on install to install the live server and when you have this extension you can just click here on go live to go uh, and see the this HTML file inside the your default browser which in my case is Chrome Google Chrome so as you can see the website is completely empty but it has a title document. Let's bring the website on the right side and the Visual Studio Code on the left side. 
Let's close the disk explorer section by dragging it to the left side so we have we have more space on the left side. We can change the title to the name of our project, which is Dad Jokes Generator. You can see that the changes is applied in real time inside the browser. So if you have any problem with this extension, let me know in the comments so I I'm, I'm, I'm can help you through the extension. So let's continue our project and we go to the body section and add all uh, other elements inside the project. So if you look at the final version, we can see, let me show you here by drawing. So we have a container at the middle. So it has a box shadow, you can see the container. It, this is just a div with a class of container. Then we have the title here, which is a head h1 tag. Then we have this font, which is which can be a paragraph or h2 tag. Then finally we have the button here. So let's uh, start with the container. So we go to our website. And inside the body section, we add a div with a class of container. We can do that by just adding a dot and we just say container. And this is going to suggest us, as you can see the emit abbreviation, a div with a class of container. Now we can choose the, this auto suggestion to get the div with a class of container. Inside this div, we're going to have an h1 tag with a class of heading. I usually use class because later we're going to use CSS to install this, for example, div or this h1 tag. So we can simply target them inside the CSS using that class. I'm going to show you how inside the CSS section. So we're going to create a, an h1 tag with a class of heading. I press enter to accept the image. Then I write down the name of our project, which is dad joke generator. So with the bigger G. So you can see it here. As you can see, it doesn't have any style. It's uh, this is just the default styling. But later we are going to use JavaScript. Uh, we are going to use CSS to style this. All right. So after the H1 tag, we're going to have a paragraph with a class of joke and with the ID of joke. For ID, we add hashtag or pound sign. So you can see we have a paragraph with a class of joke and ID of joke. I just write down here, for example, that joke. This is just the hard coded text. And uh, later we're going to create a new joke each time we request from an API using JavaScript. But for now, we just hard code it because we want to style it in the next section using CSS. After this paragraph, I'm going to add a button with a class of BTN, short for button and an ID of button. And this is going to create us a button with the class of BTN and ID of BTN. And here inside the button, we're going to say, tell me a joke. So that was it for the HTML part of the project. In the next section, we're going to use CSS to create the project like the one in the final version. We're going to add and create this container. We add this box shadow. We're going to create this title with the text shadow effect. And also we're going to create this button with this beautiful hovering effect. So see you in the next section for the CSS part of the project.
All right, in the last section, we have completed the HTML part of the project. In this section, we're going to work on a styling of the project using CSS. If you look at the final version of the project, we can see that we have a background with a linear gradient color with three colors, the blue light, and uh, we have a light pink and also we have a light blue here so then we have a container in the middle with a box shadow we have a headline with the text shadow saying dad jokes generator and we have a paragraph at the middle and finally we have a button with hovering effect so the first thing we need to do is to create the CSS file of the project. We need to create it in the same folder. We can open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And here we click on this icon to create a new file. And we call it a style.css. Before using this CSS file, we need to add a link to this file within the HTML code so we need to come back to the html code let me close the explorer section just after the title tag we need to add a link tag to the style.css file so we add and we write down link and we can click on the third auto suggestion the one with the css now we have a link tag with the relationship between the HTML file and the CSS file. Here, the href attribute defines the destination of the link. And as both files are located at the same directory, the destination is just style.css. Let's uh, start with the CSS file here. I want to start with the body section. So I'm going to go to the, our project page and also let's start with the body section as the body tag which can target the body tag using body and we open a set of curly braces here we write down our css code here the first one is to remove the default margin of the browser so we have a some sort of margin as a default we can remove that using margin zero after that i want to change the background color so i'll just use the background and i want to use a linear gradient like this as you can see the linear gradient is created by a specifying a straight gradient line and then several colors place along that line so we, we're going to specify the line then we're going to add the colors at the end so first we add this one i want it to be to left bottom so this is going to to left button this is going to divide the screen from a uh, from the diameter and then we can specify the colors so the first color is light blue the second one is light pink and the last one is light blue again so let's refresh the page so as you can see we have the pattern but it's repetitive based on the size of this body section because the body is not defined yet the size of the, the body we can set the mean height of the body to be at least 100 percent of the viewport height so this is going to set the height at least the size of the browser so any zoom level we see that the size is the same and then we can bring them bring everything to the center using display flex 
we can use justify content center to bring everything to the center horizontally. Then we can use align item center to bring everything to the center vertically. But before using the align items, you also need to add this min height 100%. Otherwise, you cannot bring it to the center vertically. I want to change the font family to be monospace this color this uh, font and uh, so that's it for the body section so let's install the container and make it like this container so the container if you look at the index.html, the, uh, the div has the class of container. Because it is a class, we can uh, target that one inside the CSS file using dot. So we just say dot container. So let's uh, first change the background color of that. I want to use RGBA, which stands for red, green, blue, and alpha. So we're going to create a color based on the red, green, and blue, and we're going to change the alpha value for transparency. So uh, for the red, green, and blue, I want to use 255, and this is going to give us a white color. Then I want it to be 30% transparent by choosing 0.3 for the alpha value. This is going to give us a glassy design. And then after that, I want to add a padding. So we add a space around the elements inside the box using padding. And we're going to set it to be 20 pixels. Let's uh, add a box shadow. So the box shadow is going to be zero so let me show it here so the box shadow changes the drop shadow from an outer shadow so for changing the box shadow we need to add four things to the box shadow the x axis value the y axis the blurness and also the color so the first one is the X axis is going to be zero for us. Then we have six pixels for the Y axis. We can see here, but it is completely solid. We want to add some blurness to it. So I'm going to add 10 pixels blurness. As you can see, it became blur. And also we have some shadow around the element too, but this is too dark to, to looks like a shadow. We can, change its opacity using an RGBA here as well, which stands for the red, green, blue, and alpha. For the red, green, blue, we add here 0, 0, 0, which stands for black color. And then I'm going to add 0.3, which is 30% transparency for the alpha value. So, now I'm going to add the border radius because I want to make the corner of the box to be rounded. So 50, 50 pixels for the border radius. And let's uh, change the width of the container to be 85%. So this one is going to cover 80% of the screen. If you have a bigger screen, you have more space on the left and right side. And this is always actually responsive. For any device size, you have just the 85%. Finally, we're going to add I want to bring everything to the center using text align center, which is going to bring all the texts inside in the middle. Let's change the color of the text to be 
dark green. This is going to change the color of the text and this title. So that was it for the container part. Now it's time to install this heading. Inside index.html, we can see the heading, the h1 tag has, the, has a class of heading with the name heading. So we can target that one using dot heading. And here we can change the size by using font size. I want the size of the text to be larger with 35 pixels. Then let's change the font weight, which is the thickness of the font to be 200. I want it to be very thin, but I want to change the font family to impact. The font family impact is actually is very thick. That's why I have used the font weight 200. So impact, let me add this. Uh, that is not font weight, sorry, it's font family. So the font family I wanna use is impact, the first one. So this is going to create a kind of solid and thick font. Now we can add some text shadow as well. So we can make it extend out more in the website. So we just change the text shadow. Text shadow is very similar to box shadow. It has the same parameters. X, Y, blurness, and the color. So we can add 5 pixels for the X axis, 5 pixels for the Y axis, 2 pixels blurness, and also we can change the RGBA color, use the black with the 30% transparency, and we get this beautiful design. And also I want to add more space between the letters. So I'm going to change the letter spacing, which add the space for the current font. It is typically zero length. For now, the default is zero. If you use the normal, it's going to be zero. I'm, I'm going to use two pixels for that. So this is going to add some space between letters so we can easily read them. So after the heading, I'm going to uh, install this paragraph, which has the class of joke. So we can target that one inside CSS by just saying dot joke. And this is going to be similar. We're going to add a font size of 18, uh, sorry, 25 pixels to make it bigger. I want to change the thickness by changing the font weight to be 500. And also I want to add some margin around the text to be, for example, 40 pixels because I want to have some space around this element. So that was it for this joke part. Let's install this button. This is the last things we need to install in our project. So the button has the class of BTN. We can target that one inside CSS using dot BTN. First change, we change the font size to be 18 pixels. Then let's change the font weight to be 700. I want it to be a little bit thicker. Then let's add some border radius to make it rounded in the corners using border radius and we can set it to be 5 pixels. Let's set the cursor to be pointer so when we hover over it we see a pointing hand like this. And finally let's add some 
padding of 10 pixels to add some space around it. So that uh, it's okay now, but we can uh, work more on it. I want to add some background color and border color too to make it more beautiful. So we can set the background color to a RGBA with a white color with 30% transparency, which gives us the same color as the container. But when we have a border, it's going to uh, stand out. So I'm going to add a border color. So the border color uh, I, I want to use is RGBA white, but instead of 30% transparency, I want to use 60% transparency. So it's going to be a very beautiful button. And I want it, uh, it to be uppercase. So I'm going to change the text transform. So let's add this here. Text transform. And this is going to be capitalized or uppercase. I want all the, all the letters to be uppercase. So this is going to uppercase the letters. Let's set the, I think that's okay. We can set the width too, to be 300 pixels. So make it a little bit larger. And also I want, I want to change the color of the text to be dark green too. The last things I want to do is to add a hovering effect. When we hover over it, I want to add some box shadow and some back uh, changing in the background color. So we can target the hover effect using the hover pseudo class by just adding a clone with hover at the end. And here we can change the background color we use the RGBA, but instead of 30% transparency, which is the color of the button, I want to add, uh, change it to 50% transparency. So when we hover over it, we see a different opacity for the background color. Then let's change the box shadow. So we add some box shadow, we set it to be zero for the X axis, four pixels for the Y axis, four pixels for the blurness. And we use RGBA black color with the 30% transparency. And see, this is the shadow it comes, but it's very fast. I'm going to add some transition to make it smoother. Uh, the transition I want to add is uh, I'm going to add the transition to everything with 300 milliseconds duration and with the ease effect. So this is going to be similar to this one. All right. So that was it for the button section. And also we have finished the CSS part of the project. In the next section, we're going to add more functionality to the project using JavaScript. We're going to create, uh, sign up for an API that which gives us a random dad jokes. And when we click on this button, we're going to fetch the new joke from the API, and we're going to add the updating and loading effect to the button and this text. So see you in the next section for the JavaScript part of the project. All right, in the last section, we have completed the CSS part of the project. In this section, we're going to add more functionalities to the project using JavaScript. The first things we need to do is to create a JavaScript file inside the folder that we have created. We can do that by just opening the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And here inside the Explorer section, we click 
we can right click or we can uh, just click on this icon to create a new file and we can call the file index or some people say the script.js it doesn't matter it's just a name so index.js now we have to add a link to the index.js file within the html file to, in order to use the javascript on the contrary to the css file instead of adding the link at the top inside the head section we need to add the link to the javascript file at the end of the body section and the reason for that is we want to these elements to be loaded first inside the browser and then we can have access to them and manipulate them using JavaScript. In order to have a link between the HTML file and the JavaScript file, we need to add a script tag here. We just write down SC and we click on the second auto suggestion, the one with the SRC. The SRC is the destination of the file and as both files, I mean the index.html and index.js are located at the same directory, we can just write down index.js for the address of the file without any uh, slash or other things. So we can use the JavaScript file now inside the project. Let's close the explorer section so we have we can see everything inside the project. The first things we need to do to add an event listener to this button. So when we click on the button, we're going to call a function. So we go to, uh, first we need to see that uh, which ID it, the button has. The, by, the button has the ID of BTN. So we can just target that one using a method called get element by id from javascript so we need to create a constant here and we call the constant btn which stands for button and we add el at the end which stands for element so we just say const btn element this is just a name you can name this one anything you like but this is just a convention and this is the way i used to name everything inside javascript we want to target the browser everything inside browser so we we should target the document inside the browser and we can use the get element by id method to call that id which is btn the id of the button was btn so now we have access to that element so we can add the event listener to the button now so we just say btn element dot add event listener and the event we want to add is click so when we click on this button we want to trigger a function and we, we want to call the function you can call it anything you want but i'm gonna call it get joke so this function is going to get a joke when we call it so I'm going to create the function here. I call it get joke. Just for testing with that our JavaScript file is working or not. So I'm going to console log something. For example, I just say clicked. So now inside the browser, let's open the console using F12 or you can use Ctrl Shift C and here inside the menu you choose the console. So make sure the console is selected here and uh, as you can see it is completely empty but when we click on the button it should the uh, console lock so maybe we need to refresh the page uh, because uh, it, we didn't use it for a while so we need to refresh the page. Now I click on the button you see that the it console logged clicked if you click again we see double click so it has a number two so we can add more and more instead of just console login click we want to fetch a joke 
from an API. So the API I want to use for fetching random jokes is called API Ninjas. So if we search for API Ninjas on Google, Ninjas, sorry. So when you search API Ninjas on Google, there is a website in the search result called api-ninjas.com. So if you click on this website, this is a website that offers almost, um, this is uh, they claim the 68 data APIs. So uh, if I show you the APIs, when we click here on the top on API, they have plenty of APIs. For example, you can get the animal details, you can get air quality, airports data, you can get a random cat image. You can get the information about cities, cocktails, and etc. The one we want to use is this dad jokes. If you click on it, they're going to show you the demo of how it works. For example, the sample request URL, this is a live demo. There is a URL, the URL address, let me zoom this. You can see it better. The URL is api.api-ninjas.com forward slash v1. This is the version of the API. And we just add that jokes. We can set the limits. So the, it sets the limit to one. So when we click on send request, this is going to give us a random joke here. So this is a joke comes. My wife and I were out for dinner or something. So this is the way it works. But if you copy this one and go to a new place and add the limit one and press enter, it doesn't give you anything. It doesn't give you the joke and it gives you an error saying missing API key. So we should see it now. So we need to apply for the API key. And also, if you don't see it like this, I have an extension installed on Google Chrome called JSON Formatter. So just go and install this JSON Formatter on Google Chrome. This is going to help you to see the, the JSON files like this. If you haven't installed this one, you should see it like that one. Error missing APIs. That is fine too. But for having the seeing and which, uh, for example, it has it is the object or other things, it's better to install that extension. The, uh, getting for the API is actually it's simple and it's free for fifty thousand requests. So if you go to the premium section, you can see the. Annual one doesn't have, if you choose the monthly, they have a free API request, $0 per month, but it's limited to 50,000 API calls per month. That is enough for you to start your projects and just build your website. But if you get more API calls, you can buy the, for example, developer or learner or business account so this is uh, this one you can have up to 1 million api calls per month but this api is actually for all of them for example if you use other apis so this 50000 is for all of them together so if you have two websites you have to be careful so to use it so you can just get the for example 20 dollars per month so you have 1 million calls a month so that's going to help you to build more projects so i'm going to build more projects using this website later but for today we just created that jokes one in order to get the api you need to sign up here uh, for example i sign up with one of my emails 
I have signed up with another email. I'm going to change the email. So that's my name. And this is my email code with Sahan at gmail.com. So let's choose a password. So I just choose something I can remember. All right. So after that, we, we can click on register. So now we need to check our uh, Gmail account. Let me check my Gmail. And I'll, I, I should get the API, this email, your API Ninja verification, verification link. If you click on verify email, you can verify your email account and then you can log in and use the website. So I already, uh, as you can see, your registration has been confirmed. Now I can come back to the website and log in with my email and my password. So let me quickly add my details. All right, so now, as you can see, now I'm in my account, so I can get the API key here. So, and, and this is going to show us how many calls we already done. So you can just track off your uh, website data from here too. So when we click on the show API, you can copy your API key. So don't use my API key because I'm going to change it after the video, but you can simply sign in and get this free API key and use the website. So I'm going to click here to copy it and let's come back to the index.js and let's create a variable here called API key. And this is going to be equal that API key and I put it inside a clone. So that was it for this section. And uh, let's go back to the API and I'll show you how this one works. If you go to the dad jokes. So this one is actually for the requesting. But for the API, we need to add the API. If you look at the JavaScript here inside the code examples, you need to add the API uh, key here inside the headers. We can simply do that one by just adding it as an option. And when we are fetching, we can add that option to get that one. So the method is get and the option, and we need to add the API key inside the headers. So let's do that one. I'm going to show you how to do it. So we create another constant and we call it options. And this is going to be equal to first we just define the method. The method is get because we are requesting for the data. We want to get the information. So we just say get method. And for the headers, you just have to write down headers. And the headers is an object which has the x dash. x is capitalized, is uppercase. API should be like that. API uppercase dash key uh, should be capitalized too. And this one is equal to the API key that we have created here at the top. So in this way, we can uh, pass the options to the request and get the information. So instead of getting the jokes, let me fetch the data. So I'm going to create a constant and we, I call it response. Response, I want to get uh, get the data and put it this in this response. So we use a method called fetch, which is coming from the JavaScript. If we have to uh, 
at the two things here we need to add the this address here i'm gonna copy this one i'm just gonna create another variable here this one i'm gonna call it i create a constant and call it api url and this is going to be equal to that address that we have copied but the limit should be one so you add a one here too so for fetching we need to pass this api url and also we need to pass the options that we have created here at the top so two things we need to add for the fetch now we get the res response but we need to convert this response to the json file so we can see it uh, inside the console log or we can use this data otherwise we cannot use it so we just create another constant and we call it data and this is going to be equal to this response that we get dot json json is a method inside javascript to convert the data to json So now we have the data. Let's console log the data and we'll see what we have inside the data. Okay. So let's go back to our website, which is here. I'm going to open the console using F12. When we click on the button, so first we got an error. We said the is not a function. This means that response is empty actually. So let's see what mistake we have done. So the API URL is this. We got the API key. That is correct. The method is get. This is the headers. So I close everything, uh, this one, and I, I pass the API URL and the options. So let's see. So uh, the things here, because maybe we have we are changing the JSON before we get the data. Because this uh, the JavaScript works like that. It goes one line by line. It goes to this line. Before getting the data, sometimes can be can go to the next line. We need to wait to this line, get this response, and then change it to JSON. But this one is not possible if you just use the fetch. We need to change this one to asynchronous. We need to add a wait here to wait for the response. But when you use a wait, you need to change the function to asynchronous. So this is going to wait here, fill this constant, and then is this is going to change it to json and also we can add a wait here so to wait for the changing to the json too and then we console log the data so let's try it now so when we click now you see it there was a delay and we saw the results so that was the problem first time so we, we got an error so now we got the result and this is a joke you can see here. Each time we click on the button, we should see a new joke. So I'm get, I click again. After a few seconds, we see another joke, which is completely different. And it's unique. So there, this is going to create a random jokes each time we click on the button. So we, we got this information now we need to fill this inside this one and see the result so this is it an object because it has a this uh, bracket and then so this is the we, this is an array sorry so we need to uh, tap to this array 
which is only one, which we just have to say zero, the first element of the array. So let's console log this one. So instead of the array, now we just got this object, which has the joke inside this joke. So we can tap to the joke too. We just say dot joke. Now, if we console log, we should just see the joke here. All right. So we should fill this uh, section with the joke. But how we get this one and how we change it. So inside the index.html, we can see that that joke is, this is just a paragraph. And the ID of this paragraph is joke. So we can target that one inside the JavaScript by just creating another constant and we call it joke element. And this is going to be equal to document and we use the method get element by ID and the ID is joke. So now we have access to this elements. Now we can change the text inside the element using inner text method. So we just, instead of console login, I'm gonna uh, just say joke element dot inner text. So this is going to change the text inside that element. And this is going to be equal, remember data, the first, element of the array and then joke. So now if we click on this button, we should see instead of that joke, we should see a joke here after a while. As you can see each time we click, but you know, there is a delay because we need to get the information from the API. So instead of just waiting and we don't know it's really working or not, we need to add some loading effect. So instead of showing this text, when we click, we can say just updating. So let me do it for you. So when we click uh, for the button, we call this function. And before fetching the data, we change this joke element dot inner text to, for example, we just say updating, all right? We just say updating. When we click, we see updating, and then we see the results. And if you click again, we see updating. So uh, let me add some dots here to so make more sense. Okay. But the other things, there is a, another problem. When we click, we can click again, and this is gonna uh, mess up. So when we are waiting for the response, I'm gonna disable this button. And we just say here, loading two. So when we are waiting, I'm gonna disable the button. Uh, we have access to the button because we have brought the button here, and we call it BTN element. So we just say btn element here. First, I wanna disable it. So I'm gonna to target to disabled and set this one to true. So I'm gonna disable it. And also I wanna change the, uh, in the inner text of inside it, the text inside it to be uh, loading, for example. So anything can be, but I just write down loading. So when we click now, the button doesn't work uh, and it's loading. But it doesn't work now, even we got the joke. So after we get the joke, we, we have to return the button to the normal one. So I'm gonna copy this one. After getting the joke here, I'm gonna set the dis, uh, disable to false and the text would be Tell me a joke. Okay. So I'm going to click. It's going to update. When the joke comes, the button comes back to tell me a joke. But now it's loading. Okay. 
So we have added these uh, situations, the loading effects. The other things is important when you're working with API is catching the error. For example, if you go to the network, inside the network, you can like a, uh, by simulation, you can just, for example, make the internet as slow, even you can make yourself offline. So when I click offline, actually, I don't have to access the internet now inside the browser in this page. So when I click on the button, this is going to show the updating all the time, but I don't know why it's showing the updating. So I'm going to click here more or this is good. Uh, this is not efficient. So if an, an error happens or there is no response from the API, we should see an error here saying, for example, an error happens. But how do we know that an error happens? So instead of just putting everything here, we can use a method called try and catch. So try and catch, when you write down try, you see inside the suggestion, there is a try catch statement. You can click on that. So we bring everything inside the try. So I'm going to cut this one inside the try. And then this is going to try to get, catch the data. But if an error happens, this is going to show us the error. For example, if I console log the error, Let's see now. Let's open it. Let's open the console using F12 again. You see that it's still we are offline. Let's bring it to the online. Refresh this one so we get the data. Now I'm going to put it to offline and I click on tell me a joke. Now I go to console. We see the error. As you can see, we've we got the uh, error and the error is internet disconnected all right so any error happens you can get here and also you can make some ma manipulation too for example here i say if an error happens instead of uh, showing this data the joke let me copy this instead of this one i want to say an error happens let me show it here an error happens happened try again later so now if you come back to our website and let me refresh this one and put it again on offline. So if you click on the tell me a joke, when there is an error happens, we see that it says an error happened, try again later. So this is going to protect us from any error that may happen to the user. Maybe they don't have internet or maybe uh, the API doesn't work that time. So they're gonna see that an error happens, try again later. But the button is still loading, so we can bring back the button to the normal by just copying this section and put it here. So this is going to make the button enabled and change the inner text to tell me a joke. So let's try again. So I'm going to click here. We have an error here because we don't have internet. So an error happens, try again later. And we have the button we can try again and we got the error again but if we have the internet and we try we see that we get the joke with no problem all right that was it for the our project i hope you enjoyed and learned many things we have learned how to use try and catch method to uh, understand the error inside the project and the API request. We have learned how to use fetch to fetch data from an API. 
We have learned how to use an API by passing the options for the methods and the headers. And finally, we have learned how to apply the loading effects, which uh, for example, we before the fetching, we have to say updating or loading. And after the fetching, we should sh show the result and bring back the situation to the normal by just, uh, for example, saying that btn disable is false and bring back the, the text to the normal one. I hope you enjoyed and learned many things. See you in the next project. Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create a feedback UI. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have three ratings here, unhappy, neutral, and satisfied. We have a hovering effect for each of them. And if we click on one of them, for example, the unhappy, we're going to add an active this rating uh, which is going to change the background color of this rating. And then when we click on this button, send review, this is going to show us thank you and show the name of the feedback that we have selected. For example, here the feedback is unhappy. If we refresh the page, we can choose another feedback. For example, I choose satisfied. If I click on send review, I see the feedback is changed to satisfy. In this project, we're going to learn firstly, how to style the project with this design, how to add the background color, how to create a container with box shadow. And then we're going to learn how to use JavaScript to add and remove a class to activate a rating and also we're going to learn how to add an event listener to this button which is going to trigger a function and this is going to get the inner text of each rating and show it inside the other uh, text which is going to show the feedback. In the next section we're going to start with the HTML part of the project. So see you in the next section. All right, welcome back. In this section, we're going to start working on the HTML file of the project. I put the final version here for our comparison and we see what we're going to build in this section. So let me just show you so now, as you can see, we just have a div here with a class of container, which is covering everything. This is the container we have. Then we have a title. Uh, after that, we have another div that is covering all these uh, emojis and ratings. And each of them, it has its own div. This is a div, this is a div, and this is a div. And inside the div, we have an image and some label. And finally, we have the button at the here. So uh, let's first create the HTML file of the project. So I'm going to create the project inside Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to use Visual Studio Code for my text editor. After opening the, opening the Visual Studio Code, we can close the Get Started tab by clicking on here. And here inside the File menu, we can click on the Open Folder to create a new folder for the project. I want to create the project inside my desktop. So I click on Desktop and I create a new folder and I call it the name of the project, which is Feedback UI. So we, uh, we press enter to create the folder. And now we can click here 
on the select folder to select the folder. Now we close the get started tab again and inside the explorer section, which is now on the folder that we have created feedback UI, we click on this icon to create a new file and we call it index.html and uh, we press enter. Now we have the file on the right side. We can close the explorer section to have more space. The file is completely empty, but we can have simply a HTML boilerplate using an exclamation mark. So we can just write an exclamation mark and we click on the first auto suggestion, the one that is suggested by Emmet abbreviation. So this is going to create a, an HTML boilerplate. So let me explain this real quick. If you, uh, this is your first project. So the doc type here sets the, and tells the browser which version of HTML we are writing the code. And as we are using HTML5, we have to add HTML as an attribute inside this uh, doc type. After that, we have the HTML tag, which is covering both of the head tag and the body section. The, the lang attribute here inside the opening HTML tag sets the language of the page. And by default, uh, with the boilerplate, we have the English for the language inside the browser. Then we have the head tag, which has three metadata tags and also a title tag. The first metadata tag sets the charset attribute and we, we choose UTF-8, which is recommended by HTML5 because it nearly contains all the characters and symbols and the users inside the browser won't have any problem uh, using uh, our website. Then we have the compatibility metadata tag, which tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine, which is Edge. So the users who are using still Internet Explorer won't have any problem. After that, we have the viewport metadata tag, which sets the width of the screen, width of the browser to the device's width. So this is going to adjust the width of the browser to the your device that you're using the browser. For example, you're watching the website inside your phone or tablet or desktop. The browser is going to set the width based on that device size. And finally, we have the initial scale, which is the initial zoom level of the browser. And we set it to be 100% by just choosing one here. Then we have the title tag, which sets the title of the page. So let's, uh, let me show you the, this HTML file inside the browser. If you have the extension, uh, which is called the live server. If you click on go live at the bottom of your Visual Studio code, you're going to open this HTML file inside a server that is created by that extension on port 5500. And the title is document. Let's bring the website on the right side so we can have a real time change inside the browser and see it. So let's change the title first to the name of our project, which is feedback UI. So you can see that the, the website is changed to feedback UI. Now it's time to work on the body section and create our website similar to the one in the final version. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we, we want to create a container here, an empty container, and put everything inside it. So we're going to 
add a div inside the body section by just adding dot and we just uh, add a class to it we call it container and also we want to add a, an id of container because we're going to style this using css later we can use this class to target that inside the css and we can target this div using this id because we want to change inside this for example if you choose the first one and click send review you see that entire containers content is changed so we want to target that container and uh, change its html like this using javascript so later we're going to use this id inside this div with a class of container we're going to add the heading first so we add a h1 tag we add a h1 tag with a class of heading because we want to style it later using css using this class so we just write h1 dot heading after pressing the enter we get this h1 tag with a class of heading then we just write down inside this heading tag the name of the project which is feedback ui so you can see it here inside the browser after the h1 tag we're going to as i mentioned before we're going to have a div here and inside the div we're going to have three divs so i'm going to add one div and i call this div uh, I'm, I'm going to add a class of the ratings ratings dash container and also we can add a, an id of rating container for in order to use it later using uh, javascript so rating dash container for the id as well so inside this div let me save this one to so now we have this div inside the div we're going to have another uh, we're going to have three divs so the first div is going to be the with the class of rating then uh, inside this div we're going to have an image img tag so for the src we're going to have the that emoji this emoji here we got I got these emojis from a website called uh, Flat Icon. So if you go to Google and we search for Flat Icons or Flat Icon, as you can see in this in the search result, we we are going to use a website called FlatIcon.com. Let's go to this website. And here I'm going to search for a icon with the name of uh, I just search for emoji first see what sort of emojis they have so we see the many emojis with different things so emoji for example the first one this one is unhappy so i just search for unhappy one and it can be this one or this one with the line you can click on it and here you can get the link of this so let me show you how to do it so you just need to right click and click on the copy image address and you go back here and you paste it here now if you look at the our website we see the emoji here so after the image we don't need a alternative for this one 
after the image we're going to have a small tag and we just say on happy so we can see it here so this is kind of huge but we're going to use css later to style this so for now we're going to uh, let's just finish uh, these three uh, containers so I'm going to copy this one to, uh, two more times using Alt Shift Arrow Done and uh, I just changed this one to Neutral. The last one I changed it to Satisfied and let's change them as well. So we search for another emoji. Uh, we call it neutral, yeah. Neutral. We search, we see we can find something neutral uh, like this one. So we can copy this one using uh, right click and click on copy image address. And I change the second one SRC to that one. And uh, let's search for the happy one or satisfied so i search for happy i feel this is okay and we just right click and click on copy image address and we put it inside the last one here so let's check that we have all of them okay so we have all of them here so let's close the flat icons website so we, we just need to search flat icon and this is completely free and you can use it as much as you want for the image emojis here so let's uh, continue and create this button so the button is outside the ratings container so this is the rating container Outside that, we're going to create a button with a class of BTN and also with the ID of BTN. As I mentioned before, the class is for the styling and ID is for you, uh, targeting it using JavaScript. The ID is unique. You cannot use this BTN anywhere else inside the HTML file. But class can be used in different places. So usually people use class for the styling and they use ID for the JavaScript. So inside the button, we're going to say send review. Okay. You can see the button here at the bottom. All right, so the, that was it for the HTML part of the project. In the next section, we're going to install this project using CSS. And we're going to make it like this final version. We're going to add a background color. And also, we're going to design this container using box shadow. And also, we want to add some shadow effect to the button and this hovering effect for the uh, emoji and the rating sections. So see you in the next section for the CSS part of the project. Welcome back. In this section, we're going to start styling the project using CSS. If you look at the final version, we see that uh, we have a background uh, color, a light blue color, and then the container here is just a box shadow. It has a shadow effect. And we have here a hovering effect with transition. And finally, we have another hovering effect for the button. And also, when we click on the button, we see the animation inside the button as well. So we're going to create these animations and effects using CSS.
The first thing we need to do is to create a CSS file. So inside the Visual Studio Code, we open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And here inside the Explorer section, we create a new file by clicking on this icon and we call the file as style.css. Before using the CSS file, we need to add a link to the CSS file within the HTML file. So we go back to index.html just after the title tag we create a link tag. We just write down link and we get the auto suggestion link with the CSS. And this is going to create a link tag for us with the relationship between the HTML file and the style.css. And with the destination of the file, the href attribute is just a style.css because both files are located at the same directory. Let's close the Explorer section to have more space here. And we go to style.css to start installing our project. As you can see, the emojis are huge now. They are so big and we cannot see the other styling before I style this emoji. I wanna just target first, firstly the emojis, make them smaller and then we can uh, continue uh, style the other sections. Inside the index.html, the emojis are inside a div with a class of rating. And so we need to target that class and also the image inside this rating. So we can do that by just saying dot rating to target the rating class. And then we add a space and we just say IMG. We target that uh, tag. So now we can install the, all the images. We just set the width of them to be 40 pixels. And let's refresh this page and we see the changes. So now they're, they're the same size of the final version. Now we can style other parts and see the changes here. So I usually start from the body section and I would I recommend that you do it the same way. So we do, we target the body section by just saying body and adding a set of curly braces. First, I wanna remove the margin, the default margin. I set it to be zero. So we remove the space between the emojis or the anything else and with the wall of the browser. After that, I want to change the background color to be light cyan. That's that, that one. This is kind of bluish color, light blue color. And let's change the color of the texts to be dark green. So this is going to change the text like feed UI and other things. So for bringing everything to the center, we need to do two things. First, we need to change the display to flex to be able to change the position of the elements. Then we need to set the height of the screen as well. So first thing first, I change the display to flex. And then we set the mean height of the screen to be 100% of the viewport height. So this is the way that we have always the size of the browser at least 100%. In this way, we can bring the elements to the center vertically so we can now just use the justify content center to bring everything to the center horizontally and then align item center to bring everything to the center vertically. But without this mean height, we couldn't use align items.
All right, so the other things I want to do here inside the body section, I want to change the font family of the all texts to be mono space. All right, so that's a nice uh, font. Uh, let me zoom this a little bit so you can see it better. The next things I want to style is this uh, container here. If you look at the final version, you see we have a container that has everything inside it and it has some box shadow and etc. So we can target that one by just targeting this container. This div at the top with a class of container. So but because it is a class, we need to add a dot here and after that we're going to, we're going to add the container container okay container this way let's change the background color because i wanted to keep the background color and make it kind of glassy design this one should be black uh, background because i want to add an rgba color rgba color actually stands for red green blue and alpha for red green and blue i set 255 which gives us a white color then i want this white color to be 30 percent transparent by changing the alpha value of the rgba so now we see it like this it's not completely visible but we can add a box shadow to make it more visible so I just changed the box shadow. The box shadow gets a few parameters. The first one is the shadow in the X axis. The second one is the shadow inside the Y axis. Okay, you can see it here. The third one is the blurness is 10 pixels. You can see the, the color of the shadow is green as well. So we can change this one by using another RGBA. For red, green, and blue, I use 0, 0, and 0, which gives us the black color. Then we use 0.3 for 30% transparency. Now, so it should be like that. And we set the border radius. I wanted to make the corners to be uh, rounded, so I changed the border radius to be 10 pixels. The other things I want to do is add some space around the elements inside this container by just adding padding 20 pixels. I want to set the width of this container to be 85%. So if you remove the zoom level, you see that uh, this is 85%. So we have some space this way and the other way. And when we have a bigger screen, still we have some space, but bigger space because it's a percentage. So if you want to uh, limit the max width, so I just set the max width to be 400 pixels. So it's not going to be more than this size. So let's bring it to the right side again. And uh, let's bring everything to the center using text align center like this. And finally, I want to increase the size of the uh, text by using font size to be 20 pixels. All right. So that was it for the container section. I think we have done all the parts here. The next things I want to install is this heading. So the H1 tag here has the class of heading. So we can target that one here by just saying dot heading. And inside the dot heading, we're going to add some uh, CSS syntaxes. Like I want to uh, add a margin for it, a space around it. So I want to add a space around 5 pixels. And 
and also I want the font size to be 30 pixels so make it a little bit smaller so after the heading let's style this uh, this div that is covering all of them so we have it another div called ratings container which is covering all the rate ratings all of them from here to here all right so we're going to target this one so we just say dot ratings dash container so we're going to target all of them the first things i want to do i want to change the display to flex which is going to bring them next to each other like this and i want to add some padding for the top and bottom 20 pixels and for the left and right zero pixels so as you can see they are not aligned so we're going to next things we, i want to do is to install the rating which is covering the image and the small tag so this rating that is covering image and the small tag in three so we have three places to target by targeting that dot rating so we just say dot rating and this is going to be first thing first i want to change the cursor to be pointer so when we hover over them we see a pointing hand let's add some padding of 10 pixels so add some space around them which make them actually centralize better and we add some margin margin we want to add 10 pixels for uh, top and bottom and 5 pixels for left and right As you can see from the final version, when we hover over these elements, we see that the background color is changed to green and the color of the text is changed to white. So we want to achieve this one by targeting the rating hover effect. So we just say dot rating. But we want to target the hover. So when we hover over it or when, when we bring the mouse over these elements here, we want to see some changes. First thing first, I want to change the background color to be dark. It's a dark sea green. So you can see like that. And also I want to add uh, a border radius. So we make the border rounded by 10 pixels like this. And finally, we want to add some uh, box shadow. Zero for X and Y axis, 10 pixels for blurness and we change we just use RGBA 000 for black color and 30% transparency. You see the shadow effect. And also I want to change the color of the text to be a different color. Let me see that we can add it here or we can, we can apply somewhere else. I think that's, that's the place we can do. So we change just change the color to be Alice blue like this but this is the a very fast changing I want to add some transition so I want to add some transition to make it a more a smooth with animation so we just say add the transition to everything that is changing 30 to 300 millisecond and with the ease effect so we see that the changes is a slower. I think that is enough.
for this section the next things we want to style is the this button so the button has the class of btn as you can see from the html file so we can target that one by using dot btn the first things i want to do is change the background color to be dark cyan the color of the text i want it to be alice blue which is kind of white but a little bit darker let's change uh, remove the border i don't want any border for that so we set the border to be zero or we can set it to be none then we can change uh, add some margin a space around it 10 pixels and also uh, let's make the border to be radius and has some rounded corner by setting it to be four pixels now we can add some padding to make it bigger and add a space around the text 12 pixels in for top and bottom and 30 pixels for left and right and also cursor to be pointer for the effect when we hover over the button we want to see a pointing hand all right so another things i want to do when we hover over the button i want to see a box shadow so we target the button its hover effect and when we hover over it i want to have a box shadow with zero for the x-axis five pixels for the y-axis 10 pixel blurness and rgba 000, 000 for black and 30 percent transparency as you can see here now this is not smooth we can add the transition here as well we just say transition apply for everything and 300 milliseconds with ease effect we see like that this is similar transition we have added here okay and also when i click on the button i want the size of the button to be different we can do that one by just targeting the button and we just set it uh, we target its active pseudo class active means when we click on it so we change the transform and change the scale of the button uh, button from 100 percent to 96 percent like this so when we click on it we see this change So that's it for the styling of the project. In the final version, when we click on a rating, this is going to stay. As you can see, the background stays uh, uh, stays uh, like active. And uh, if you do the other one, we get the same way. This is a technique in JavaScript. We add and remove some classes to an element to, for example, change the background color or doing something like that. So, for example, here inside the index.html, if I add a, another class called active here, and we want to target this active inside the style.css if you remember for the hover effect we have added a dark sea green color and some things like that but uh, also we can we can say if we have another class let me show you here 
if we have a class called active also we want to have a background so as you can see the first one in html has the class of active so we see the background color is green if we add this active to the second one we see the second one has the background sorry background the uh, color so later in the next section we use javascript to remove and add this active class to to uh, keep this one uh, like the final version active all right so this is the technique usually in javascript they use to change or uh, toggle between some classes inside the html so now uh, just uh, manually we added we have added the active class but in the next section we're going to do it using javascript so for now i just remove the active classes so in the next section we're going to use javascript to first thing first add an event listener to this button when we click on the button we see which one is active and then we're going to send the feedback like this and show it to the person and uh, first uh, thank the user and said the feedback is for example unhappy so if you choose for example satisfied and uh, click on send review we see the feedback is satisfied so we're going to use a few things like add event listener. We want to add and remove the classes here. So we're going to learn many things later using JavaScript to do and add these functionalities. So see you in the next section for the JavaScript part of the project. All right, in the last section, we have completed the CSS part of the project. In this section, we're going to add more functionality to the project using JavaScript. If you look at the final version here, when we click on any rating like unhappy, neutral, or satisfied, this is going to active a class and add the class to this particular div which is going to keep the background color of this rating green and when we click on the button we're going to see the same uh, rating for example here is satisfied and so we can get the information and completely change the the container this uh, top container ratings container i think this container with these text so we're going to learn how to do it using javascript so let's uh, create a javascript file inside the visual studio code so i'm going to open the explorer section using ctrl shift e and here inside the explorer we need to click on this icon to uh, to create a new file and we call the file index.js and now let's bring this one to the end here so we have the javascript file but we need to add a link to the javascript file as well like the one uh, we did for the installed css but the Linking to the JavaScript file is a bit different. For the CSS, we have added the link tag after the title tag inside the head tag here. But for JavaScript, we need to add it at the end of the body tag. So in this way, all the uh, elements would be loaded first inside the browser. Then JavaScript has access to the all elements and then the JavaScript can add more functionality to these elements so we need to add the script tag at the end of the body section we just write down sc and we click on the second auto suggestion the one with the src
SRC here is the source or the destination of the file, the JavaScript file. And as both files, I mean the index.html and index.js are located at the same directory, which is this folder feedback UI, we need to just add here the name of the file, which is index.js. Now we can use the JavaScript to add the elements and uh, add some uh, manipulation of these elements using the JavaScript file that we have created. The first things we need to do is to bring all the ratings inside the JavaScript. As you can see, we have three divs with the class of rating. So we can bring all these divs inside the JavaScript using a method called query selector all. So let's create a constant here and we call it rating elements with the S because it's more than one rating. It's three the divs with the class of rating. So this is going to be equal to document because we want to target all the browser and document inside the browser. And then we just use the query selector all to target all the classes with the name of rating. And because it is, uh, there are cl uh, class, there are classes. So we need to just add a dot like the, we do inside the CSS and write down the name of the class, which is rating. So we now have access to the, all the ratings devs here. So now we can add an event listener to each of them. So we need to uh, have access to the, all of them using a method called for each. For each is going to loop through all these elements. So we need to write down the elements here, rating elements, and we're going to tap to the for each method, which is going to give us each element. So each element, and we call each element rating EL or rating element. It's singular because it's just getting the one. And now we can do some manipulation inside this function for that one. So we're getting, we are getting each of them here. Now we add the add event listener to each of them. The event we want to add is click because we want to target when someone click on these elements, we want to uh, call a function. So we create a function here. So let's save this. So we have created a function. This function is going to give us the, the, the things that we're going to click here. So let's go to our website. So this is going to give us the event here. Let's console log and see what events gives us. For example, I'm going to console log event dot target dot inner text. We want to see what's the text inside them. So let's see. So I'm, I'm going to open the console using F to uh, F12. So now we are inside the console inside the web developer tools in the Chrome. So make sure this is console. Then when we click on one of them, For example, we have to click on the div, so outside, not on the emoji. Here, so let, I'm not getting anything here. Okay, we got something. So when we click, we get the inner text, which is unhappy. Or if you click here, we get neutral. If we click on the emoji, we don't get anything, because emoji doesn't have any text, but this one has a text too. So we can get the text inside it. So 
event the target that inner text gives us the text inside that div but sometimes when we click on the emoji we don't get any text so this way we need to get the parents in a text so this is the child the emoji the parents is the div that is around the emoji so we can say if this is empty we can just get uh, we can add an or here if this is empty just give us the event dot target dot parent node so we need to add the parent parent node make sure you have a correct spelling and then we add a dot inner text so now if we even get to click on the emoji we get the text inside the parent element if we press outside we get satisfied we get if you click on the text we get satisfied as well so here we get neutral 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 unhappy unhappy and unhappy so all of them is working so now we need to add that class if you remember we have added a class inside the installed css we said if there is a class called active change the background color change the border radius box shadow co uh, color and transition so it's similar to the hover effect so hovering effect is actually activating them but we want when we click we want to add that active class to the html file so we can simply do that instead of console logging we can just say event dot target dot class list uh, the class list should be cap uh, camel case and this is going to we're going to add sorry event uh, dot target dot classes dot add and we want to add the class name active and also we want to add this one to the parents too so as i mentioned before when we click on the emoji nothing happens so we want to add if there's someone click on the emoji we want to add it to the parents so here event dot target dot parent node dot class list dot add so now if we click for example on the emoji we see that the background color stays uh, green so we we have added the class of active we can sh i can show you here inside the html as well so when we can for example if, if we open the container and then we go to inside the ratings container we see that the div the last div which is this one has the class of active if i click on now on the ne uh, neutral the active class is added to the second div we can do it for this one as well you can see so by in in this way we can add the class active but the one the things we want to do when we click on this icon we want to remove the classes from the other ones like the one in the final version when we click on here this is active but when we click on the other one this one is active but this one is inactive so we're going to remove this one okay so we're going to create a function we're going to create a function and we call the function remove active this is going to remove all the active classes from the elements so we're going to uh, firstly 
for uh, we use for each for all these rating elements which gives us each rating elements with the singular el so now we can use rating element dot class list we want to remove remove a class so we just say remove instead of add we say remove and the class we want to remove is active so now we can uh, call this function before adding it to that place so let's close uh, remove this console log for we don't need it anymore so i'm going to add this remove active i'm going to call this function which is going to remove all the active classes and then we want to add the active classes to the one that is being clicked here. So now we click on happy. Uh, let's see. Now the active class is added to the first div. If we click on the satisfied, which is the last one, this is going to remove all the active classes first from all the divs and then it's going to add the active class to the last one so this is the way it works all right so it's working the first step is completed now we want to uh, get this inner text we want to get this inner text and we want to uh, send it show it like the final version inside another text and uh, show the feedback all right so we we want to create if uh, a variable here at the top we're going to create a variable and we call it selected rating and for the uh, initial value we set the initial value to an empty string and then when we click on here we're going to change the selected rating to the either target to the event dot target dot inner text or I, as I mentioned before, it can be the parent. So we're going to, I'm going to copy this one and then we just say event.target.parent node. Okay. So now we have the value of the neutral, happy, or satisfied, or uh, these things inside the selected rating. Now we have the selected rating. After we click on the button, we want to show it in the another place. So we, I'm going to bring the button. The button has the an ID of BTN. So we can bring it to inside the JavaScript using a method called get element by ID. So we create the BTN element here, and this is going to be equal to document dot get element by id and the id of the button is btn we have access to the btn now we can add the event listener to the btn let me add it just here after this so the btn element we're going to add an event listener and uh, the event we want to target is click so when we click on the button we want to trigger a function and we can we bring the function here and also if there is nothing for example in the final version if we don't if we didn't select anything we cannot click on the button the, the button doesn't trigger anything so we can do that by just adding a condition and if we say if the selected rating is not equal 
to empty string we want to uh, change the text inside otherwise we don't want to do anything all right so now we want to bring this container we want to bring this container and change everything inside the container with this text that we see here all right so we're going to bring the container first so at the top we're going to create another constant and we call it container element and this is going to be equal to document we target all the document and we use get element by id method and we call the uh, id which is container now we can uh, simply go inside the function and inside this condition and we just target the container element that we have got now and then we want to change its inner HTML to this following so we're going to because this is dynamic and based on the selected rating we need to add a backtick here so we we can have a dynamic inner HTML this backtick is different from the quote the backtick is located on the top of the tab so inside the backtick we can write down our HTML code for example I added a strong tag which is going to make the text as uh, bold I just write down thank you and we're going to close the strong tag let's see in the final version if you select something and click we see thank you you see but if you don't select anything we cannot go to that place if you select something we see thank you all right so now after the thank you i'm gonna add some lines we can add a uh, break it's this is similar to an uh, empty line so i'm gonna add two br tag and then we're going to add another a strong tag for the feedback so i'm gonna copy this one this strong tag and instead of thank you i'm gonna say feedback equal and then this is the part that we have to write the dynamic things so we're going to add a dollar sign and a set of curly braces to add a dynamic variable here and we want to add this selected rating so whatever selected rating is is going to be equal to feedback let's test this one so i'm going to choose for example satisfied and i i'm going to click on send review this is going to show thank you feedback satisfied let's try with the other one unhappy thank you feedback unhappy so this is the way you create a dynamic uh, text and finally we're going to just have this we'll use your feedback to improve our customer support i'm going to copy this one and inside this uh, here i'm going to add a paragraph paste that uh, text I'm gonna close the paragraph tag so now if you choose for example neutral we see the thank you feedback neutral will use you your feedback to improve our customer support so this is the way you can add the HTML code inside your JavaScript so you need to write down uh, and tap to the inner HTML and then you write down your HTML code and also you can install them now as well in this uh, CSS you can add a class here and then in the style you can make this one bigger or smaller or whatever you want to do so in this project we have learned how to add and remove a class 
using class list and remove and the add here. And also we have learned how to use for each to get each element of, uh, for example, we have added a query selector all. We got all the elements with the class of rating. And then we, get, we got each of these elements using for each. And we have added an event listener to each of them. The event we have added was click. And this is going to give us the event. And we could get the inner text using event.target.innerText or event.target.parentNode.innerText. The other things we have learned is to create a variable and change it inside. Uh, we have changed it here. So we have got the event.target.innerText and put it inside this variable. And also we have removed the classes by creating a function. By using the for each method, we got each element and we have removed the classes first. And then we have added the class inside the, uh, this for each, which, we, which is going to only target the event.target, the one that we, it is uh, clicked. All right. So that was it for the JavaScript part of the project. I hope you learned many things and enjoyed the uh, course and the project. So see you in the next project. Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create an English dictionary. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have a container here with an input. And when we write down a word, for example, I just write down job and I press enter, you see we had a loading effect, then the name, the word title and the meaning of it is shown inside this container and also we have the pronunciation and the audio of the word here so when we click on this one Job. we can hear the real pronunciation of the word so we're going to learn how to work with an api that is going to give us the meaning and the pronunciation of the words and also we're going to firstly install this project using CSS and later using JavaScript, we're going to learn how to retrieve the data from the API, how to add the loading effect. And also if you're, for example, if an error happens, how to handle the errors. For example, if there is no internet, we see a message here and error here. So we're going to learn how to handle the errors as well. In the next section, we're going to start with the HTML part of the project. So see you in the next section. All right, let's start our project. I have put the final version here as our reference so we can compare it with our own project that we are building now. The first thing we need to do is to create a, an HTML file. So we need to open the Visual Studio Code or any text editor you would like to use. So I click on Visual Studio Code. Here I close the Get Started tab and in the File menu, we need to click on Open Folder. We need to create a folder and start working on the project. I would like to create the project in my desktop. So I click on desktop and here I click on the new folder to create a new folder. And I call it English Dictionary or Dictionary. 
after writing down the name of the folder we press enter and we click here on the select folder to select the folder this is going to open the folder inside the visual studio code and here in the explorer section now we see that the folder is open english dictionary and we can start creating our files inside this folder so we can click on here in this icon to create a new fol uh, file and we call it index.html now we have the file on the right side but it is completely empty but we can use an exclamation mark to create an html boilerplate so when you write down an exclamation mark you get an auto suggestion from Emmet. so when we click on it or you press enter you get an an html boilerplate which includes the doc type which is the the version of the html we are working on and for the html5 we just need to have html here then we have the HTML tag, which is covering both of the head and the body tag. Here, lang the lang attribute defines the language of the page. And in our case, it is by default English. Then we have the head tag, which includes the metadata tag and also the title of the browser, of the page inside the browser. The first metadata tag uh, defines the charset attribute and we have defined it as UTF-8. UTF-8 is recommended because it nearly contains all the characters and symbols and the users won't have any problem seeing the page inside their browser. Then we have the compatibility metadata tag which tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine which is edge the, the next metadata tag is for the viewport and it sets the width of the screen to be the width of the device for example if you have a mobile screen the width of your browser and the page would be a smaller when you are using the bigger screens like desktop and laptop screens then you have the initial scale which is the initial zoom level of the browser and by default it is set to be 100 percent after that we have the title tag which defines the title of the page inside the browser let's open the browser to see this title if you have installed the live server extension, you, you should see a, a, a section here on the bottom. If you click on this go live, this is going to open a server on port 5500 and it opens the index.html automatically inside the browser. As you can see, the title of the page is document. Let's bring this one to the right side so we can see the changes in real time. Let's close the Explorer section so we have more space here. Then we can change the title of the page to be, for example, English Dictionary. All right. So now you can see the title is changed to English dictionary. After that, uh, if you look at the final version, let me draw this. So we have a background here. We have a background. This is the all the website and the container went in the middle so we have a container here this is the container this is just a div with the class of container 
then we have a title. Let's. So we have this title here. This is the title. Then we have the uh, this input, and then we have some other stuff. So if you, for example, if you write down a word, for example, job. We have the word title after that, and then we have a meaning. So we should have something like, uh, let me see, I can. So we have a, so, so we have another div here. It's called meaning container so all these things goes inside this container and we're going to hide it first someone comes to the website you cannot see that div and but when you write down something you search you, it appears here we have the title we have the meaning and also if you click here we can hear the job uh, pronunciation of the word all right, so let's start with the container. So we have a div with a class of container. So we just write down dot container and press enter. So we get a div with a class of container. And inside this container, first we have a h1 tag with a class of heading. The reason we are using the class, we want to style this place, uh, these things later using CSS. Then after creating the header, we just write down English dictionary. So you can see the title now. It's on the top, but later we're going to use CSS to bring it to the center and style it. For now, we're just creating the HTML part of the place. Then we have the input. The input has the type of text, class of input, and it has the ID of input as well. So the class is for styling and ID I have chosen to be unique and so we can target that using JavaScript and we get all the information inside the input and search for the word inside the API. So I use the ID for the, that reason. So the input has a placeholder as well. So we just write placeholder and we just say search a word. So this is the person can see, but when you write down, it's it's going to be disappeared. Okay, now we have the placeholder, input, uh, the ID class, and also the type is text. After that, we're going to have a paragraph. So uh if you just come to the website in the final version you see it has a info text which is saying type a word and press enter so we're going to create that one using a paragraph and the paragraph has the class of info text and also the idea of info so this one should be info info text and id of info text if we press enter we get this one and the paragraph the text inside the paragraph is type a word and press enter all right, so after this paragraph, we're going to have that. Uh, we're going to have this container. 
So there is a container. It's called meaning container because all the meanings goes here. It has an ID of meaning container as well. So inside this div, we're going to have two paragraphs. One paragraph saying word title. And after this, we're going to have a span. A span is, is like a, just like a empty div, but we can style this spam separately. For now, we just add uh, some underline. So let's see it inside our website. And this spam has a class of title. And also it has an ID of title. So we're going to style it using this class and we're going to uh, change its functionality and change inside this uh, spam using JavaScript. So we have the same things for the uh, meaning. So if you look at this one, we have a title and also we have meaning. So we can copy this one using Alt Shift Arrow Done. And here, instead of word title, we just say meaning. And this class, we can choose both of the title using Ctrl D. And here we can change it to meaning. All right. And finally, we have that audio, this audio file. So we're going to have, after this paragraph, we're going to have an audio, audio tag and uh, it has a controls. It means we can see all the controls here. So you can see the, the audio tag now. Then uh, it has an ID of audio. So we can target that one using JavaScript. So for now, the SRC is empty. Later, we're going to fill this SRC using JavaScript, dynamically based on the words we have. For example, here we have jobs, so we can job. see the pronunciation job. If you write down, for example, great, and you can play this. Great. Great here. So based on the, the word, we're going to get this uh, SRC field. All right. So that was it for the HTML part of the project. In the next section, we're going to style this using CSS. So see you in the next section. All right. In the last section, we have completed the HTML part of the project. In this section, we're going to style the project using CSS. The first thing we need to do is to create a CSS file. So inside the VS Code, we open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And here on the left side in the Explorer section, we create a new file and we call it a style.css. We need to add a link to the CSS file in order to use it. So we go back to index.html and just after the title tag, we add a link tag and we click on this uh, third auto suggestion, the one with the CSS. Now we have a link tag with the relationship between with the HTML file and the CSS file. Here the href is the destination of the link. And as both files are located at the same directory, we just need to have a style.css for the address. 
now we can start styling the project. So if you look at the uh, index.html, the things we want to target is this classes, the container, the heading. For the input, we have a class of input. For the paragraph, we have info text. Then uh, for the this div that is covering the meaning section, we have a meaning container. For the title, we have a class of title, and also for the meaning, we we have the uh, class of meaning. So we're going to target them using these classes. The first things we need to do is to style the body section. So just we put the our website and here we target the body section. First things first, we remove the margin, the default margin, and we set it to be zero. So we remove the space between the this container and the wall. We, we refresh the page. Then we want to bring everything to the center. So first thing first, we need to change the display to flex. Then we need to set the height of the screen. So we just say mean height and we set it to be 100% of the viewport height. So always the size of the height would be 100% of the viewport height. For example, if you have a less zoom or more zoom, you always have the height of 100%. Now we can use justify content center to bring everything to the center horizontally and align item center to bring everything to the center vertically. The other things I want to do is to change the background color. So I set the background color to be the salmon color which is FA8072. So we just write SA and we choose the Salmon. The other things I want to do, I want to change the font of the Texas by using font family and I set it to be Courier New. So this is the text I would like to use, but you can use any text uh, font, any font family you, uh, you, you prefer for your own project. After the body section, we can now start targeting this container, the main container. As you can see in the final version, it has a glassy background color uh, with the box shadow. So let's solve that. So we target that div with a class of container by just saying dot container. And we change the background color. And I use the RGBA. RGBA helps us to have a color with transparency. So R stands for red. G and B is green and blue. And a is alpha, which is transparency. So for the RGB, I use 255, 255, and 255, which gives us the white color. And for the alpha, which is the transparency value, I set it to be 30%. So we get this glassy design. Let's add some padding. So we add some space between the borders and the elements inside the container and we set it to be 28 pixels. And also I want to make the round the, uh, co the corners to be rounded. So I use a border radius and I set it to be seven pixels like this and the final things that makes this container beautiful is to use the box shadow 
we set the zero for the X axis, 10 pixels for the Y axis, 10 pixels for the blurness, and we use the RGBA to give the black color using 0, 0, 0. And finally, 0.3 for 30% transparency, so, which gives us this beautiful shadow for our container. We also, uh, I want to set the width of this to be 90%. So this one, in the big screen, we have this space. And the small screen, it's almost uh, connected to the wall. We can add more space between them using margin, for example, 10 pixels. So we can see here. And in the big screen, we can uh, limit the width by using max width to be, for example, 450 pixels. So which we can just get this uh, size. Also, we can bring everything to the center using uh, text align center like this. So we centralize everything and uh, let's set the font size. to be 18 pixels. So we have 18 pixels as a default and also we can set the font weight to be 500 to make it uh, make the text thinner a little bit. A little bit. All right. So then now the container looks okay even in the big size and the small size. Let's uh, install this uh, header section here. The H1 has the class of heading. So we write down dot heading. And uh, we set the font size to be 28 pixels. Like this. Now it's time to install this input. So the input has the class of input. So we just write down dot input. We set the height of the input to be 53 pixels. We set the width to be 300 pixels. So make it bigger. We add a background color. We can use the RGBA. We get this uh, auto suggestion RGBA white color, but instead of 0.3, I want it to be 0.6%, a 60% transparency. And also the border color we, I use the RGBA the white color with 0.4% transparency, which gives us this kind of design. And uh, let's install and change the font size to be 16 pixels. And let's add some padding in the zero pixels for uh, up and down but 42 pixels for the left and right. So like this. And also I want it to be rounded too. So I just changed the border radius to be five pixels as an example. So you can see like that. Okay. I think it looks fine. So now everything looks okay. So 
I just uh, want you to show in the final version when someone comes to the website doesn't see that the meaning section. So we want to uh, by default remove that section. That section has the class of meaning container. By changing the display to none, we can remove that section. But when we are using JavaScript, we can dynamically bring back that section when we have a meaning in our website. For example, in the final version, when I search for a, a word, for example, job, and I press enter, I see that uh, meaning container section. But if there is no result, we don't see that section. For example, if you write down something meaningless, for example, a number, uh, we don't see the that, uh, for example, audio section too. So later using JavaScript, we're going to dynamically show this meaning container section. So that was it for the CSS part of the project. In the next section, we're going to add functionalities to the website using JavaScript. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have completed the CSS section of our project. In this section, we are going to start adding functionality to the project using JavaScript. The first things we need to do is to create the JavaScript file. So we can open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And here we click on this icon to create a new file and we call it index.js. We need to add a link to the JavaScript file in th inside the index.html file. So let's close this explore section. The script tag that we need to add to add a link to the JavaScript file should be at the end of the body tag because we need all the elements of the browser to be loaded and then we can manipulate them using JavaScript. So we need to add them at the end. So we just say uh, SC and we click on the second auto suggestion, the one with the SRC. And the SRC, which is the destination of the file, is index.js as both files are located at the same directory. Now we can use the JavaScript in our project. If you look at the final version, whatever we write down here, for example, we just write great, and we get the result here. So first thing first, we need to get everything inside the input. And if you look at the index.html file, the input has a I has an idea of input. So we can bring it inside the JavaScript file using the method called get element by ID. So we just call, we just say input element. We create a constant and this is going to be equal to document because we want to target all the browser and dot get element by ID and the ID for the input was input. Now we can add an event listener to get everything inside the input. So we just say input element dot add event listener. And the event we want to listen because we want to when we type something here and press enter, we want to say ask for the that word. So because uh, we want to uh, target the enter, the key, the key input uh, enter, we need to add key up. So when uh, whatever key we press, this is going to trigger a function here. So we create a function here. And this function is going to give us the key that is pressed here. We get the event here. 
and uh, if we console log that e and uh, we just uh, for example e dot target dot value so let's uh, open the console using f12 so this is the make sure this is console now whatever we write down here we should see inside the console so even we press enter we see an empty things so we can get the in the enter as well so here if you write down instead of e dot target dot value we just write e dot key we get the key that we for example if you press enter we get enter or if you press on backspace we see a backspace all right so here we add a condition the first things we want to check is uh, this is not empty if it's empty we don't want to uh, we don't want to call a function so for being sure we just say e dot target dot value should be true and also we want this person click on the uh, press on enter so we just say e dot key should be equal to enter now if this condition satisfied we want to call a function and we call the function for example uh, fetch api and we can uh, pass this e dot target dot value to that function so let's create the function here so the function is called fetch api and this is going to get that uh, e.target and we call it just the word for example word and now we can console log here the uh, word that we are getting from the input of the function so now whatever we type here for example i type nice when i press enter we get the word nice and if it's empty here and i press enter nothing happens because we are preventing someone to submit or request without writing anything here so let's try it again for example i write down job and press enter we get the job inside the console which is getting from this function all right so instead of console logging now we want to uh, fetch the data from the api so the api we want to use i show you here if you search for uh, dictionary api dictionary In the search result, you just uh, look for a website called dictionaryapi.dev. So you search dictionary API and then you see this result, free dictionary API. So when you click on it, and this is a free dictionary API, even you don't need to have an API key for that. And in order to use it, you just need to have this URL request and you need to add the word you want to you want to uh, see the uh, meaning of it here at the end for example here there is an example of the word hello so if you copy this one and we paste it in the browser you get the word you get the pronunciation for example the audio file so if you click on the audio hello. you can play it hello 
And in order to see the actually this result, uh, I have an extension and it's called JSON formatter. All right, so, so you need to install JSON formatter inside Google Chrome as an extension to see the result like this. And the things we want to have is uh, this, the, we want to use this word and fill this here, the word title. For the meaning, uh, meaning is here inside the meaning. We just want to get the first meaning. For example, the definition is hello or an equivalent greeting. All right. So we want to get the, uh, this audio, this word and the meaning from this API. All right, so, so we get this URL. I, I just, I'm just going to copy this uh, URL with the hello. And we go to our website. And here we just create a constant. And we call it URL and we paste that one. Uh, but we want to make it dynamic. So I put it inside the back deck. The back deck is located on the top of the tab key. And you paste it here. And instead of the saying hello, we want to have this one dynamic. So we're going to create a dynamic word we just add a dollar sign and set of curly braces and instead of just saying hello we just say word uh, word which we are getting from here so any word we get we can ask for this one so we have the url now now we can request from the api so we can have the result. We just create a constant and we call it result. And this is going to be equal to fetch that URL that we have here. And after the fetching, we want to wait for the response. So we just say dot then and that time we get the response and we want to convert this response to a JSON file so we just say res dot json and json is a javascript method so we need to use it and convert it to json otherwise we cannot see that result so now we can console log that result so we go to our website and we open the console let's refresh the page the console is empty for example, I write down here job and I press enter. As you can see, we got the response. And the response is giving us the word job. Here you can see the word is job. The meaning is here. For example, the first meaning for the noun uh, inside the definitions. There are a lot of meaning, but the first one is a task. Okay. So that's the, that's the way we get it. So now we uh, delete the console log. The, the other things I want to do, instead of just quickly get the result, I want to wait for the response. So we want to add a wait here. I'm going to explain why we are using the await. So we want to this code finish and then we go to the second and uh, the next line. So that's why we need to wait. Otherwise, if you don't have the await, uh, before getting the result from the API, we go to the next line and because we want to fill the, the, the elements inside the HTML, because we don't have the result yet, we go, we are going to get an error. So we always have to use await when we are fetching data from the API. And when we are using await, we need to change the function from normal function to asynchronous function.
otherwise you get an error. So let's refresh the page. So it's still getting an error in the here. So let's see. Okay, we I think the function Oh, we didn't close the function yet or maybe I deleted by accident so we need to close this function all right so now we don't get any error and the other things we need to do when we are fetching a data is to use try and catch a statement so when you write down try you get a suggestion try catch a statement this one helps you, you to get the possible errors from the API request. So you need to cut everything and put it inside the try. And if an error happens, this try and catch, it gets the error and show you the error. For example, now I console log the error. So now we are, for example, requesting for job. We don't get an error, but if you, for example, set the network from normal internet to offline and we go to console again and now I, if I cl click enter we get an error fail to fetch at a, a fetch api so we got the error here which is the internet disconnected all right so in order to get the errors, you, it's better to use the try and catch inside uh, for your API request. All right. So let's see inside the final version. Let me open the Explorer section, uh, sorry, the web developer and go to network. And we make this one a slower using uh, a slow 3G inside the network. Let's refresh this page. Now we have a, a fakely a, a slow internet. So just pay attention to here. This one is saying type a word and press enter. Now, for example, if we write down a word, for example, job, let's check this one. When we press enter, we see searching the meaning of the jo of job. And after the result comes, we see the meaning. So while we are waiting for the API, we want to see that text. So if we write down, for example, nice, and we press enter, we see searching the meaning of nice, and we see the results. So uh, when we are waiting for the response, so before asking, we want to see that text here. So that text is actually is this one you see that uh, here we see the type a word and press enter we want to change this text this one has an ID of info text so let's bring this one here at the top so we create a constant and we call it info text element and this is going to be equal to document and we use get element by ID to target that element and the element is called info dash text info dash text the ID is this one so we write down here inside the now we have the element now before uh, fetching the data from the API I want to change this one, I want to change the inner text of this one to say, because this is dynamic, we need, uh, we need to add the back tag. So we just say searching searching the meaning of 
that word, that particular word, which is we added inside a double quote and we we put the variable using dollar sign so and the variable is word that we are getting from the input of the function now if we go to our website and we go to network and we make it a slow 3g and now the word is job when we i press enter So nothing happens here. Let's see. Uh, let's refresh the page and try again. So I just write down job and I press enter. You see that it's searching the meaning of the of job. All right. So this is working. So after after the uh, the result comes, I want to. Uh, remove this section so so after the result comes I want this info text element dot style dot display so we set the display of this one to none so we need to change the style and now we make it none so now if we search Again, for example, for job and we press enter, we see the searching the meaning of job. When the result comes, we don't see that section. But if you uh, search for something else, for example, the word great, we don't see that text anymore. So we need to bring it back to the normal display when we are requesting again. So I copy this one and I put it before the request and I change the display to block here. So now I search for job. So we cannot see it yet. So we, we need to refresh each time. So I just say job. We see that searching the meaning of job. It's gone. Let's search for something else. For example, great. We see again searching the meaning of great. So that is working. So now we need to show this section, this uh, meaning container. If you remember, we purposefully, we remove this section. We just say display to none, firstly. So we need to change uh, and bring it back here. So I'm going to, first link first we need to bring that element. So that element is called, we call it meaning, container element and this is going to be equal to document dot get element by id and the id for that one was a uh, meaning dash container All right so now we want to uh, show this section too so we just say meaning container element dot a style dot display and we set the display to block here as well okay let's try it again inside our website so we just say hello for example we search for hello searching the meaning of hello and after that uh, Oh, sorry, uh, we need to show this display after the result comes. So I have to put it here, actually. All right. Meaning container that style that's display. Get element meaning container. Let me see that if it's correct. Yeah, this element is meaning dash container. Let me copy this one. So if you have a, any a spelling mistake would be okay so now let's try again let's refresh the page let me just make this one normal internet so i search for job and now we see that meaning container all right so while we are searching we want to make it uh, so we need to copy this one we need to make a uh, hide it while we are waiting for the response. So 
Here I set the display to none at the top. So before and after we are doing two things. All right. So now we search for job. We see it. If we search again, we should remove it first. So first we remove it and then it comes. Now it's very uh, actually fast. We just search. We set it to be fast 3G. So job. We test the job. All right. It's working now. Nice. It's working. So now we just need to fill this empty answers. For example, the word title, the meaning, and also we need to activate this audio if there is an audio. All right. So So we need to bring these uh, elements here. The elements we need is this one, the word title, which has the class uh, has an ID of title and also the meaning, which has the ID ID of meaning. So these two things we need to have. So we just create this first one, the title element, and this is going to be equal to document dot get element by id and the id for that one was title we just copy this one and uh, we change the title using ctrl d to meaning so we have the title and the meaning element so after we get the result here we just say title element dot inner text is equal to the response we get you know if you remember we got the result and the result has uh, many arrays so we want the first result and also here we want the first meaning uh, sorry the type because we want to get the title first so the title was just a word, all right? So if, now if we test, if we refresh the page, if we search for job, now the word title is filled with job. Let's do the same things for the meaning. So the meaning element that inner text is going to be equal to that result. We want the first element of the array. We want the meaning, but the, we want the first meaning. So the meaning zero, and also we want the definition inside the meaning. So definition, definitions, and we want the first definition. So let's let's check here for the word job. We got this one, but we didn't get the meaning. So let's see the console. All right. So so I think we have some. Uh, this one should be meanings, not meaning. So let's try again. We just say job. Are we still getting uh, not the result? Okay. So now, uh, after this definition, we just need to add another definition. This, uh, so I think uh, it's inside another place. So we just right now, say job so now we got the meaning the correct one tasks a task or if you search for something else for example we just say amazing we press enter we get the word title and also the meaning of the word all right so now the uh, the other things we want to do is just to fill this audio file audio one so after this definition, uh, let's first bring the audio element. 
So we create another constant. We call the constant audio element and this is going to be equal to document dot get element by ID and the ID is just audio. All right, so now we have the element and we just need to change its SRC to the one that we get from the API. So we just go here at the end and we just say audio element and we change its SRC. So we just say dot SRC and this is going to be equal to that the result we get and uh, this is going to be the first array of the result inside a phonetics we we'll just say phonetics and the first phonetic we want to get and this is inside a something called audio all right so now if you search for for example let's uh, change the network from fast 3g to no uh, just no limit and we just close this one if you search for job now if you click on this file we should hear the uh, the pronunciation of job, job. And if you change this one, for example, to great job, let me see job. Yeah, we are still getting the what happened. Mr. Let me refresh the page. We search for great. Great. Now this is great. Let's search for job. job and this is job. The problem happens when we type something that doesn't have any meaning. For example, if you type something and if you click, you're still getting the previous result, the job, the task, and it's also job. the audio is for the job. So we want to prevent this one here. So if you, for example, go to that API and we paste this one here for example this is the hello all right we are getting the correct answer but if you write down something here something that is not a real word we get a, an array we get an object just has a title and message we just say no definition find all right so when these things happens, when there is no answer for that, we just uh, say uh, we just check if there is a title. For example, we don't want to show the answers and we don't want to see the audio as well. So here we create a condition. So in, instead of directly doing this one, after the result comes, we create a condition. We just say if uh, there is a result dot title. It means that the, the, the word is not correct. Instead of doing these things, we want to just, for example, uh, let's just copy these three lines of code, the title, meaning, and the audio. And instead of the result, we just want to make them, for example, an empty things, for example. For the title, I just write down the word you typed. So this is the word we are getting from the input of the a, a function. For the meaning, I just write down 
not available we just say n dash a and for audio we just make it uh, we don't change it we just change the display to none for example we just say audio element dot style dot display and we set the display to none otherwise we want to see the other section so we just bring everything to this condition and also because we set the display of the audio to none we need to bring it back to the normal uh, before just uh, showing it so here we just say audio element dot a style dot display because we want it to be in the center instead of block i just change this one to n line dash flex otherwise it goes to the beginning so you can test it yourself so it's similar to block it's it's not none so it's going to be shown but it's inline flex all right so now let's test this one so well we just write down something no nonsense so let's refresh this one and try it again so it doesn't work so let's try a normal word so it's showing the job now I just say something here okay oh we need to probably uh, set the display back to this container meaning container we need to set the display of this one to block as well at the top so let's try again so we write down something nonsense okay now we see that the word title is this one and the meaning is not available and we don't see the audio but we are still seeing that searching the meaning of this one so we can uh, remove that one as well by just setting up the display for this one to none here all right, so let's try again. We just say a working word, job. It's working. Job. And then just write down something nonsense. So just say word title is this one, meaning is not available. And let's try again with something correct. Job. It's showing everything correctly. So the other thing is when the, an error happens, we want to handle the error as well. So when uh, we, let's open the dev tools again, and then we go to network. So for example, if we are offline and we just search, for example, for the word nice and we press enter, you see, we're still searching the meaning of the nice. So we should show the error here instead. So instead of that one, uh, we can just uh, we can just instead of searching the word, we can show something else. For example, I copy this one and we paste it here. And instead of this, we just say an error happened. Try again later. So let's see. So let's bring the internet back. We refresh the page. We search for something. We get the result. Now let's make it offline and we search for something else, for example, nice. So we got an error happens. Try again later. And let's now bring back the internet. And we search for, for example, job. Now it's working correctly. So this is the way you handle the error. So you can just inside the error section, whatever message you want to show, you show here. It's fine. 
So that is working fine. Let's see what else we can add. Okay, so for your practice, you can just add some, for example, a spinning or uh, like a, a skeleton effect. But this, the concept is like this. So you have a request to an API here using await. And before the await, you create the things you want to see when you are waiting for the response. And after that, when the response comes, you want to uh, add the things you wanna, want to the, the things that you want to happen after the response comes. And if an error happens, you can handle the error here. So that was it for our project. I hope you enjoyed and learned many things. This is uh, in this project, you have learned the concept like try and catch, how to fetch the API, how to handle the errors, and how to handle different situation when you get different results inside from your API. And also you have learned how to add an event listener for, uh, for uh, listening to your keyboards like uh, pressing enter or other things. So I hope you enjoyed and learned many things. See you in the next project. Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create a random code generator. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have a glassy design, a glass morphism design with the title and a code with the author. And each time we click on this button, we get a new code. And while we are waiting for the result we see the updating and loading effect inside the website so we're going to use an api to get these random codes and also we're going to learn how to create these loading effects using try and catch methods and uh, asynchronous functions and also we're going to learn how to make these glassy designs using css in the next section, we are going to start with the HTML part of the project. So see you in the next section. All right, let's start our project. As always, I put the final version of the project as our reference here to compare our project with the final version. The first things we need to do is to start the project by creating an HTML file. So I would like to use VS Code for our, our project. So I opened my Visual Studio Code. And here inside the Visual Studio Code, we close the Get Started tab. And in the File menu, we click on the Open Folder. We want to create a folder and create our project inside that folder. I want to create the project inside the desktop. So I choose desktop and I create a new folder and I call the folder the name of our project, which is random. Code generator. After pressing the enter, the folder is Created. Now we can click on the select folder to select the folder. Here we can close the get started tab again. And on the left side in the explorer section, as you can see, we have the folder name. So we are creating everything inside this folder. And we can click here on this uh, button to create a new file and we call it index.html and we press enter. Now we have our HTML file on the right side. It is completely empty, but we can use an exclamation mark like this to create an HTML boilerplate. So when you 
just write down an exclamation mark and click on the auto suggestion the first auto suggestion you get an html boilerplate like this let me explain you real quick this boilerplate so the first line is doc type which tells the browser which version of html we are writing our code and for html5 we just need to write html here as an attribute then we have an uh, have an html tag which is covering both of the head and the body tag inside the html opening tag here we have a lang attribute which this defines the language of the page and tells the browser which language the page is written in and uh, for in our case we just have english after that we have the head tag which includes the metadata tag and also the title tag the first metadata tag defines the characteristics and like a uh, language characteristics of the page and for the charset attribute we have chosen by default utf8 which nearly contains all the characters and symbols and the users won't have any problem seeing the content inside our page the next metadata tag is related to the compatibility and it's just for the users who are using Internet Explorer. It tells these users, the, the Internet Explorer, to use the recent rendering engine, which is Edge. So Microsoft is telling the users to use this one, the Edge, not the user, the browser of the users who are using Internet Explorer, to, the, to use the Edge uh, search uh, engine so which is the latest one the next metadata tag is the viewport metadata tag which tells the browser to set the width to the device's screen width for example if you have a mobile screen the width would be smaller than when you are using the laptop or desktop screen so it's just adjust your the width of the browser automatically based on the device's width. The next part of this metadata tag is the initial zoom level of the browser, which by default is 100%. The next tag is the title tag, which uh, just set the title of the page let me show you the title inside the browser so in order to see this page in this index.html inside the browser you can open it from the folder that we have created or we can use an extension called live server so here on, on the bottom you can click on the live server and this is going to open the page inside the browser and the title is document as you can see here and this is going to be uh, automatically updated based on the changes inside the index.html so let me close the index uh, the explorer section on the left side so we have more space so instead of document i want to just write down the name of the project which is random quote generator now you can see the title has been changed to random quote generator and whatever we we want to create inside the browser we have to add inside the body section and if you look at the final version in the inside the body section let me show you by drawing so if you look at here 
we have the body and then we have a container here I'm, I'm showing you with the red color after the container we have a title then we have the code section the name of the author and finally we have the button here so first we need to add a container here this is the container so we're going to add a div with a class of container so we can style it later then we have a h1 tag for this title then we have the an h2 tag and uh, for this one we have a paragraph for the author and finally we have a button and for these uh, things here quotes uh, like a quote left and quote right we're going to use a website called font awesome to get these icons so uh, later i'm going to show you how to get these icons as well all right inside the body section we have a div with a class of container so we just write down dot container this is going to create a div with a class of container for us and inside the, this div, we're going to have an h1 tag saying uh, random quote generator. So if you look at our website and if you refresh the page, we see the random quote generator here. And also we can add a class here the later we can uh, style it so we can add a class and we just call it heading all right so after this h1 tag we're going to have an h2 tag with a class of quote and inside this h2 tag we're going to have these icons first and then we have our text in the middle as I mentioned before, we're going to use a website called Font Awesome to get the, these icons, the left and right quote icon. So if we search here, Font Awesome, if you search on Google Font Awesome, and if you click on the website called fontawesome.com, And here on the right, on the top, uh, in the menu, you just click on icons. In this section, you can search for any icons you want. So inside the search bar, I search for quotes. And if you press enter, this, uh, the website is going to show you different types of quotes. The quotes I want to use is the left and right quote. So this is the left quote. If you click on it, you can see that by using uh, an I tag with a class of FA solid, FA quote left, you can have uh, this icon in your website. So you need to just copy this. I think if you click on it, you're going to copy it. And you just paste it inside this H2. Okay. So inside the website, you still you cannot see this uh, icon because we haven't added the Font Awesome CDN to our website yet. So if you go to Google and search for Font Awesome dash cdn there is a website called cdnjs.com and if you go to cdnjs.com forward slash libraries and you choose the font awesome they show you the cdn for example this is the cdn 
as uh, they have many CDNs, but I just recommend you to use the first one. CDNs is just the file that the user is going to download to to see these classes. All right, but uh, they don't need to have the file with all the file uh, with all these classes. You just they download the necessary one. Uh, because the CDN is located in different countries, so they can have a very fast access to these uh, classes and they can download this file uh, in a fast way. So you don't need to have the file, you just need to uh, r allow the users to download these things from these websites. So you just need to copy, click on the copy link tag in the middle let me zoom you to see. So you click on the copy link tag and you just go to your head section inside the HTML file and after the title tag, you paste the link tag. Now if you look at your website, you can see that icon, the left icon. All right, so we have the left one and inside after that we want to have a span a span is just the like an empty things and here we just want to say quote and this span has an idea of quote because we want to change this code dynamically later using javascript so we we should have a reference to target this place so we added we have added an ID with the with the name of quote so we can target it later using JavaScript. And after the span, we're going to have the right one. So if you go to the font awesome website, we close this one and we click on the right quote right, and we click here to copy the code. We can paste it here and we have the right quote like this so if you look at the final version after the quote we have the author name so author name is after this h2 tag and uh, this is just a paragraph uh, it's a paragraph with the class of author and id of author as well because we want to style it using CSS and also we want to change it dynamically using JavaScript later using targeting this ID and inside this paragraph we just want to say we want to add this symbol and after the symbol we want to say just author for now hard coded for styling and later we're going to have this one dynamically like the one in final version so each time you get a different author and different quotes all right so finish with the this part next we want to add a button so we want to add a button with a class of btn for styling and with the id of with the id of btn as well and inside it, we want to just say get a quote like this. So we have finished and done with the HTML part of the project. In the next section, we're going to use CSS to style the project like the one in the final version. So see the next section for the CSS part of the project. All right, in the last section, we have completed the HTML part of our project. In this section, we're going to style the project using CSS. By looking at the final version, we see that we have a container with a different background color and the, uh, the body has a gradient color from blue to green and uh, 
This container has a box shadow and this uh, button has a hovering effect with the extra shadow at the bottom and different background color. So we're going to create such a glassy design or new morphism and uh, the first things we need to do is to create a CSS file inside the folder that we have created in the last section. So we go back to Visual Studio Code and we open the Explorer section using Ctrl B or Ctrl Shift E. And here on the left side, we just right click and click on new file to create a new file. We, and we call it a style.css. Before using this file, we need to add a link to this file within the HTML file. So the link tag is going to be inside the head tag. It can be before or after the link tag for the font awesome website. So we can just, just at the end of the head tag, we just add a link and we just write and we click on the this one, the third auto suggestion, the one with the CSS. If you click on this, this is going to create a link with the relationship between the HTML file and the CSS file and the href which is the destination of the link would be a style.css. And as both files are located at the same directory, we don't need to add any uh, extra address for this. Just the name of the file would be enough. So now we can use the CSS in our project. So let's close the explore section using Ctrl B and we go back to style.css we bring our website to the right side so we can style it and see the changes in real time. The first things I would like to do is to style the body section. So we just write body. We open a set of curly braces. And the first things I want to do, I want to uh, re uh, remove the default margin. And we set it to be zero. So let's refresh and you see that there is no margin anymore inside the website. In order to bring everything to the center, we need to change the display to flex. Sorry, uh, should be display flex. And we need to set the height of the screen to 100% of the viewport height, or we can just set it the mean height to be 100% of the viewport height, which is the 100% of the screen size. So, and now we can bring everything to the center vertically. Without this line of code, we cannot bring anything to the center because there is no dim dimension for the vertical axis. So now we can use justify content center to bring everything to the center horizontally. And we can bring the elements to the center using align item center vertically like this. And then I want to change the font of the text using font family. And I set it to be career new. This is my favorite font, uh, but you can use any other fonts you like to use. And let's the, change the background color to be a linear gradient. Uh, sorry, it should be background, not background color, because this one doesn't work with the linear gradient so linear gradient and 
I want the color to, to be changed from left to bottom. So I here, I just write down to left, bottom. And the color I want to use is light green to light blue. So now the color starts from light green and divided the screen from left bottom to the top, as you can see. It changes from blue to green. And uh, I want the... Uh, uh, the other things are okay here. So the background would be fine. Next things we want to style is this container. As you can see, the container that is covering everything. The container was here, this div with a class of container inside the HTML file. So we can target this div here inside the CSS by just adding a dot container because it's just a class. As it is a class, we need to add a dot and we just write container. The container, we, we add a border. Let's change the background color so we can see it better. So background color for this one, I just want it to be white. So I just, uh, I just want to use RGBA. I want to add the white color, which is two, 55, 255, and 255. This is white, but I don't want it to be completely white. I want it to be white, but with 10% transparency. So actually it's white, but you can see the background color. So this is going to make you a glassy design. So this is the trick for making a glassy design. Then we add a box shadow. The box shadow, we want a zero pixels for the X axis, but six pixels for the Y axis. So you see the shadow here, but it's, it is completely black. I want to make it a blurry, 10 pixels blurry. Now you can see it better. Then also, this is a kind of black. I want to make it less black, so I choose a RGBA color. First, we set it to be black by 0, 0, 0. And then I want to add 30% transparency like this. So it's a less shadow effect. Then we add some padding of 30 pixels. So we add some space between the box and the text inside it. And the borders I want it to be like rounded. So we can add a border radius of, for example, 15 pixels. I want the width of this to be 90%. So 90% is going to help you when you have a big screen. So the a space between the container and the wall would be bigger when you have a, a smaller screen. So if I make it smaller, you see that the it's always has a space. But now actually in the mobile size, you don't see the space. So we can just add a margin here. Margin is a space around the element. So we add, for example, 10 pixels, so that we have more space, so you can see like that. All right. And for bringing everything to the center, centralize everything, we can use text align center like this. So the next things I want to add here, so I think that's enough for this section for the container. The next things I wanted to install is this 
head tag so the h1 tag has a class of heading so we can target that one by just saying dot heading we open a set of curly braces and uh, i just want to change the size of the text and we set it to be 30 pixels it's a bit bigger and uh, let's make the font weight the thickness of the text to be 700 all right so the next things we want to style is this quote section all right so the quote actually has a class of quotes so we can target that one by just saying dot quote and uh, I just want the font size to be 30 pixels then the font weight to be for example 600 or maybe 500 to be a bit smaller so let's see the final version okay so maybe uh, 600 would be better and then the next thing is the author so author has the class of author so we write down author here let's add a font size of 25 pixels and add some a space around it using margin and uh, 10 pixels for the space and make the font a style to be italic so like this all right so next the next things we want to style is this button so the button has the class of btn so we can target that here we just say dot btn and uh, let's set the first this font size to be 18 pixels uh, we want the border radius which is if you want to make it rounded we set it to be 5 pixels then when we hover over it I want to see a pointing hand so I change the cursor to be pointer so when we hover over it hover over the button we see a pointing hand then uh, let's add some padding for example 10 pixels so make it bigger and we add some margin at the top so we add a space at the top of the button around 15 pixels and let's make a background color the background color i want to use rgba2 so uh, uh sorry rgba and the rgba i want it to be white so 255255 five, five, and uh, 30% transparency also I want to add a border color with RGBA2 so white color 255 255 255 and 60% transparency so you can see it's like a, a modern design And we can also make it uppercase using text transform uppercase. This is going to make all the letters 
uppercase and also I want to make the make it a little bit long uh, longer so I change the width to be 300 pixels the last things I want to do I, I want to add some hovering effects so when we hover over it I want to see a bit different background color and the color of the text I want it to be different so I target the hovering effect by just saying dot btn clone hover and here I just change the background color to be RGBA again with the white color but instead of using 30% like the one we use for the normal color I want to use 60% so when we hover over it you see a, a less transparent color then also I want to add some box shadow with 0% in the x-axis 4 pixels in the y-axis 4 pixels uh, for the blurness and RGBA color with the black color and 30% transparency so now while we, run, while we hover over it we see a shadow under it so it's like the button is uh, popping up and also we can add a transition so we have a smooth hovering effect so I ch just add a transition to all the uh, changes with 300 milliseconds duration and with the ease in and out effect so this is going to as you can see it slowly changes like this and when we hover over it I want the color of the text to be green instead of black so like this so that was it for the a styling of the project as you can see uh, we have styled it like the final version in the next section we're going to add some functionality so when we click on the button we're going to get a random quote from an offer each time like the one in the final version and also we want to have this loading effect as well so we're going to learn how to get this eight, uh, data from the API and also how to make the loading effect using the asynchronous function you and the try and catch method. So see you in the next section for the JavaScript part of the project. All right, in the last section, we have completed the CSS part of the project. In this section, we're going to work on the JavaScript part and add more functionality to our website. We want to, when we click on this button, we want to produce some random code by an author. So we, we're going to use a, an API to get this information. The first things we need to do is to create a JavaScript file. So we go to back to Visual Studio Code and we open the Explorer section. And here on the left side, we create a new file by right click and clicking on new file. And we call it index.js. And first, uh, and before using the JavaScript file, we need to add a link to the index.html by using a, a script tag. So the script tag usually goes to the end of the body tag because we want the, all the tags to be loaded first inside the browser and then we apply the JavaScript code. So we add a script tag here. We just write sc and we click on the second auto suggestion, the one with the SRC. 
and the SRC for this uh, as both files are located at the same directory the SRC is just index.js so now we can use the JavaScript inside our project we can now close the explorer section using control B and we go to uh, uh, I just want to show you first which element we need if you look at the final version by clicking on the button we always get a new code with the author so three things is important in this project this code section also the author and also we need to add an event listener to this button so anytime we click on the button we're going to trigger a function that is going to fetch data from the API and we're going to replace these two places with the new information each time so the first things we need to do is to bring this button inside the JavaScript so we go to the JavaScript file and we create a constant with the name of btn element we want to get the button here so this is going to be equal to document because we want to target all the browser and by using the get element by id we can target that button and the id of the button if you look at the html file is btn so the id is btn so we just need to write down btn inside this section now we can add the event listener so we just can say btn element dot add event listener and the the uh, the event we want to listen to is click so anytime someone click we want to trigger a function and a function we want to call it uh, for example get quote all right so this is the function we need to create it here so we call the we create a function and we call it get quote so let's test that uh, add event listener works or not so we can just console log for now clicked so we open the uh, sorry we open the console using f12 here so make sure this is a console here and now if you click on the button we're going to see clicked inside the lo uh, console log so we just console logging clicked if you click more we see the number of click is getting and increasing all right so the function and the add event listener is working the next things we need to do is to uh, i show you the api that we want to work on so if you go to google and search for a quotable who we just write down like this quotable and let's see quotable let me see if you can find the website or if you search maybe quotable io because the website's address is quotable.io so So I think this is the GitHub, so you can get that API information. So the first result is the github.com forward slash Luke Hive forward slash quotable. And if you click on that, uh, this is the uh, GitHub repository, and this is explaining how to use that API. So the public API server, the, this is the address api.quotable.io and for ex uh, 
as an example, for example, if you want to get an, a random code, you can see uh, we, we can just have a forward slash random after that address. So let me show you here. If you, for example, write down API dot quotable dot com sorry dot io forward slash random and we press enter we get a quote a random quote each time so i'll show you here so the quote here is this one inside the content and the author is this person william blake so each time you refresh the page you should see get a random quote and this API is completely free and you don't need even an API key for that. And the reason I'm seeing the, the result like this, I have an extension. So let me show you which extension. Uh, I think this is the extension, JSON formatter. So uh, let me show you. Uh, this is the website you can get that okay oh if you go to the google chrome and uh, search for the json formatter you can install it on inside your chrome so this is the name of the google chrome extension so here you can get the raw element or the parse font. So and then each time you refresh, you see a different different content and author. So I'd copy this one first. I let you need to copy this one too, and you come here, and then I just create a constant, and I call it API url and we we paste it inside a quote here all right so we have the url now we need to call this one inside this function and each time we get a different uh, quote and the author so we need to use a method called fetch to get that information so we just can create a constant here and we call it response. And this response is going to be equal to fetch. And inside the fetch, we just add this uh, API URL. So this is going to give us the response, but we need to convert this response to JSON file. We can use a dot then here. This is one method I, I have taught uh, in my other projects, but the other way is to use, uh, to make another constant, for example, data, and this is going to be equal to response dot, and we just uh, convert this one to JSON. So now uh, let me console log data and uh, we, we go to our website and we click on this button. So I, uh, we got an error. So the response.json. So in order to get this one, in this way, we need to add a weight. The reason we are adding a weight is we want to before uh, because we are we are changing this response for the JSON. So we need to wait until the result comes from this section. So we need to wait for that one. And in order to use the await, you need to change this function to asynchronous. So now 
when you fetch the data until the response comes, the code doesn't go to the next line. And when the response comes and this response is filled with the data, with this uh, uh, response, then we can use JSON to convert it. Otherwise, the, this uh, response would be empty and we cannot use JSON here. That's why we got an error. So, uh, so we try again. Now we got the result for the data. This is similar to the one we got inside the browser. So we have an author and we also have, uh, let me show you more. We have the author and we also have the content here. So two things we need, it's just this uh, author and this content. And we want to fill this quote with this content and this author with that uh, here. And each time we click, we get a different author and different content. All right. So we got the result now. So we can just fill this, uh, for example, we can just say the quote content is going to be equal to that data dot content. And if you copy this one, this one would be quote author. And this is going to be equal to author. So if you, you remember, uh, just pay attention, we have author and content and we put this one inside this uh, variables. Now we want to substitute this quote with the content and this one with the author. So we need to bring these two elements here. So the first element we need to bring is that quote. So the quote element is going to be equal to document. We want to target the browser and we use get element by ID to get that ID, which is here. Uh, this is spam. It has the ID of quote. So we need to add quote here to target that section. And uh, after this, we simply say this element. So we copy this one. We want to cha change its inner text to be this quote uh, content. So now if we click on get quote, the quote is replaced by this content and each time will be, <coughs> sorry, a different quote. Let's do the same things for the author. So the author here, this paragraph has the idea of author. So we can bring this element here and we just call it author element. And this is going to be equal to document dot get element by ID. And this is equal to that author ID. Now we can change this author. So we just say author element dot inner text is going to be equal to that sign. And remember we add this symbol plus that quote author. So now we should see the author as well. Okay. So another things I want to do, I want to get uh, prevent the this one to be filled when there is an error. For example, if for example you go to the network and make this one offline, for example, we don't have internet, an error happens. When the error happens, so you see that nothing happens here. And if you go to 
console, you have an error here. All right, so, so when, when an error happens, uh, we want to show the error. For example, we say an error happens. So in order to do that, we need to use a method called try and catch. So if you write down try, you see the try catch statement in the auto suggestion. If you click on that one, you see try and catch the error. So now you need to just uh, bring all these things. We just copy all of them and put it here. Now we can catch the error too and console log the error. And also instead of doing these things, we can just uh, these inner text instead of saying uh, just uh, nothing, we just say, for example, quote element dot inner text is equal to, for example, we just say an error happened. Try again later. I think similar things we can use for the author element. Uh, we just say an error happened here. Okay. Now if we uh, still the network, let's see, we still, we are offline here. So if you click again, so Let's refresh the page. So let's make it online first time. So now uh, if we click on get quote, we get the quote. And now if we put it in the on offline, if we click, we get an error. An error happens, try again later. So now we are actually catching the errors and we understand that there is an error and we can show it to the uh, user. So the user is not going to click here uh, all the time. So that is uh, for the try and catch. So uh, the other things we need to do is when we someone click, before the result comes, for example, for the a slow internet, I put the slow 3G, it takes time until the result comes but the user doesn't know that uh, the website is working or not so it's go he's going to click here many times and this is going to fetch uh, many things so we, the things we can do is when we are waiting for the response we just here say updating and here too we just say updating and this we disable this button so they cannot click on it and also here instead of text we just say loading so we can do that one because we are using a wait the, the code is not going to go after before getting the result so before the await we can just add that uh, for example loading to our B button we just say btn element dot inner text we change the text we just say loading Let's see it. So now if we click. Okay, let's see. btn.innerText is loading. Oh, I didn't put the semicolon here, so that's why it didn't work. So let's try again. Let's refresh the page. Let's first make this one fast. So now it shows loading when we click. Okay. When we click again, it shows loading, but, but it doesn't come back to the normal text. So we want this to be loading and also we want the button to be disabled. So we just say btn element dot disabled disabled 
first we make it true and then we copy this one oh sorry true should shouldn't be uh, we just say true like this and we copy this one and after the await when the response come we can change this one again back to normal text which is saying get a quote and also we want to uh, enable it so we just set the disable to false we have to do this one after an error happened too so otherwise when an error happens uh, the the button would stay disabled as well so we add this to at the end of the error section too so now we try it so when we click it's loading and it disabled let's uh, decrease the speed of the internet so now i cannot click and the click doesn't work so it's disabled so when it finish it goes back to get a quote okay so we can do the same things for the text as well so we make the text first and uh, we just we just say for example quote element dot inner text first we set it to be for example updating Uh, we copy this one and this is for author as well so now if we let's see let's refresh the page so now we click on get a quote we see it's updating and then it fills again updating fields and also uh, let's bring that one to the normal when uh, someone comes to the website it doesn't show any quote at the beginning we can simply do that one by calling a function just for one time at the end for example uh, what was the name of the yeah this is the name of the function get quote we can call this function one time so when the website comes, anytime you refresh or come to the website, you see a quote and you can just change it by clicking on this button. So that was it for the, this project. I hope you enjoyed and learned many things. There was a lot of concept. Uh, you learn how to use try and catch and how to fetch the, an API and wait for the response by adding an await and also uh, how to make it loading effect by just adding a different text before and after the await for the fetching. So see you in the next project. Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create an anime pix generator. As you can see from the final version of the projects, we have a button here. As we click on the button, we are going to fetch data from an API that is gives us a random anime picture and its name. So each time we click on the get anime, we see a loading effect first and then we see a new image, a random image, and it's uh, this anime's name. So you're going to learn how to use an API, how to fetch the API using try and catch method, and also how to add the loading effect like this before the, uh, the data comes inside the browser. And also we're going to learn how to make this beautiful background color and this a UI design using CSS. First thing first, in the next section, we're going to start with the HTML part of the project. So see you in the next section.
All right, let's start our project. As you can see, I have put the final version here as our reference. As you can see, we just have a container with a button and a title saying anime picks generator. So when we click on this button, this is going to get the information from the API and it's going to show us the image and the, the name of this image, the anime. So first thing first, we need to create the HTML part of our project. So I opened the Visual Studio code, but you can use any text editor you like. So I create a new window and I close the current one. So I close the get started tab and here we cl click on the file and click on the open folder to uh, create a new folder and also choose that folder. I would like to create the project in my desktop so I create the folder in my desktop. I choose here desktop and here I click on the new folder to create a new folder. I named it for the project anime uh, Pex generator. And I press enter. Generator, I missed the A here. So when we press the enter, the folder is created. Now we can click on the select folder to choose that folder. This is going to open that folder for us here. And here inside the explorer section, we can add our files inside that the folder that we have created. So we close the get started tab again. And here on the left side in the explorer section, we click on this icon to create a new folder, the, a new file. And we call the file index dot html and we press enter now the file is created and it's open on the right side which is completely empty but we can use an exclamation mark to create an html boilerplate so as you can see we just put the exclamation mark and we see this auto suggestion when we click on it we see the boilerplate which has the doc type which is showing the type and the version of the HTML we are using. For HTML5, we just need to have HTML here. Then we have the HTML tag, which contains the head and the body tag. Here, the lang attribute defines the language of the page. And in our case, we choose the language to be English. But you can choose any language you prefer for your own website. Then we have the head tag, which includes the metadata tags and also the title tag. Uh, the metadata tags includes the first one is the for the chart set and the uh, characteristics of the characters. And UTF-8 is recommended by HTML5, which contains nearly all the characters and symbols. So the users won't have any problem seeing our website. Then we have the, another metadata tag, which is a compatibility metadata tag. And it just tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine, which is Edge. This is for the users who are using uh, Internet Explorer. Then we have the uh, viewport metadata tag. So the, this tag defines the width of the screen. For example, here, the width of the screen is equals to the device's screen. For example, if you have a mobile screen, your width of your screen, width of your content is would be a smaller than the when you are using a computer or a desktop or laptop. Then we have the initial scale, which is the initial zoom level of the browser, and we just set it to be 100%. If it's 
if you choose it for example 8 sorry uh, 0.8 it's going to be 80 percent then we have the title tag which uh, shows the title of the browser we can see it now if you open the browser i'm using the uh, live server uh, extension so when you have this extension you see this go live at the bottom so when we click on it it's going to open the website inside the your default browser my default browser is chrome and the title is document as we have inside the html file so i just bring it on the right side of the browser so we can see the changes in real time Let's close the Explorer section using Ctrl B. So now we have more space on the left side. And uh, let's change the title. It's now just document. Let's change it to the name of our project, which is Anime Pix Generator. So as you can see, the title has been updated to Anime Pix Generator. So this live server extension is going to update the website inside the browser as we save our file inside the uh, VS Code. So now we can just continue and make the HTML file similar to the one in the final version. In the final version, we have a container here, a main container. So let me draw and you can see. So we have a container here. Then we have a title. Then we have a button. And finally, we have another container for the image and the name of this uh, anime. So this is another container because we want to uh, remove this container when once the person comes inside the website. And then when we click on the button, we want to see it. And then we have an image tag. So let me draw it with a different color. So and then we have an image tag and also we have the name of the anime. So first we need to have this. We have this container that is covering everything. Then we have two things here. Then we have another container that covers both of the image and the name. Okay. For the container, we use the div. Div is just a, an empty tag doesn't have any dimension so inside the body we add a div with a class of container we can do that with just writing down dot container and if we, if we press enter it's going to create a div with a class of container this is just a shortcut using emmet then we have the h3 tag for the title which is saying anime picks generator. We can copy this text from here and paste it here. Okay. After this H1 tag, so now we should see the anime picks generator in our website. Then we have a button. So we just add a button. This button. Uh, let's uh, yeah let's add some so we just add a button sorry button and this is is going to have a class of btn and also an id of btn so for the class we add dot for the id we add uh, sorry id of btn for ID, we add hashtag. So now if we press enter, we see a button with the class of BTN and ID of BTN. And inside the button, we just say uh, get 
enemy. We should see it now here. Then, uh, as I mentioned before, then we have a container that is covering both of the image and the name of the person. So we add another div with a class of anime dash container. Okay. And uh, inside this div, we're going to have an image tag. So for the source, we don't have an alternative. That's fine. For the source, I'm just going to now, for now, I just search for anime image. I just choose one of them on the internet. I just choose the image. For example, this image. I just, you can just right click and choose copy image address. And uh, you just paste the link that you have copied inside the source of the image. So now you can see the anime image. The reason I have added this image, I want to style this in the next section. So we need to have an image to style the website. But later, using JavaScript, we always get the random image from the API. So we don't need to have any image. So we're going to remove this image later after styling the project. And after the image, we have this uh, name of the ar uh, artist. So we just add another H3 tag. So this was uh, H1. We can change this one to H3 actually. We don't need it that much big actually. For this one, uh, we add the H3 tag with a class of anime name. Okay. And inside that, we just write down anime name for now so because we want to style it using css but later this is going to be dynamic too using javascript and also this image it has a class as well so uh, let's add a class inside the image and the name of the class would be anime dash img okay So that is fine and uh, that's it for the HTML file, uh, file and the coding of our project. In the next section, we're going to style this website, this HTML using CSS and we're going to achieve this beautiful UI for our project. So see you in the next section for the CSS part of the project. All right, in the last section, we have completed the HTML part of the project. We just uh, put the title, the button, an image, and also another uh, anime name tag, which is just an H3 tag. So now we want to start the project using CSS and achieve this UI, which has a background color. As you can see, it's just a start from blue to goes to yellow. Then we have a container with the box shadow. Then we just have a title. The, the button is a style and also the image is styled to be circle. And with this size and also we have another container here with the artist name. The first thing we need to do is just create a CSS file. So here inside the VS code, we open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And here we just create another file and we call it a style.css. Before using the CSS, we need to add a link 
to the CSS file within the HTML file. So inside the index.html, just after the title tag here, we add a link tag. We just write the link and we just click on the auto suggestion, the one with the CSS. This is going to create a link tag with the relationship between the HTML file and the CSS file. And the href here is the destination or address of the this file, the installer CSS, because they are both uh, located at the same folder. So we just need to have a standard CSS as the address. So now we can just close the Explorer section and just go to the installer CSS and start styling our project. The first things I want to do, I want to style the body section. As you can see, the body has a color, like a gradient or a color, we call it linear gradient. And everything is in the middle. So we need to use the display flex to bring everything to the center using content, uh, sorry, justifies content center and align item center. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So now we just uh, target the body section by just saying body and we open a set of curly braces. First thing first, we remove the margin and we just set the margin to be zero. So there will be no space between these things and the wall of the browser. Then we can just change the background color. So we just say background. And as I mentioned, we want to have uh, this color, which just starts from blue and goes to the yellow from left to right. So in order to create that, we just need to use the linear gradient. And it goes from left to right. So we just write to right here. We add a comma. The first color is light blue. Okay. And the second color after comma is yellow. So now you can see the color. If I make it bigger, you can see it starts from blue and goes all the way to yellow. So you can choose any color you like on, you can style it to right, to left or any things uh, suits you and uh, you can play with that one and makes your desired website. After that, we want to use uh, display flex in order to bring them to the center. We change the display from block to flex. And also we want, we need to have a height of hundred percent to bring them to the center vertically because uh, there is no def defined height, so we cannot bring everything to the center vertically. So we set the height to be 100% of the viewport height. So it's always be 100%, but no matter which zoom level or whatever it is, it's always 100%. Then we can use justify content center to bring them to the center horizontally so you can see everything comes to the center then we can use align item center to bring everything to the center vertically well because this image is so big you cannot sense it but as soon as we make this image smaller you can see everything is in the center both vertically and horizontally so let's bring this one to the right side again and also I want to change the, so we cannot even see the text. Okay. So I can quickly just make the image a smaller. So the image has the class of, if you remember for the image, we added the class of anime dash image. So we can target that one by just saying dot 
anime image and let me just as make this one small so we we change the height to be 300 pixel and width to be 300 pixel as well so now we can see that we have we have brought everything to the center so i'm going i'm going to style it later and make it circle on whatever later just now i want to make it smaller so we can see the other changes inside the body section the other things i want to do i want to change the font of the text so i just changed the font family to cursor new cursor monospace this is up to you too you can choose any text uh, font uh, family you like so let me bring this one up then uh, let's uh, style the this container so now we have a we want to install this container you see the white container with the background white so we want to create this container so after the body we target this container this div with a class of container that is covering everything so here we just say dot container We want to change the background color to white, but I want to I don't want to make it completely white. I just use the color called Alice Blue, which is kind of white, but it's not completely white. It doesn't uh, hurt the eyes. It, it's a kind of gray. Then we want to add a border radius of 10 pixels. This is going to add a rounded corner. and uh, let's add a box shadow so like a final version we want to have a box shadow so it brings up the container so the box shadow it has a few properties and uh, the first one is horizontal shadow then we have the vertical shadow the horizontal shadow we set it to be zero so it doesn't go to the left or right it just stays in the center then we have the 10 pixels so as you can see now we have 10 pixels shadow at the bottom then we have 20 pixels blurness so this is going to be like this so the as you can see the left and right has a now shadow too it's just a blur of the shadow but the shadow is so dark i we can change that one by changing the color so we choose uh, an uh, RGBA color 0, 0, 0 for the black color and then 0 0.3 for the transparency so 30% transparency for the color so as you can see the shadow is very nice now we want to bring all the text to the center so we can use text align center we bring everything to the center then we can add some space between the container and the stuff inside we're using we are using padding 10 pixels here then we want to set the width to be 450 pixels this is going to be this size and uh, when we are, have a bigger screen, we have uh, 450 pixels too. But in the mobile size, if you open the uh, dev tools using Ctrl Shift C, and if you choose this one, the mobile, you can see in the mobile size, the container is just connected to the wall here. In order to prevent that, we can just add a margin of 5 pixels so it's going to add a space around that uh, container so it's not going to connect to the wall so now it's good for the mobile size as well so let's bring it to the right side again so that was it for the container part Let's install this button here.
So after that, we're going to target the button. The button has the class of btn. So we can target that just using dot btn and we add a set of curly braces. So now uh, for the button, I want to add a background color of green. And then I want to change the color of the text of the button to be Alice blue. Uh, the button is a bit small, so we can just add some padding. So it's add some space between the text and the border. In the X axis, sorry, in the top and bottom, we add 10 pixels and for the left and right, we add 30 pixels. And also we want to add, we want to increase the size of the text to be, for example, 16 pixels. Then let's add some space between the button and also the image. So we can just add a margin button, bottom, margin bottom of 30 pixels. And let's make this uh, button as give it, give it some bo uh, like a border radius to make it rounded in the corners. So we just say border radius. We just add six pixels for the radius. And when we hover over it, I want the mouse to be to have uh, to have to have a pointer. So when we change the cursor to be pointer, so when we hover over it, we see a change inside the cursor. It goes from pointing uh, to the pointing here. So normal to point. So you see a pointing hand here. So that was it for the button. The other things I want to do for the button, uh, it, if you look at the final version, when we click and request, the buttons becomes gray and disabled, so we cannot request until the image loaded. You see? So we want to have a, a style for the disabled too. So here we just install the button and we just target the disabled. If it's when it's disabled, we want to have a background color of uh, gray. And also, we want to curse set the cursor instead of pointer to be not allowed. So now it's just a normal button. But if you go to the index.html and make this button disabled. You see, this is now gray, and also we cannot click on it because it's not allowed, okay? So let's remove the disabled now. Because later we're going to add this disabled using JavaScript. Now for now, we just make it as a default enabled. So that was it for the button. The next things we wanna uh, style is this image. So we already give the image height and width. Let's make it rounded using border radius 50%. This is make it rounded. And also I want to add some border around the image. So we just say border, the width of the border to be three pixels. I want it to be solid, so it's just a line. As you can see now, we can see the border, but it's just uh, black. But I want it to be green. Okay. After this image, we're going to style this uh, name, enemy name. So 
the anime name, as you, if you remember, the class is anime dash name. So I copy this and I add a dot here and I paste it here. So now we can target and style it inside the CSS file. And we just say margin, we, uh, we add a margin of 20 pixels. So we add some space between them. And I want to, it has a background color similar to this button. So we add a background color of green. Let's change the color of the text to be Alice blue. And uh, let's add some padding of 20 pixels. So we add some space between them or uh, just 10 pixels would be fine now. And uh, let's add a border radius. So we add a rounded border of six pixels. Let's make the si uh, size of the text bigger by using font size 17 pixels. And uh, we actually made it smaller. So, and then we add the font weight of 600. So we make, we make it like this. I think that is fine for the a styling. Actually, I want to hide this one. So like the final version, when we, someone comes for the first time, they don't see the image and the name and then they're going to be appeared. So for now, we can remove it by just uh, targeting that anime container, this container. So we can just target that by adding a dot and anime container. And then we can just for now, set the display to none. So this is going to remove that. But later, using JavaScript, we are going to dynamically show this anime container. When we, someone click for the first time, they get anime button. So that was it for the styling of the project using CSS. In the next section, we're going to add the functionality to the project using JavaScript. So see you in the next section for the JavaScript part of the project. All right, in the last section, we have completed the CSS part of the project. In this section, we're going to create the JavaScript file and add more functionality to the project. As you can see from the final version, when we click on the button, get anime, this is going to fetch some data and bring, uh, get the image and the name of the person. If the name is not available, you see sometimes unknown. And when we click, you see the loading and here say updating. And also here we see loading as well. So we need to get the API as well. And uh, we need to manipulate some stuff here. Four elements we need to manipulate. First, we need to have this uh, button. We need to change this image and also we need to change this name. And also for this container, the anime container, we need to change the display. For example, now the display is none. When we have the information, we want to have the display a uh, different way. We want to have the display it's uh, yeah it, this one is none sorry this one is none this one the display is block so we need to change the display from block to none and or none to block and vice vice versa so first thing first we need to create the javascript file so we open the 
explore section using Ctrl Shift E and here on the left in the explorer section we create another file and we name it index.js and like the one we did for the installer CSS we need to add a link to the uh, JavaScript file within the HTML code. Let's close the explorer section using Ctrl B uh, for linking to the JavaScript, we need to add a link at the end of the body tag uh, because we need to have all the elements loaded and then we read the JavaScript code. So in order to have that link, we just use the script tag and the script tag, we're going to use the second auto suggestion, the one with the SRC. SRC is the destination of this file and as both files are located in the same directory, so we just need to have the index.js as the source. Now we can use JavaScript in our project. So as I mentioned, four elements we need to bring inside the JavaScript. The, the elements includes the button, as you can see, we have the ID of BTN. The another one is this image. And the last one is this uh, H3 tag. And also we want this container all together. So for the button, we can, uh, we just create a constant and we just call it BTN element. And this is going to be equal to document because we want to search a document. And we use the get element by ID and we write down BTN. So the reason we use get element by ID is that because this button has the ID of BTN. So we can target that ID by using the get element by ID. So we got the element now and we have it here. The next element we want to get is the that uh, container, this container, anime container. So I copy this, and as this is a class, not ID, uh, first we write down the the name of the constant. So we just say anime container element, and this is equal to document dot because this is a class this is not id we need to use a query selector and because this is a class we need to add a dot here and paste the name of the uh, class so dot anime dash container so this is going to get that element and put it inside this variable the next element we need is the image. So we just call it anime IMG element. And this is going to be equal to document dot query selector. And as it is a class, we just say dot anime dash IMG as we have here anime dash img and the last one is this one the anime dash name so i copy this one and here we just create another constant and we call it anime name element and this is going to be equal to document dot query selector and as it is a class so we just say dot anime dash name so the, for the first time, first one, because it wasn't a class and we used the get element by ID, so we didn't add any dot or hashtag. Okay. So we have four, all the four elements. The things we want to do, we want to add an event listener to this button. So when we click on it, we want to call a function. That function is going to get the information from the API. 
as the one in the final version. So we, it, this one has an event listener, a click event listener. When we click on it, this is going to trigger a function that is going to get the information from the API. So let's add the event listener here. So we just say btn element and we, we add the event list listener by using add event listener. So we want to add an li event listener that is going to be triggered by a click. And this one is going to uh, call a function. We just create a function here. And this function, we just create it completely. This is going to call that uh, API. So let me show you which API we are using. So here in the Google, if you search for, uh, let me see. So we have to search for a website called Cat Boys. Okay. Uh, Cat Boys API. So if you search for Cat Boys API on Google, in the search result, there is a website called catboys.com and forward slash API. So if you click on this, this is going to show you all the APIs they have. So uh, for example, if we write down HTTPS api.catboys.com forward slash image, this is going to return a random image for us. Not only image, it gives you the URL of the image and the, uh, the name of that artist. Okay. So let me try it here. We can try it. If you click on the try it now, you can try it yourself in your browser. So as you can see, each time you refresh the page, they give you a different image and different artist name. And also the URL, this, this is the one we want to use is this URL and this artist. So the, the URL is just an image. The artist is just the name of that character that we have. There is no need for the API key or other things for this website. Okay, let's go back to our website and let's continue. So in order to catch the API, in order to fetch the API, we want to use a JavaScript method called fetch. But because there is, there is a possibility that the API returns, a, for example, an error, we need to catch that error. So in JavaScript, we always use a method called try and catch. So if you write down try, there is a suggestion here, try catch a statement. And if you click that on that, you see we have a try and catch the error. So this is going to help us. So when we fetch the data from an API and an error happens, we can catch the API error and understand the er error here. All right, all right. So, so in order to get the result, we just create a constant called response and this is going to fetch from the API. And the address for the API, if you look at the website Catboys, the base URL is api.catboys.com. So we can copy this and put it here. And forward slash IMG is going to give us an image. So we just say IMG. All right. But this is just the response. We need to convert this one to a, a JSON. And the other things we need to do, if you look at the final version, if you click, until we are waiting, we see a loading effect. 
So how do we know that we are waiting for the response? There is a way to do it. So instead of just fetching the data, we just uh, add a wait here. When you add a wait, let me write the await. Await. This await is going to uh, stop uh, going to the next code until the fetching finished. All right. But in order to use the await, you need to change this function from the normal function to asynchronous function. So this is the rule of JavaScript. So anytime you use await, you need to change the function to asynchronous. It means that this function needs to, it has something inside it that uh, you need, uh, it's, 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 it's needed to be wait. So, so it has a waiting for one of the line at least. So we need to wait for the fetching. Also, we need to wait for converting this one to JSON file. So we can get the data here. Let me create a constant. We can make the data by awaiting for the, for the response and we use the, we change this response to JSON file by just adding the JSON method here. So now we can use this data. So if you console log, if you console log the data, now let's see in our website, we open the console using F12. So let me go to the console here. And when we click on the get anime, as you can see, now we got the data. So we have console log the data. So we got the data. The data is gives us uh, the URL for the image. So if you copy this one and paste it here, this is an image, all right? And also, uh, we have the artist name, which is unknown for this particular image. So it has the URL here and also the artist. So these two things we need. And each time you click, you get a different one. So this time, the image, if we paste the image, it should be different because each time it gives you a random image. All right. So now we have the information inside the data. The things we need to do is just uh, uh, first thing first, we need to change the display of that container to block. So we see that container and then we need to uh, change it. So let's uh, delete this console log now. So we already got the data. Now we can, uh, this anime, for example, uh, first thing first, we need to change this one to anime container. So the anime container, we just change its a style and we change the display. This should be a style dot display. We change the display to block instead of now. So now each time we click on get anime, we should see the container because we waited for the response and then the container from the none became block. Okay. Now we want to change this image. We want to change this image to the one that we are getting from the API from which is inside this data, data.url. So this anime image element, we change its SRC, the source, to data.url. So now you see that 
the image is different. So each time you, you get a different image. But you know, you, we don't have any loading effect on other things, but some images comes faster, some images come slower. It depends on the internet speed. Let's, let's change this anime name as well. So the anime name is easy too. So we just say anime name. That should be here. So anime name element. And we want to change its inner text. to data dot artist so now this is unknown but this one is unknown too but this one is a different name okay so it depends on the character we, we get a different name so we, we've done with this one we also can catch the error and console log the error if an error happens. The other things we want to do is uh, when we in the final version, when we click, first thing first, we actually de uh, disable the button so we cannot click again until the image comes. So it's not going to be too many requests. And instead of the image, we see a spinner. And instead of the name, we see updating when we are waiting. So uh, we see the wait here. So before the wait, we can change, the, for example, the button. So we just say button element. And we change its disabled, disabled. Let me check. Disabled. We change the disabled uh, from false to true. Okay. Now, if we click, it becomes uh, disabled. All right. Now it's disabled. But when this uh, fetching finished, we want to make this one enabled again or we just uh, uh, make it false. All right. So when we request, becomes disabled. But when the image uh, and the text comes, it becomes uh, enabled. So from disabled comes to it. And also uh, we want to make it disabled and also we want to the text uh, the text inside it, we just say inner text to be loading dot dot dot. So like this. So when we click, you see loading. Now it's showing loading, but we need to bring it back again. So after the fetching, so we make it again get anime all right so when we click it's loading and then it comes back to get anime after the fetching so i think you already got the idea so we have to await here so before the wait we add the loading effect and after the wait we just bring them back to the normal okay now we can do it for the image and this name as well. So for the anime name, so anime name, so an anime name element, we want the inner text to be updating when we are waiting for the response so now this is unknown just pay attention to this one when we click it's updating until the response comes 
So the other thing is we need to add the loader. So for the loader, we I I want to get the loading from a website called uh, loading IO. So if you search for loading IO, there is a website called loading.io. This website you can get uh, too many free loading effects. Uh, some of them you need to pay, but most of them is free. You can search this for lots. There are a lot of icons and loading effects you can get for free. But uh, the one I want to get is just uh, this one, this uh, circle one. Uh, the color I want to use is, I want to just this use this one, the frozen one. And... Uh, I want to make it a smaller in the screen and the thickness to be smaller as well like this uh, the background I want it to be transparent and the other things are okay so I want to just download the SVG so this website is free to use to download so you just click on the SVG and uh, click on animated to download the animated section. So and then you click on free download and click on download. Okay. So now I have the file. I just drag the file and if we open the explorer section and we paste it here. Okay. This is just the code code. That's why it's very fast to be loaded. So it's not a file. SVG has a good things for your website because it's very fast to be loaded. And then I just want to change the name of the file to be a spinner. A spinner.svg. Now let's close the explorer section. So this image, anime image element.src, it was data.url, okay? But the time that is being loaded at the top, instead of data.url, we just add that a spinner. So we just say a spinner dot svg, okay? Now, if we go to our website and we click, so each time we click on get anime, we see the spinner and the image comes. All right. So this is the way that people use uh, for adding the loading effect in their website. So they use uh, a wait. So the code is, is stops until the answer comes. So if you don't use the await, it's going to request and goes to the next line. So it, it doesn't show you the loading effect, actually. So you need to add await and also change the function to asynchronous. And before this uh, request from the API, you make the... You, uh, you add your loading effect and after the uh, fetching, you're going to get the information from this fetching and put it here. But if an error happens, uh, uh, the other things we need to do is just uh, uh, change everything back to normal if an error happens. For example, the button and the then inside the button is going to be this one and also the anime the anime name instead of updating we just say an error happened please try again so uh, let me show you, for example, an error happens. Uh, let's open the web developer tools using Ctrl Shift C. 
and we go to network so let's first we uh, request now if you go to network here and instead of uh, in now we can change the internet speed for example you can make it slow or even you can make yourself offline so if you make it offline and request so you get an error because there is no fetching happens you can see that uh, here we see an error happens please try again all right and this also button again came back to the git anyway so you can try again and each time you get an error but if you go online again you can have a request and get the image so this is the time that you get an error inside your website and you can catch the error and show the error to the user all right so that was it for our uh, website i hope you enjoyed and learned many things actually uh, there was a lot of concept in this uh, project like fetching uh, try and catch how to give add the loading effects and how to change the style using javascript i hope you enjoyed and learned many things so see you in the next project Welcome to this project. In this project, we are going to create a random emoji. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have a button here saying click, and also we see an emoji name tag here. When we click on this button, we are going to see a random emoji. For example, this one is just a person and a pen, and then the meaning of the emoji is cook and if you click more we're going to get another one for example this one is man detective medium dark skin tone so we're going to learn how to retrieve data from api using javascript and also we're going to learn how to install this website in this way using css the other things we need to learn is to apply for the emoji api website and get their api keys in the next section we're going to start with the html part of the project so see you in the next section all right let's start our project uh, i put the final version here as a reference so we can use it uh, when we are coding okay uh, let's go back to our desktop and we open the visual studio code so we close the get started tab and we can open the explorer section by the view menu we click on view and we open the explorer section or we can use ctrl shift e and here we open a folder so i would like to create a project in my desktop so i click on desktop and here we i click on the new folder to create a new folder and i call the project a uh, random emoji and i press enter and here we can click on the select folder to select the folder so now the folder is selected let's close the get started tab again and on the left side in the explorer section we can click on here to create a new file or we can right click and click on the new file and we just create an html file and we call it index.html so now we have our HTML file on the, on the right side, which is completely empty, but we can use an exclamation mark. Exclamation mark actually by using Emmet gives us a, an HTML boilerplate, like here you can see. So if you click on the first auto suggestion, we're going to get a, a boilerplate of HTML. 
You might be familiar with these syntaxes, but I'm going to explain and assume that you are a complete beginner and this is your first HTML and CSS JavaScript project. All right, so here in the first line, we have the doc type, which uh, tells the browser which version of HTML we are using. And for the HTML5, we just need to have HTML here. Then we have the HTML tag, which is covering both of the head and body tag. And the length attribute here defines the language of the page. And in our case, we set it to be English. Then we have the head tag, which includes the meta tags and also the title. The first bit meta tag for the character charset attribute. So it defines the, the characteristics of the, for example, UTF-8 contains all the characters and symbol and by using this one as it is recommended by HTML5, we won't have any problem seeing any symbols in our web browser. The next one is the compatibility meta tag, which tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the recent engine, recent rendering engine, which is Edge because Edge is the newest version of Internet Explorer. So both is created by Microsoft, but the Edge, uh, Microsoft prefers Edge now. And for the next meta tag, we're going to set the viewport. For example, we set the width to be uh, exactly of the device ex screen. For example, the mobile size has the uh, less width than the computer uh, screen. And the initial zoom level is defined here, which is 100% uh, in our case. Then we have the title of our uh, website. And everything we do goes inside the body tag. So let's open the our live server extension we are using an extension called live server that allows us to see our website live so we click on go live here on in the bottom and this is going to open a new tab inside the internet uh, chrome in my case because my default browser is chrome and the title is document here but we can change the document title, the title here, for example, we just put the name of our project, which is random emoji. Now, if you come back here, we see that the title is random emoji. Let's bring the website on the right side and let's bring the inter, uh, VS code on the left side so we can see it both of them next to each other. We see the result in real time. And let's close this Explorer section to so have more space. I also use Alt-Z to turn on the word wrap. If you close, uh, if you use Alt-Z, uh, you see all code here. So if you look at the final version, we have a title here. After that, we have a, a div here. Div is an empty tag. We have a div that is uh, having a button here and a paragraph under it that is the emoji name. So we need to have a head tag. So I'm going to add a head tag inside. So I just write down H2 and I press enter so I get the h2 tag then we can just write down the name of the project random emoji we should see it now inside the browser so as you can see uh, it's not styled like the final version because we haven't used CSS yet so we're going to install this using CSS and after the h2 tag, we're going to have a div 
And inside the div, we're going to have a button, which is saying, for now, click. Okay. Let's close this. And uh, so we have the button now. You can see it. Let me zoom so you can see it better. And after the button, I'm going to have the another paragraph which just say emoji name. Let's disable this. Okay. So now we have done with the HTML. We can see the HTML. And in the next section, we're going to use CSS to style this and make it like the final version like this. So in the, inside the final version, the, the button is just showing click. Uh, so we're going to style this based on the final version. So see you in the next section for styling our project. All right, in the last section, we have completed the HTML part of the project. In this section, we're going to style the project using CSS. The first thing we need to do is to create a file, a CSS file. So we need to open the Explorer section using Control Shift E. And here we click on this icon to create a new file and we call it a style CSS. Before using CSS, we need to add a link to the index.html file and connect these two files together so in order to, for them to work. So inside the index.html, just after or before the title tag, we need to add a link tag. We just write to link and we click on the uh, third auto suggestion, the one with the CSS. So this is going to create a relationship between the HTML file and the CSS uh, style sheet. And the href here is the destination of the file. And as both files are located at the same directory, we just need to write down a style.css inside the href. Now we can use CSS in our project. So we go to a style.css. We can close the explorer section to have more space on the left side. And we start with the body section. So we just write body. And we want to firstly remove the padding and margin around this uh, around this uh, elements so we just say padding zero and margin zero so they they should be connected so let me refresh okay so it's just connected now and let's uh, change the background color of the body so we just say background and we set the color for example I choose a salmon color okay you see the change inside the here and in order to bring them exactly in the center we need to change the display of the body to flex so let's change the display to flex this one uh, bring them uh, next to each other but we want them to be on top of each other so we change the flex direction to column instead of the we just say column instead of the row and if we want to bring them in the center horizontally we just say justify uh, sorry vertically justify content center but we, you see that it didn't move because we have to set the height of the screen to 100 percent of the viewport height so in this way we have this much height 
And by using Justify Content Center, we bring the elements to the center of the screen. And whatever the size of the screen is, it all, it's always stay in the center. So I'm changing the zoom level now, you see. After the bringing them to the center vertically, we can bring them to the center hor uh, horizontally using Align Item Center. Okay. And in order to uh, just, so everything looks fine. Now, so that's it for the body section. And let's install this H2. We want to make it exactly like the final version. We want to make it change the, uh, oh, firstly, we need to change the font of the, uh, our project. So the font I want to use here in the body section, we just say font family, and I want to use the courier new courier monospace. This is kind of uh, this similar to this. I think it's uh, okay for our project, but you can choose any font that you like in your own project. Then we need to style this one. Inside the index.html, we, we have chosen the H2 tag for the header. So we can target the H2 here and we need to style it first thing first I want to change this size of the font so the font size I want to make it double and in order to make it double we just need to write down two RAM RAM is just a basic size which is 14 pixels I believe and when you double it we can just say two REM so now we have the double size. Then we want to change the color of that. So I want the color to be, uh, I just want to use the Alice blue or we can choose white if you want. This is kind of a, a little bit different from bluish white. Okay. And we need to, I think that's enough for the title. Let's install this button and this uh, text. So these two are located inside the div. Inside the index.html, we see that these two are inside a div. But uh, it's not good practice to target a div. We need to add a class name to the div and a class and then we're going to style it here so we just call this div for example section and we can target that using dot section so this is going to be exactly let me just say div but if you have more than one div so you're going to change the style of all of them but in this case we're just changing the style of this div here this by just exactly the same div okay so we just want to bring them everything to the center we can use align uh, let's make a text align center so we want to bring them exactly in the center so that's enough for that and the next things we want to target is this button. So the button doesn't have any class to, so we need to add a class here and we just call it, uh, we just call it BTN. Okay. And here we can install it. We just say dot BTN. And uh, first thing first, we I want to increase the size. So I just say, font weight, sorry, font size, I want to make it five times. So just say five REM, okay. And uh, for the 
I want to remove the border. So I just say border none. I don't want it to be to have a border. But and also I don't want a background color. But I want it to be like this one. It has a background, but it's transparent. Okay. You can simply achieve that by just saying background. Okay, we choose background. And the we can just say RG. B, RGB, we can choose the color and also we can add the transparency as well. So the color I want to choose is 255, 255, 255, which is just the white color. And then I want the 0.2 transparency, okay, which is, I believe is 20% transparency, okay. So the background color, which is salmon, now you can see from here. Then uh, we want a, uh, some uh, corner here, some uh, rounded corner. We can simply achieve that by just adding border radius. Let me see. I Border radius and the... Uh, we set the border radius to be 10 pixels. Okay. Then we want to add uh, some padding, some space between the text and the border. So 15 pixels for the padding. So, right, so it looks fine, uh, but if you look at the final version, inside, when we have a, something here, when we don't hover over it, we see it's gray. And when we hover over it, it becomes colorful. We can make the icons inside gray by just saying filter, and they've set the filter to be gray scale. And we don't set anything inside the parentheses. This is completely make the make it gray. And when we want to achieve the color, we set the gray scale to zero. Okay. So now we have this uh, gray uh, filter as well. And as you can see here, we have some transition. It doesn't suddenly change. So in order to add a transition, we just write down transition. The transition we want to apply is just for the filter because we don't want to apply for other things because it makes the your website slower. And we want the transaction is just to be 0.2 seconds and with the ease in and out effect. The other things I want to do is uh, when we hover over it, okay, we want to see a pointing hand. So when we, uh, we just set the cursor to be pointer, so when we hover over it, we see a pointing hand. Okay, that was it for the button. Let's install this. Uh, so another things we want to do for the button is just, uh, I told you, when, uh, when we want to hover over it, we want to make this icons colorful so we just say dot btn dot hover we want to use the hover pseudo class and we just change the filter from gray scales which is here complete gray stair to zero so it's going to be colorful this way Okay, and let's install this uh, text quickly. So let's add some class here. So we add a class here and we just say MOG dash name. So the, for the class name, you have to add a dash. So we can target this one by just saying dot MOG dash name. And I want just to make it a little bit bolder by just saying font weight. 
600 and also I want the color of the text to be dark blue okay so as you can see here all right that was it for the CSS part of the project in the next section we're going to add the functionality of getting these uh, random emojis and also the name of the emoji instead of just showing emoji name so see you in the next section for the JavaScript part of the project All right, in the last section, we have completed the CSS part of our project and we have styled the, uh, the website. In this section, we're going to start adding functionality to our project using JavaScript. First thing we need to do is to install and add the JavaScript file to our Visual Studio code. So we need to open the Explorer section. We can use Ctrl Shift E to open the Explorer section. And on the left side, we can create a new file and we call it index.js. And as we did with, for the CSS file, we need to connect the HTML file and the JavaScript file as well. Otherwise, we cannot use the JavaScript file. For doing that, instead of adding the link tag at the beginning of the project, we need to add the script tag at the end of the body tag. The reason we are adding the script tag at the end of the body tag, because uh, JavaScript needs the elements to be loaded first, and then we need to manipulate these elements using JavaScript. So, First thing first, we, the elements should be loaded, then JavaScript should work. Otherwise, we cannot see the elements inside JavaScript. So we need to add the script tag at the end of the body tag. So we add a script tag using just, we write down SC, and we click on the second auto suggestion with the one with the SRC. SRC in the script tag is similar to the href inside the link tag. It's just the destination of the file. And as both files, the index.js and index.html are located at the same directory, we just need to write index.js for the destination of the file. Now we can use the JavaScript inside our project. So now we can go to the index.js and start our uh, manipulation. So two things we need to change here. First, this we need to track the click on this button. So when we click on the button, we need to do something. And also we want to change this emoji name as well. So as you can see from the final version, when we click on this button, we, we track the clicks on this button. Let me refresh the page. So we click here. The JavaScript detects the click and loads a new emoji here and also change the, uh, the, the definition of the emoji here under the button. So we are changing to actually uh, place the button and also this text and also we are detecting the clicks on the button as well. So we need to add an add event listener to the button and also we need to change the value of these two buttons using a method called inner text. Okay, let's do it inside our own website, the final version uh, here, the current one. So we need to bring in two things, the button and the, this text. So the button has a class of BTN. So we can add an ID here, so because uh, we wanna have a unique button to track. So we need to add a 
ID. We can also track, uh, bring it using this class, but it's a bit a better practice to add an ID to anything we want to bring inside the JavaScript. So here we just write btn and uh, inside the index.js we can bring it inside and create a reference using we create a constant and we call it btn element okay and inside a document document is everything we have inside the website so we just say if inside a document we want to get an element by its id so we use this method get element by id and the the, the id we want to get is that btn okay so the id here was btn okay let me close the style now so we brought inside the btn now we can add the event listener or other things here and the next things we want to bring inside is this paragraph so the paragraph i added id as well so i call this emoji dash name okay and inside the index.js we're going to create another constant and we call this one emoji name element and this is going to be equal to document dot get element by id and the id name is emoji dash name so we have both elements now now we, we can add the event listener here for this button. So we just say btn element. We add an add event listener to this. And the event we want to track let's see. So the event we want to track is click. So we just write click here. And when someone clicks, we want to trigger a function. So we need to add a function here. So when we someone click, we want to trigger a function. So we need to create a function here. And so let's first console log. We see it's working. So we just console log clicked. And let's open the console log here inside our website using F12. So the console is open. Let me bring it down. Okay. So when we click on this click, we should see the text clicked. So I click here. So let's refresh the page. Okay. It's uh, sometimes when you uh, start coding, you need to refresh to everything be applied. Sometimes the live server doesn't work, but by, af uh, by after refreshing, everything would be fine. So we click on click again. So you see each click is going to be considered here. All right. So after this, we want to manipulate this text and this button and we want to replace this button by some random emojis for getting the emojis we are going to use an api uh, and we need to search for a website on google called emoji api just search emoji api and in, in the search results, you click on a website called emoji-api.com, okay? For this website, you can see they're giving you the API key. 
as we I registered before, but if you don't see the API key, you just write down your email and they're going to give you the API key. It's completely free and there's no need to any registration. You just need to uh, verify your email, okay? For example, if I open this website inside a new incognito website, let me open emoji. Let me search emoji API and open it inside an, an incognito. So as you can see, you don't see any uh, API key, but if you write down your email, for example, I write down one of my other email, for example, code with Sahan at gmail.com. And if you click on get, a key they're going to give you an API key okay so you can just copy this and go back to Visual Studio Code so the things we want to do here let me show you how we would do it okay so we want to have a a constant called emoji and first we want to keep it an empty uh, bracket so an empty array and then we want to fill this array with the emojis by each request they're going to give us uh, lots of emojis but we just store some of them inside this uh, constant so i'm going to show you how to do it First, we need to create a function and we call this function add emoji or get emoji. Okay. And uh, we're going to call this function once the website is loaded. So we need to call this function here. So, so when we refresh the page, we're going to call this function one time and this function it's going to fetch the data from that emoji API so we create a variable and we call it response response and this is going to fetch the data but uh, the, for fetching we need to use a wait because this is going to return a data so we need to wait for this response so we, we are using a wait here and the method we are using to fetch the data is just fetch okay and inside this one we need to add the url of the api we want to get so the url is https and uh, two forward slash, and we just say emoji dash API dot com, and we add forward slash because we want to get all the emojis. We just write emo emojis here, and after that we need to add the API key that we have copied. So we just add a question mark. We add a parameter called access underline key. And this is going to be equal to the API key that we have copied. So I need to paste this one. So this is the same co code that we got here. So I've copied here. Okay. As we are using a weight, we need to change this function from normal function to asynchronous function. That's the rule of using a wait because uh, this is returning a promise. So this function needs to wait until it gets the result and go to the uh, next line. And anytime you use a wait, the code should wait for the response. And we need to change the function to asynchronous function. All right, so we got the response here. 
then we need to change the response to a JSON data. So we need to get the data here. And this is going to be await to because for changing it to response, we need to await to. So we just change the response by calling the JSON method. So this is going to uh, convert this response to the JSON. Now we can console log and see what we are getting. So we just console log data. So let me close this emoji API, this one as well. So let's open the Explorer uh, section, sorry, uh, console log using F12. All right. As soon as we refresh the page, we get an array of emojis. Okay, you see? So there are around uh, 2,693, 94 uh, emojis. So each of these one, for example, if you click on 0 to 99, it gives you the emoji. For example, the uh, happy face and all the facing emojis to the end. Okay. And I want to show you, for example, if you don't get your API key, for example, I delete the last uh, digit here. I just delete this one. Now, if we refresh the page, we get an error. And the error is access to the fetch from the origin has been blocked by course policy. No access controls all around. So you need to get your API key. Otherwise, you cannot get the emojis. Okay. So I returned the last digit here. And I, you can see, we again, we got the all the APIs, all the icons. But I want to show you that after 1,000, 500 most of the emojis is just the country code or flags or other things we don't need to use them so until thousand i feel until thousand five hundred they are okay so there are some emojis that you can see okay so i'm gonna limit these uh, emojis until thousand five hundred and put them inside this a constant that we have created all right so let's delete this uh, console log and we create a for loop here the for loop is going to use uh, a starts from zero then it's going to be until 1500 okay and this is going to increase uh, one by one. So I start from zero to 1,500, and it's going to be increased one by one. For example, zero, one, two, three, to the end. Okay, so we create a for loop. Now we want to push the uh, response inside this data. So we just say emoji, so this emoji dot push and we want to add an object here because we want to get the emoji emoji and also the emoji definition. So let me console log this one again so you see what I'm talking about. So if you look at here, Let me zoom this a little bit. Okay. Each of them has a character, which is this emoji, and also unique Unicode name. So if I open this, so each of the each of them has a character. We want to get this character and replace it with this button. And also we want this Unicode name, which is the name of the or definition of this emoji. Okay, we want to save both of them. 
So here inside this object, we want to get the name, which is equal to this data we are getting. And uh, we want to target each of them. So we just say in the uh, bracket, we just add I. And after that, the first thing we want to get is the character. Character, which we can see from here. So we want to get the character and also Unicode name. So let me copy this Unicode name as well. So after the name, we want to get the uh, so this is the name so or we can just say character or emoji name we can just call it emoji name or and then this one is emoji code okay and this one is coming from data and this one is unicode name okay so now we have stored both of them and instead of now console logging the data, let's console log uh, here the, let's console log the emoji that we have created. So now if you open the console, we still get an array. Let me see, let's refresh the page. So we console, oh, we still, okay. So we have limited to 2,500. But we still, uh, uh, this is the, Sorry, this is for the final version. Let's uh, check our own website. Okay. Now, if you open this one, let's refresh the page. So now we have the array. Let's uh, decrease the size. This array is now 1,500 with the, just the emoji name and emoji code that we are getting here. Emoji name and emoji code. Okay. Now we can replace this button with this emoji name. And also we can uh, replace this uh, paragraph with the emoji code. Okay. So let's do this here. So let's cre clear this console log. And inside this function that we are clicking on this button, we're going to target that uh, BTN and the emoji name. But first thing, we need to create a random number because each time we want to click, we want to see a random, like in the final version, we want to see a random emoji and its definition. So first we need to create a random number For creating a random number, we can use the math dot random. This is going to create a random number between zero and uh, one. For example, if I console log the random number, we can, if we go to our website and open the console, if each time we click, we get a random number between 0 and 1, okay? But we want the, the number to be completely just 0 or 1, some number. So we need to make this one uh, rounded. By, we just use floor. floor. Floor is going to bring it to the down, okay? So now, 
each time we click we get zero because between zero and one whatever number is it's going to be rounded to its minimum which is zero but we want to create a random number between zero and thousand five hundred or the uh, length of this emoji so we need to multiply this one to the emoji dot length length so the length of this emoji this uh, constant is 1500 so this is going to create a random number between 0 and 1500 so each time we click we get a number between 0 and 1500 randomly as you can see from the console log all right so now we can use this number to fill this a button and the paragraph using this uh, emoji name and emoji code okay so we for the btn for the button we add an inner text so we want to fill the the text inside the button using that emoji that we have and we use a random number to choose one of them and we just get the emoji name here all right so now if you click we see that the button inside the button is replaced by a random emoji okay and also we want to change the that uh, emoji name as well so we target the emoji name element and we changed its inner text by the emoji random number dot emoji code this time. So now, if you click, we see a random emoji and its definition. For example, this is a leaf. This one is dango seat. And also we can see the transition and changing the color as well. So let me zoom a little bit. You can see the difference. Okay, that was it for our project. I hope you enjoyed and learned many things. You can add more functionality yourself and share it with uh, us in the comment section. So, I hope you enjoyed and learned many things. Uh, see you in the next project. Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create a temperature converter. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have three inputs here that is for the Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin temperature formats. And if we change any of them, for example, if we choose the Celsius 100 degree, we get the equivalent of the Celsius inside the Fahrenheit and Kelvin. And for example, if we change the input, we see a real-time change inside the other inputs as well. And we can change the other inputs to, for example, 100 Fahrenheit is equal to 37 Celsius and 311 Kelvin. So we're going to learn how to use unchange event listener to track the changes inside the inputs and also we're going to learn how to use the switch statement to track the changes based on the name of the inputs that we are working on and also we're going to use css to install our project like this neomorphism design in the next section, we're going to start with the HTML part of the project. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have completed the HTML part of the project. 
In this section, we're going to start styling the project using CSS. If you look at the final version, you can see that we have a container here in the middle and the background color of the body is just a linear gradient from light green to light, bro, uh, light blue and the container is transparent as well so it's kind of glassy or new morphism design these inputs as well uh, so we're going to firstly create the CSS file so we need to open the explorer section here using ctrl shift e and here we click on this icon to create a new file and we call it a style.css before using the CSS file we need to add a link to the CSS file within the HTML file so we go to index.html and just after the title tag we just add a link tag and we we just write down link and we click on the third auto suggestion the one with the CSS now we have a link tag with the relationship between the index.html and the style.css the href attribute here shows the destination of the link and as both files are located at the same directory we just need to have a style.css here let's close the explorer section to have more space here and we go to the starlet css and we start with the body section we just target the body and we open a set of curly braces the first things i want to do is remove the default margin of the page so that we can easily bring everything to the center so everything is connected to the wall now uh, let's change the background color and we set it to be linear gradient and I want it to be just uh, like here top and bottom uh, so we want it to 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 left bottom so this is going to divide the browser inside the diameter here from here and uh, the color I want it to be light green and light blue it starts from light green to light blue so we can see it uh, now because this height of the screen is not defined we see it like this we can set the main height of the screen to be 100% of the viewport height which is going to uh, cover all the browser and it doesn't matter what is the size of the browser we always see see it like this and in order to bring this one to the center we need to change the display of the body to flex and then we can use justify content center to bring everything to the center horizontally and align item center to bring everything to the center vertically but before using the align item center you need to set the mean height to 100% of the viewport height otherwise it doesn't work and also i want the font family the font of the browser to be font of the all the texts and elements to be for example mono space and uh, let's increase the font size or let's uh, don't change it we can change this font size in each element just change the color of the the texts from the black to dark cyan which is kind of green color greenish color so that was it for the body section now we want to uh, target the container this container 
and inside the index.js we put everything inside this container with the class of it is with this div with the class of container so we can target that one using dot container first things first i want to add the yeah, background color for that one so we can see it so we change the background we use rgba which is the red green blue alpha for the red green and blue we use 255 to to give uh, which gives us the white color and then we can use the last value which is alpha we set it to be 0.3 which means 30% transparency so we it gives us this color then we're going to have a padding of 20 pixels to have some space between the borders and the some uh, everything else inside it and also let's uh, have it some box shadow so we want the zero for the x-axis four pixels for the uh, y-axis and 10 pixels for the blurness and the color i want to use is rgba 000, 000 for black color and 0.3 for the transparency so we get this color and the other one of things i want to do i want to change the border here the border it's uh it's uh, i want it to be as uh, rounded so i want to change the border radius and i want it to be 10 pixels so we should see the change now let's make the make it a smaller again and set we set the width of the the container to be 85% like this and this is going to be applied in all sizes but i want the max width to be 450 pixels which is going to limit it like this and let's set the mean width as well so when in the mobile size and very small screen size we won't have any problem by just changing it to 350 sorry this one should be mean width not height okay so this is responsive as well in the small screen we have a good size so uh, and everything we can set the display to flags and we can bring them on top of each other by changing the flex direction to color so in this case we can bring them to the center uh, using align items center like this so that was it for the container section let's uh, style the this box we have here we have a div with a class of temp container so we want to target that one so we just say dot temp container which is covering the label and the input and we set this one we set its width to be 100 percent so this is going to take all these places let's add some padding of 15 pixels and we set the font weight to be bold like this so i forgot to install this the uh, heading as well so this uh, temperature converter let's target that one by just targeting dot heading which is the this h1 tag with the class of heading so 
the heading I just want it to be we just change the font size and make it bigger so uh, 32 pixels for this so we make it bigger and uh, I think it's uh, enough for this heading Now let's install this uh, input. So the inputs, all the inputs, they have the class of inputs. So we can target them with just saying dot input. So the first things I wanna do is increase the width. So we set the width to be uh, 220 pixels like this then we just uh, change because uh, the font family we change it to be monospace we add some padding and we set it to be five pixels and we float it to the right side as you can see it's just connected to the label we can float it to the right side so it's going to be like that and uh, let's remove the outline so when we click on it we don't see that a uh, line around it and finally, we change the background color to be RGBA white with 30% transparency. And let's check the border color <coughs> to be an RGBA white, but this time with the 50% transparency. So we get this design. And let's change the color to be dark green. So the text inside, so for example, we type something, we get dark green. And we set the font size to be, uh, for example, 20 pixels. So this is a bit uh, big. So let's make this one 18. This one should be fine. The just this these texts are small, so we can target that one by just changing the font size inside the temp container, and we make it, for example, uh, 18 pixels here. So if we change this font size, we don't need to have this font size. So we can remove that actually. Oh, you no, for the input, we need to add it as well. So that's fine. So for both of them, we use font size 18 pixels. All right. So everything looks okay, except this uh, placeholder. We can just uh, target the placeholder by just saying dot input to double uh, clone and we just say place holder and we just want to change the color to dark gray like this so everything works fine let's refresh the page this is the final version. The final version, the text is a bit bigger, but uh, looks fine too. This one looks fine too. So that was it for the CSS part of the project. In the next section, we're going to add functionality, including the getting these inputs and calculating the other uh, temperatures. 
and automatically call a function and change the other ones. So we're going to use a method, a, an event listener, and uh, we just want to add an event listener for the on change. And we're going to call a function and do this mathematics to calculate the other temperature simultaneously when we're changing when we are changing these things. So in the next section, we're going to work on the JavaScript part of the project. So see you in the next section. Welcome back to the project. In this section, we're going to work on the HTML part of the project. As you can see, I have put the final version of the project as our reference to compare our project with the final version when we need it. Now, the first things we need to do is to create the HTML file of the project. So I would like to use Visual Studio Code for uh, creating the code. After opening the Visual Studio Code, we close the Get Started tab. And inside the file menu, we click on the open folder. We want to create a folder and work on this folder for the project. I would like to create the project in my desktop. So I click on the desktop and here I create a new folder and I call it temperature converter with the, which is the name of our project. So we just write down temperature dash converter. And we press enter to create the folder. Now we can click on the select folder to select the folder. Here we close the get the starter tab again. And as you can see, the now the VS code is in default is in that folder that we have created temperature uh, converter. And now we can create our HTML file here. So we click on this icon to create the HTML file and we call it index.html now we have the file on the right side which is completely empty but it is fine we can use an exclamation mark to create an html boilerplate so we just write on an, H an exclamation mark we get an auto suggestion from emit abbreviation when we click on the first auto suggestion we get an HTML boilerplate, which gives us the metadata title and etc. Let me explain this uh, real quick. Maybe you might be familiar with this, but uh, I'm just explaining and assuming that this is your first project. So the first line is doc type, which tells the browser which version of HTML we are using. And for HTML5, we just use HTML here. Then we have the HTML tag, which is covering all the website, including the head and the body tag. Inside the HTML opening tag, we have a lang attribute, which defines the language of the page. And in default, by default, we have English, as the language, but you can change it with any language you are creating your website. Then after that, we have the head tag, which covers the metadata tag and also the title tag. The first metadata tag defines the char set attribute and UTF-8 is recommended because it nearly contains all the characters and symbols. So the users that are watching and using our website won't have any problem seeing the characters or symbols inside the website. 
So the UTF-8 is recommended by HTML5 for uh, new websites. The next metadata tag is for people who are using Internet Explorer. For them, suggest to use the most recent rendering engine, which is Edge. So their Internet Explorer is going to use Edge uh, engine instead of the Internet Explorer. Then we have the viewport metadata tag, which sets the width of the screen, uh, width of the browser to the device's screen that we are using. For example, if we have a mobile screen, the width of the browser would be less when we are using different devices like tablets or computers. The next section inside this metadata tag is the initial scale or initial zoom level of the browser and by default it's set to be 100%. If you want it for example 80% you just change it to 0.8 for example. Then we have the title tag which sets the title of the page and by default it's document. Let's see it inside the browser. We can open the browser using the live server extension. If you have installed this extension, you can click on the go live on the bottom of the uh, Visual Studio code to open the uh, default browser with the website that we are working on and the index.html is going to be open by default and the title is document as we have inside the title tag. Let's uh, bring the website on the right side and the Visual Studio code on the left side. Let's close the Explorer section to have more space. So the title is document. We can change the title to the name of our project, which is the temperature converter. And uh, the next things we need to do is just create the website. Let's, uh, let me show you inside the final version. The final version, as you can see, it has a container in the middle of the screen. Then we have a title here. Then we have three inputs, including the Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin. Each of them, they have their own input. So we're going to add three inputs plus a title at the top. And everything would be inside a container. So we need to add a div with a class of container inside the body section. So we just write down dot container and we accept the auto suggestion from Emmet by clicking on tab or enter. So this is going to give us a div with a class of container and inside this container we're going to add the, for example, that title. For example, we add a h1 tag with a class of heading and the title is temperature converter so I can copy from this here. The reason I have added the class of heading because we're going to style this heading later using uh, CSS. Any class I add, the purpose of that is to use it later when we are targeting it inside the CSS. After that, we're going to have the, these three uh, sections. Each of them are inside a div. So this is a div, for example, and inside the div, we have this label, Celsius, and this input. So we're going to have a div. So the div, uh, I just called the class for that one, for example, box, or you can just say, for example, temperature container. You have to be very specified so you later you check your code you can remember 
what you have done. So inside this div, we're going to add a label. And this label is going to be for the Celsius. So we just write down Celsius here. And the label is going to say Celsius as well. And we can add some clone here. So if you can see now we have the we have it inside the final version the label after the label we're going to have an input but with the type of number so we can add a colon and just say number and we click and press enter to accept the auto suggestion the type is number the name is celsius celsius and also we're going to have an idea of celsius because later we're going to use this id to track the uh, changes inside input using javascript so we need to add an id here id is just unique you cannot use the celsius in other section of the html anymore then we have a placeholder so when there is nothing inside this input, we see this text for reference. So we just say enter temperature. You can see here. The other things we want to do is we want to install this input later so we're going to add a class and we call it input so for styling we use class for javascript we use id this is the uh, the way i use but you can also uh, use class for javascript as well but because ID is unique, it's easier to track a specific input using ID. But class can be used in many other places. So that is, that is fine for this section. For this Celsius, we can copy this section two more times to create the other temperature as well. So we just use Alt Shift arrow done two times to copy this and we're going to just change the celsius by using ctrl d we can choose all the celsius and we change the second one to fahrenheit so we just write down fahrenheit okay this one should be capitalized so i change this one So the next one, we change the Celsius to using Ctrl D to Kelvin. We just say Kelvin. And this one should be capitalized as well. All right. So that is, uh, that's set for the HTML part of the project. As you can see, the looking is different inside the final version. So in the next section, we're going to use CSS to install this project and make it similar to the one in the final version. So see you in the next section for the CSS part of the project. All right, welcome back. In the last section, we have completed the CSS part of the project. In this section, we're going to add more functionality to the website using JavaScript. If you look at the final version, you can see when we come to the website, all the inputs are empty. But if you add something, for example, here, in Fahrenheit, I just say 100 Fahrenheit. This, this is going to give us the Celsius and Kelvin 
after pressing the enter or if we change it like this from the input we see the real time change inside the other uh, format of temperature so we need to add uh, a function that is going to calculate the other ones and also we need to add unchanged event listener to each if, uh, if, uh, input so when there is a change inside this input a, a function would be triggered and calculate the other one and update the other inputs so the first things we need to do is to create a javascript file so we go back to visual studio code and we open the explorer section and here on the left side in the explorer section we click on this icon to create a new file and we call it index.js and uh, similar to the CSS before using the JavaScript file we need to add a link to the uh, HTML file in order to use that JavaScript file and the link is going to be at the end of the body section because we want all the elements to be loaded first for example all the inputs to be loaded first and then the functionality is added using this javascript otherwise the elements would be empty and we cannot have access to them so we need to add a script tag here so we just write down sc and we can click on the second auto suggestion the one with the src the src is the destination of the file and both files are located at the same directory I mean the index.html and index.js so the destination would be just index.js so now we can use the javascript file in our project as first thing first I want to create a function here I want to create a function and I'm gonna call it for example compute or calculate temperature or temp for short so this function is going to be called using these inputs and uh, let's try try to do it so in our website we want to want when we have a change inside these inputs we want to call that function so inside index that HTML we can add unchanged event listener to the input so we can just use dual cursor using alt and click on these uh, sections and it, we can add an unchanged event listener the first one and this is going to trigger that function that we have created so we're going to call the function here we just call it compute temp and we need to call it so we need to add a parenthesis here at the end okay so after saving you can see that's a prettier formatted our inputs so now for example if we console log for example we console log change and if you go to the our website and open the console using f12 so make sure this is console and here you can see the changes so if we change this one you see that we console log change the one that we have added inside the function any any of them we change we see the changes but the things is important for us we want to get the value of this input and also we want to know which input is changing we can do that by adding an event here so we need to just add an event here inside the function that we are calling so we need to add an event at each of them and inside the javascript inside the function we can get the event here for example if i console log event dot 
for example, target dot name. So this one should be dot name. Now, when we change here, you see the name of this input. So inside the index.html, we see the name is here. For example, it's Kelvin. The first one, the name is uh, Celsius. And the second one is Fahrenheit. So whatever we have changed, we see the name is printed inside here. For example, we can get the value too. Instead of name, we can just get the for example, we can get the value. So now, for example, this one is one, two, three, five. If I do this one, this one is one. So we're getting the value of this one that is changing. So in this way, we can have the information inside the inputs and we know which input is triggered and we can calculate the other uh, temperature formats based on that uh, input. And also we can change and uh, update the other inputs. So we need to bring the uh, all the inputs first because we want to change them. So if you look at the HTML, each of them they have an ID. For example, the second one has the ID of Fahrenheit. The first one is the ID is Celsius. So we can bring that element using the method called get element by ID. So we need to create a constant. For example, for Celsius, I call it cell, Celsius element. And this is going to be equal to document because we want to target all the browser and all the documents inside the browser and we can use the get element by ID to target that ID, which was for the first one, Celsius. All right. Now we have for the first one, let's copy this one using Alt Shift arrow done. And we change the Celsius for the second one using Ctrl D to select both of them. And we change the second one to Fahrenheit. So we just write Fahrenheit. Uh, make sure that you don't make a, a spelling mistake because otherwise you don't get the result. So we got the Fahrenheit for the th uh, third one. We use Ctrl D and we change this one to Kelvin. Now we have the elements. Now we can change the elements based on the input. So we have the value here. So we create a constant and we just say a current value or the, the input that is triggered. So we just call it current value, the one that is calling the function value so we missed the a here so this one is equal to that event that we are getting dot target dot value but uh, you, there is a, just uh, some block in the javascript sometimes the input is actually this input is number but sometimes it's pass the it passes the string instead of number so we need to always convert this value to number we can do that simply by adding a plus sign before the value so in this case we always get the number not the value because we want to do some computation some mathematics so we need to really have the number, not the string. Because if we have a string, we cannot do the, uh, the uh, mathematics or math operation on this value. So now we can use the switch here to, based on the name of the event, we change the other ones. 
So the switch works like this. The switch statement, if you click on that, it has a key. The key is the this event dot target dot name. So for example, if the name that we are getting is Celsius, so in case that the this one is Celsius, so we just write down here inside the quote Celsius. If this is Celsius, we want to change the Fahrenheit and Kelvin. So for example, the Kelvin, this one, we want to change its value. So we just target its value. And this one is going to be equal to the current value, which is the value of the Celsius plus 273.32. So this is a formulation to, com to convert Celsius to Kelvin. If we add 273.32 to, Kel uh, to Celsius, we get Kelvin. And also for Fahrenheit, we change the value. So this is going to be the current value, but this is uh, for changing it to Fahrenheit, we need to multiply this one to 1 1.8 and add 32 to it. So this is the way we uh, do that one for the Celsius. So we need to add more cases because uh, in case, that we have Fahrenheit for the input and the event.target.name is Fahrenheit. So we need to have the Fahrenheit. So let me copy this Fahrenheit and put it here. In case that is Fahrenheit, we want to change the Celsius element, its value, and we can calculate that one based on the Fahrenheit value which we are getting from the current value from here. So the current value, uh, Celsius is the opposite. We have to, we just put it in the parentheses. We minus this one first from the 32. And instead of multiplying, applying to 1.8, we need to divide it from 1.8. So it's just the opposite. And uh, we have to add a clone here too, so we don't get an error. And for Kelvin, this is going to be calculate like this. We need to just the current value we minus that one to 32 we divide it so let's let's put it inside another parenthesis so we divide it to 32 and over 1.8 now we need to add 273.15 to that it should be 32 because this is similar to this one, 273.32. So that is fine. So after the break, we want to add the final case, which is Kelvin. So if the Kelvin happens, We want to change the Celsius dot value, and this is going to be equal to just the current value, but instead of plus 273.32, 
we need to uh, minus that. So we need to decrease 272. It's just the opposite. And uh, let's do the other one. Okay, Fahrenheit. So this is the last one. So we need to add two parentheses and then this is going to be value minus 273.32. I'm not sure this is 32 or 15. Uh, you can check it online. But uh, it doesn't matter. We just it's uh, we can change it for yourself. So the most important things is these things that we are learning from JavaScript. The other ones is just uh, an example. So we need to multiply this one to 1.8, and we add 32 at the end. All right. So we have just created the, all the models. And after this, uh, just remember to break as well. Okay. So it's automatically removed our parentheses. So the reason I put the parentheses because uh, let's let me show you here. So we are when we are changing now each of them, we see the changes the other one. Sometimes we get the very long uh, decimal numbers. The, the, the number of decimals are too much. So we can remove that one by just adding dot fix, uh, dot two fixed at the end. And we just uh, fix it to two digits. So we can copy this one and add it to here to all of them. So now, if we try, we never get more than two digits here. So what's this? The Kelvin, the Fahrenheit doesn't work when I change the Kelvin. So let's check that one. So when we changing the Kelvin, so this value, oh, this one shouldn't be value. This one should be current value. Sorry about that. So now the Kelvin works as well. So 273.15 is actually a zero Celsius. Sorry, it shouldn't be 15, 32. We have used 32. So just uh, let me review what we have done. So inside the index.html, we have added an unchanged event listener to each of the inputs. We have added the events so we can get the value, the name, type, or whatever inside this input is. And inside the index.js, we have created the function. We got the event. We got the value of the input that is triggering the function and we call it current value. And we have used the switch statement. So based on the name of the event that we are getting, for example, if the input is Celsius, in case it's Celsius, we, we change the Kelvin and Fahrenheit. If it's Fahrenheit, we change the Celsius and Kelvin. And if it's Kelvin, we change the Celsius and Fahrenheit. And also we have just used this formulation to change their values. And finally, we have added two fixed to limit the number of decimals to only two digits. So that was it for our project. I hope you enjoyed and learned many things. We have practiced the switch statement. We have also learned how to use unchanged event listener to call a function from the HTML. And also we have learned how to bring the elements using get element by ID. So I hope you enjoyed. So see you in the next project.
Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to calculate the body mass index or BMI based on the height and the weight of the user. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have two inputs here that is going to get the height of the user based on centimeter and also the weight of the user based on kilogram. And the default value is 180 and for the height and 80 for the weight. And if we click on the compute BMI, this is going to calculate the BMI based on the height and weight and shows the weight condition here. For example, for the 180 and 80, the weight condition is normal weight. But if we are, for example, 90 kilograms, we are overweight. If we are, for example, 100, we are obesity. And if we, for example, we are 50 kilograms, we are underweight. So this is going to calculate the BMI and based on the BMI condition, we are going to add some if statement and calculate the weight condition here. So we're going to firstly install the project with this uh, new morphism design. Then we are going to use JavaScript to calculate the BMI. And finally, we are going to show all the results inside this input and inside the, this section, the text information at the end of the container. In the next section, we're going to start with the HTML part of the project. So see you in the next section. All right, welcome back to the project. In this section, we're going to create the HTML part of the project. I have opened the final version of the project for our reference to compare our website with the final version and also we we can be familiar with the structure of the project so if you look at the final version we have a title here at the top then we have two inputs which are the number input then we have a button then we have another input showing the result of the BMI. Then we, are, we have also have another information text at the end of the place. All these things are inside a container. So we have to create a div with a class of container and work on this inside this container. And so uh, let's first create an HTML file. So I'm going to use Visual Studio Code as a text editor, but you can use any other text editor you are familiar with. After closing the Get Started tab, in the File menu, we can click on the Open Folder to create a folder and open it inside the Visual Studio Code. I would like to create the project in my desktop, so I click here on Desktop. And here I click a new on the new folder button to create a new folder and we call the folder the name of the, our project which is BMI calculator. After creating the folder we can click on the select folder to select the folder. This is going to open the folder inside the Visual Studio Code. As you can see here, we are inside the Explorer with the folder BMI-Calculator. So let's close the Get Started tab again. And inside the Explorer section and inside the folder that we have cre created, we create a new file by clicking on this icon. We call the file index. And with 
uh, with the extension HTML. So this is our HTML file, uh, which is completely empty, but we can use an exclamation mark to create a new HTML boilerplate. So we click on the, we just write down an exclamation mark and we click on the first auto suggestion suggested by Emmet abbreviation. So now we have the HTML boilerplate, which includes the doc type at the top, which tells the browser which version of HTML we are using. And for HTML5, we just need to have HTML here. Then we have an HTML tag, which covers the head and the body tag. The length attribute inside the opening tag of the HTML sets the language of the page. And in our case, we set the language to be English by just writing EN inside the code. Then we have the head tag, which includes the metadata tags and also the title tag. The first metadata tag sets the chart set, attributes, and uh, we use UTF-8, which is recommended by HTML5 because it nearly contains all the characters and symbols, and the person who is using our website won't have any problem seeing the symbols and the characters of the text. The next metadata tag is the compatibility metadata tag, which tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine, which is Edge. So this is for the users who are using is still the Internet Explorer. Then we have the viewport metadata tag, which sets the width of the screen to the device's width, which means if the screen size is a smaller, like the mobile size, the width of the browser, the width of the page would be smaller when we are using a bigger screen like laptop or the desktop screens. The next section inside the viewport metadata tag, it's the initial scale or initial zoom level of the browser and we set it to be one, which is equal to 100%. After that, we have the title tag, which uh, sets the title of the page inside the browser, uh, which is now document. Let's see, see it inside the browser. By opening the browser, we can use the live server extension by clicking on go live. And this is going to open the our website inside the our default uh, browser which in my case is Google Chrome you can see that the title is document let's bring this one to the right side so we can see the changes in real time and we bring the visual studio code to the left side we can close the explore section so we have more space in our code Let's change the title to the name of the, our project, which is BMI Calculator. Now we can see the title has been changed to BMI Calculator. So as I mentioned before, if you look at the final version, we have a container that has everything inside it. So inside the body section, we can create a div with a class of containers. So we just need to write down a period and container. And after pressing the enter, we're going to accept the, this auto suggestion that is going to give us uh, a div with a class of container. And inside this container, we're going to start with the heading, this heading, which is a and a h1 tag, the h1 tag with a class of heading. I have added the class because we want to later use CSS to install this uh, HTML file on our website. So we need to target the, each element by its class. 
So the class here is heading. And inside the h1 tag, we just write down body mass index or BMI for short. And we just add calculator at the end. So if you look at our website, we can see the title at the top. Let's fix this one. So that is correct. Body mass index calculator as a title. After the title, we have two inputs. First for the height and then we have for the weight. And here we just have a text. We just say your height and we just say centimeter and we add the input here this input has a class of input because we want to use this class to style it later and it has an id of height So the input has a, a type of text, but we want the input to be in the class, uh, in the type of number, because we just want to accept the number here and we can change the number here. So it has a class of input and the ID of height. We're going to style it using this class and we're going to target that using JavaScript and get the uh, number from this input using javascript using this id and also i want the value the default value of this input to be for example 180 centimeter so when we refresh the page and come to this website you always see 180 and you can change it after that and also i want a placeholder a text inside the input when it's empty we just say enter your height in centimeter so if this one is empty you see the this uh, placeholder all right so we have created the first input the second input is similar to the first one, so we can just copy this one using Alt Shift arrow done one time. And we just change this height to weight. Centimeter should be kilogram. And the input, the class is input, but the ID is weight. The value. Uh, let's just say 80 kilograms and the placeholder is enter your weight in kilogram all right so we have completed the two the first two inputs the next thing the next things we need to add is this button so we're going to add a button here the button is going to have a class so the uh, it has a class of btn it, which is a short for button i usually use btn and we add an id to target it later using javascript and we call the id btn as well and uh, inside the button we just write down compute or calculate BMI. So you see the button here. And after that, we're going to have another input showing the results. So we just say we add an input with a class of input, but with the idea of BMI or BMI re, uh, result, we can say BMI result. This uh, input doesn't have any placeholder or something, but we want this input to be disabled because we don't want to change the value of this. We just want to show the result here. 
So we made this one disabled. After the button, we have this info text here. So we're going to have an H4 or heading 4 with a class of info dash text and this one is going to say wait condition equal to and we want to add the condition inside the span so we want to separate that and then this is spam because it is dynamic later we're going to change it using javascript it is going to have a id of the wait condition all right like the final version for example if we click on compute bmi we see the wait condition which can be a normal weight of if someone uh, is over 8 for example is 120 kilogram it shows obesity so it depends on the weight you see a different thing so we're going to create this one using javascript later but for now we just keep it empty so that was it for the html part of the project it's a kind of messy but later in the next section we're going to style this using css and we're going to make it like this beautiful uh, as you can see in the final version so just wait for it it looks a little bit messy in the next section we're going to work on the css part of the project so see you in the next section all right in the last section we have completed the html part of the project in this section, we're going to install the project using CSS. The first things we need to do is to create a CSS file inside the Visual Studio Code. We need to go to the Explorer section again using Ctrl Shift E. And here on the top, we click on this icon to create a new file with the name style with the extension CSS. And now we can just uh, code inside this file. But before using the CSS file, we need to add a link to this file within the HTML code. So we go back to index.html. Let me close this section so we have more space. And just after the title tag, we add a link tag. We just write down link and we just click on the third auto suggestion the one with the css now we have a link tag with the relationship between the html file and the css file and uh, the href here defines the destination of the file which is because we are they are on the same directory we just need to write down installed css inside the href attribute now we can use the style.css in our project and first we start with the body section we just write body and first we remove the margin the default margin of the page and we set it to be zero to remove the margin okay after this i'm going to change the background color I want to have a, a gradient in uh, color like the one you see inside the here inside the final version it starts from blue to green so in order to create that this one should be only background not background color and we just write down linear gradient and we want it to be on the top right to be green and the, on the bottom left to be uh, blue. 
So we just say to left bottom. And with the color we want to use, the first color is light green. It starts from light green to light blue. Now, if you look at our final version, we see that uh, the color, but the reason it's repetitive because we haven't set any height for our uh, screen because uh, it doesn't have height. So it's repeating itself. So we're going to fix it soon. So first we're going to bring everything to the center using display flex. We set the display to flex. And we set the height of the screen to be, or the minimum height, to be 100% of the viewport height. So which is the 100% of the screen. Now you see the color is just one color. So now the size of the screen is 100% of the size of the browser. If you change the zoom level, you see, you see the same size, 100%. Now we can bring everything to the center using justify content center to bring them to the center horizontally like this. And for bring them to the center vertically, we can use just uh, align item center to bring them to the center vertically and also we want i want to change the font of the text to be career new the font family career new which is this uh, text uh, this is my favorite font but you can use any other font you want or you can import the fonts from other sources like a Google font, which I have taught in my other projects. All right, so that was it for the body section. Now we want to style the, this container that is covering everything. The container, if you remember, we had a div with a class of container. Because this one is class, we can target that one inside the CSS by adding a dot here and we just write down container. So the background color for the container is uh, RGBA, which is the red, green, blue, alpha color. For the red, green, green and blue, we just choose 255, 255 and 255, to, which gives us a white color. And we want this white color to be 30% transparent. So we can see the behind the, the color as well. So this one makes a glassy design or neomorphism design for our uh, container. After that, I want to add some padding. So it's a space around the elements, but inside the container. So this is going to be 20 pixels. So this is going to push the, everything inside. And let's bring everything on top of each other by changing the display to flex, which bring everything to the next to each other. And then we can change the flex direction from row to column to bring everything on the top of each other like this. Now everything looks better than before, but we still have to work on this section. For example, I want to make the border Round it by using border radius, and we set the border radius to be five pixels. We can see it now here. I, I have to zoom so you can see the rounded corner here. Okay, after the border radius, let's add some shadow effect on the bottom. We just uh, use box shadow and we set the shadow effects in the X axis to, to zero. 10 pixels for the Y axis, which gives us this black color on the bottom. But we can use 10 pixels blurness to make it blurry. 
and this is going to be blurred in the on the right and left side as well and also i don't want it to be this much black so we can make it less tra uh, transparent by using rgba red green blue and alpha color we set the zero for the red green and blue which gives us the black color and we can use 30 percent transparency so which give us this beautiful shadow effect for our container but in the mobile size you see that they, they are connected to the wall the container so we can here change the margin to five pixels which is going to push everything to the inside more and also i want to uh, i think everything is looks okay now for the container let's uh, style this heading if you remember here we have the h1 with the class of heading we can target that one by just adding dot heading in the css file and we change the font size to be 30 pixels for example and make it a little bit smaller and uh, for the inputs we have three inputs but all of them they have a class of inputs this one this one and this one we can target them using dot input and uh, let's add some padding we add the padding for the top and bottom 10 pixels and 20 pixels for left and right let's uh, make the size bigger using font size and we set it to be 18 pixels like this and let's change the background the background color i want to choose the rgba that 255 for the white and 30 percent transparency but uh, 30 percent is a bit low we can change this one to 40 percent As you can see the border color is black i want the border color to be rgba as well but instead of 40 percent i want it to be 50 percent transparent so it gives us this beautiful looking border and let's set the margin and the space around the input to 10 pixels it's going to have some a space around the inputs so the inputs looks fine let's install this button now the button has the class of btn as you can see here so we can target that button by just saying dot btn i want the background color to be light green like this I want to remove the border so we just say border none but instead of uh, this border I want to give it uh, some box shadow so we we make it more beautiful but uh, let's add some padding first so we just add a padding of 10 pixels on the top of and bottom and 20 pixels for left and right and we add some border radius and we make it rounded on the corners for five pixels let's add some margin uh, similar to the one we added for the input 10 pixels and we set the font size to be 20 pixels to make it bigger now it's time to add the box shadow so we just add the box shadow we set it to be zero for the x-axis and zero for the y-axis just four pixels blurness that gives a shadow in around it and we can use rgba 
the black color with 30% transparency to make it less visible. And when we when I hover over the button, I want to see a pointing hand instead of the cur for the cur cursor. So I set the cursor to be pointer. So when I hover over the button, I see a pointing hand. The other things I want to do when I hover over the button, I want to see more shadow. So we we target the button, but we use the hover pseudo class. We 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 can target the hover effect, and we change the box shadow. 0, 0 for the X and Y axis and 8 pixels blurness which is more than the previous one and we set the RGBA to black color 30% transparency like this but this is very fast the change is very fast we can add some transition to make it smooth and we added uh, transition to everything with 30 milliseconds duration and with ease effect. So this is going to be like this. The last things I want to install is this weight condition text at the bottom. This one has a class of info text. Now we just change the font size to be 20 pixels. We make it bigger and we set the font weight to be 500 to make it thinner like this. So that was it for the CSS part of the project. We made the website exactly like the final version. In the next section, we're going to add a functionality that we can calculate the BMI by clicking on the button. And also we want to calculate the weight condition based on the BMI. So we're going to use JavaScript to firstly get the information from the inputs and we're going to calculate the BMI and show it inside this input. And based on the BMI, we're going to show the weight condition. So see you in the next section for the JavaScript part of the project. All right, in the last section, we have completed the CSS part of the project. In this section, we're going to start adding functionality to the project using JavaScript. If you look at the final version, you can see by just changing this input, for example, I just choose 160 centimeters with 50 kilograms and we compute, we click on the compute BMI. We get the BMI of the person, which is calculated based on a formulation. So I'm going to, going to show you the formulation. Then based on this BMI, we're going to calculate the weight condition that can be normal, obesity, underweight, uh, or overweight. So we're going to create these uh, conditions the, using if statement in JavaScript based on the BMI. The first things we need to do is to create the JavaScript file. So here inside the VS Code, we're, we're going to open the Explorer using Ctrl Shift E and here on the left side in the Explorer section, we click on this icon to create a new file. And we call the file index with the extension JS, which stands for JavaScript. So we have the JavaScript file here, but before using the JavaScript, we need to add a link to the HTML file for this JavaScript file as well, like the one we did for the CSS file. So we go to index.html and just at the end of the body section, because we need to all the elements to be loaded before 
uh, calling the JavaScript file. Otherwise, the JavaScript doesn't work because we need to, to manipulate some elements here. And here at the end of the body section, we add a script tag. We just write down SC and we click on the second auto suggestion, the one with the SRC. And the SRC is the destination of the JavaScript file. And as both files, I mean the index.html and index.js, are located at the same directory the source or src is just index.js now we can use the javascript file inside the project we can open the uh, we can close the explorer section by dragging it to the left side to have more space and let me show you what we need to do so we need to add uh, an event listener to this button so when we click on the button we are going to call a function so in the final version that we have now when we click on the button nothing happens but we can bring this button element first the button here has the, an idea of btn so we can bring and target this element inside the javascript using get element by id method so we could just create a constant and we call it btn element and this is going to be equal to document because we want to target all the document inside the browser then we just use get element by id method and we just need to call the id and the id of the button is btn so now we have access to the element. We got the element here. Now we can add the event listener to it. So we just call say btn element dot add event listener. And the event we want to add for this one is click. And then we want to call a function. We're going to calculate the BMI inside the function. So I'm going to call the function calculate BMI and we need to create the function here so I just create a function I call it calculate BMI and we're going to show it like this let's console log this one and we just console log for example clicked and inside the final version, if you open the console using F12, let's, uh, let me just go to the console. So you need to click here and just go to the console. And the console is empty, but when we click on this button, we are going to uh, print clicked because we are calling that function and the function has a console log saying click. Each time we, we click on the button, we see the, the number of click is going up. So the, the function is working and the add event listener is working as well. So instead of just uh, console logging click, we are going to calculate the BMI based on the inputs that we have here so we have two inputs at the top one for the height the id is height and one is uh, weight here so we're going to firstly bring these two inputs inside the javascript using the get element by id method and we get their value so instead of console logging, we're going to create another constant and we call it, uh, for the first one, I, we, we just call it height value. And this is going to be equal to document because we want to target the document and we use get element by ID to target that the ID of that input, which was height. And we want to get the value, so we need to target the value at the end by just adding dot value. 
we need to do the same things for the weight as well so i copy this one using alt shift arrow done and here we just change this height both of them by just using ctrl d i'm gonna delete it and add weight value so now we have both of the values let me console log and see so if i console log height value and also the weight value now when we uh, when we click on the button we see the value of the first and the second input for example if i change this one to 50 and this one to 20 and we click on compute we get 50 and 20 so we have access to the both of the inputs inside the javascript here now we can calculate the bmi based on the height and the weight the formulation is height over the weight is square but the height should be uh, based on meter but the weight is based on kilogram because we are getting the height based on centimeter so we can convert this one to meter by dividing it to 100 so now we are getting the height based on meter so we can now calculate the bmi so we just say bmi value is equal to that formulation so the formulation is the weight value so weight over the height is square so i think i made a mistake saying that first time so it's weight over height value multiply to height value again so height value is square at the bottom but weight value at the top but height is the based on meter and weight is based on kilogram so now we have the value of the bmi so we can for example console log bmi value so based on these values 180 and 80 we compute so the bmi is 24 so if i change this one to 100 for example 92 the bmi is 21 so we have the bmi now we want to print this bmi inside this input so we need to first bring this input inside the javascript by using the get element by id method we can bring it at the top because the first uh, we just need to bring it one time we don't need to bring it each time we call the uh, function so i'm going to call uh, call create a, uh, a constant and i call it bmi input uh, element and this is going to be equal to document dot get element by id and the id that we are going to target is this one here the this input has the id of bmi result so i'm going to copy this and i paste it here inside this get element by id so now we have the value of the bmi here so we're going to put it inside this bmi input element so here i just write down bmi input element dot inner text oh sorry uh, we need to change the value because this is the input we change its value to this uh, bmi value so i paste it here so now if we click on compute bmi we see the 24 inside this input and if we change it for example to 190 we see it's 22.
So we've done with the first part that is computing the BMI and show it, showing it here inside the input. This, the next step is to calculate the weight condition. So I'm going to put some condition here. And uh, this is just the scientific condition. So if the BMI value is less than 18.5, the weight condition is underweight. So we need to bring that uh, the text info at the end, this one. So we added a, a span here. The span is empty, but it has an idea of weight condition. So we need to bring this one here. So at the top, I'm going to create another constant and I call it a weight condition element and this is going to be equal to document dot get element by id and the id that we have copied was weight condition now we can change the value inside this spam this element by just uh, bring it here and we just changed its inner text and we set it to be for example under weight all right so in this situation that for example this person is 180 the bmi is 24 but if for example he's 50 kilograms so it's kind of underweight and if we calculate bmi the bmi is less than 18 here so it's 15. So now we can see the weight condition is under weight. So let's add the other conditions. For example, we just add the else if. And the second condition is if the BMI, BMI value is more than or equal is more than or equal of 18.5 and if the BMI value is less than or equal to 24.9 in this condition we want to set the weight condition element inner text instead of under weight we want to set it we just call it normal weight so for example for the 180 and 80 kilograms we are normal weight but the because the bmi is less than 24.9 and it's above 18.5 so let's add more conditions. We have two more conditions. So we just say else if, if the BMI value is more than or equal to 25. Sorry, more than that, not less than. So more than 25 and it's less than so the bmi value is less than or equal to 29.9 the condition is overweight overweight and the other condition is obesity so if the bmi value is more than or equal to 30 the condition is obesity 
So this is the two facts. All right. So now the height, for example, is 180. This is normal weight. If we, for example, we are 90 kilogram, we are overweight. If you are 120 kilogram, we still overweight. 150. Oh, this is overweight. That's a lot. Okay, probably the last condition doesn't work. Ah, this one should be more than 30. Sorry about that. So now I think it's around 100. It's obesity. Okay. So uh, that's working. So we finished. Uh, we have done the last part of the project, which was calculating the weight condition based on the BMI and show the condition inside this span. Yeah, that was it for our project. I hope you enjoyed and learned many things. We have learned uh, some methods like uh, how to calculate something, how to call a function, how to add an add event listener. That was a simple uh, project. I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next project. Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create a note app. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have a button here with uh, this glassy design. And when we click on the button, a new note is going to be created. So we can just have a new note and we can write something inside it. For example, I just say nice. And you can add as many notes as you want. You can edit them. For example, I can just change this one to job. And I can write something here. Note. You can also delete them by double clicking on this note. For example, I double click and this is going to ask me, do you want to delete this note? And if I click on the OK, this is going to delete the note. And also when we refresh the page, the notes is going to stay inside the browser because they are stored inside the local storage of the browser. So we're going to learn how to uh, write and save the notes inside the local storage and how to retrieve them using JavaScript. And also we're going to learn how to design this glassy or numerism design using CSS. In the next section, we're going to start with the HTML part of the project. So see you in the next section. All right, let's start our project. I just leave the final version here for our comparison. And let's start creating the project by just creating an HTML file. So I go to my desktop and I open the Visual Studio Code or you can open any text editor you prefer. After closing get the Get Started tab, we click on the File menu and we click on the Open Folder. I would like to create the project in my desktop so I click on Desktop and here inside the desktop I click on the new folder to create a new folder. I name the folder the name of our project, which is Note App. And I press Enter. After creating the folder, we can click here on the Select Folder to start the VS Code again, but inside that particular folder we can see here, note app. Inside the folder in the explorer section, now we can create our HTML file. So we click here on this icon and we name the file index.html. 
HTML. I'm going to press enter. You can see the HTML file on the right side. We can close the get started tab again. Now inside the index.html, we can have an HTML boilerplate by just adding an exclamation mark. So we write down an exclamation mark and we click on the first auto suggestion uh, suggested by Emmet abbreviation. Now we have then HTML file boilerplate which includes the doc type which tells the browser which version of HTML we are working on and for HTML5 we just have here an HTML nothing else. Then we have an HTML tag which covers the head tag and the body tag. The length attribute inside the HTML tag uh, defines the language of the page and in our case by default the language is set to be English. Then inside the head tag we have three metadata tags and a title tag. The first metadata tag defines the chart set attribute and the characteristics. For HTML5, UTF-8 is recommended because it nearly contains all the characters and symbols. Then we have the compatibility meta tag which tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine which is Edge. The next metadata tag is related to the viewport and it sets the width of the screen to devices screen. For example, the width of the screen for the computer would be bigger than the mobile screen. So it's going to automatically assign the width for our browser based on the width of the device we are using. Then we have the initial zoom level of the browser which is set to be 100% and after that we have the title tag which is by default is a document. Let's open the browser to see this title so as if you use the live server extension you can click here on the go live to open the index.html file automatically inside the uh, your default browser which, which in my case is Google Chrome and you can see the title is document. Let's bring the browser on the right side and the uh, VS Code on the left side so we can see the changes on real time and let's close the explorer section by dragging it to the left side if you look at the final version, you can see that we have a title for the uh, website. Then we have a, an exclamation or information uh, text. Then we have the, the notes and also the button for adding the notes. So inside the body section, we are going to add the an h1 tag for this note app and we just uh, write down note app so we can make the a capitalized too and also we can add a class here for assigning it later using css so uh, the class i use for this one is heading then after the h1 we're going to have a paragraph and the paragraph is going to have a text inside it and it's going to be double click on a note to remove it. And also we can add a class for this one and we just call this class info-text. All right. So after that, we're going to have our main application. So 
both of these things are inside a container and uh, this is a text area and also this is a button so we're going to add a container we just added div with a class of for example app and also an id of app so we're going to use this class for styling this div and also this id to add functionality to this section using javascript and inside this div we are going to have that text area firstly so we add a text area uh, we don't need name for that one or ID it just have a, a columns and rows and also we add a class of we just say note because we want to style it later using CSS using this class and also we're going to have a pla placeholder saying M empty notes all right so we have the text area now after the text area we're going to have a button so we're going to add a button with a class of btn and an id of btn Sorry, this is going to be button, not button. Oh, sorry. Button is with U and O here. So, all right. So we have a button here. You can see it is small, but it doesn't have anything inside. I just want to add a plus sign inside it so you can see it better here. And for the text area, as we want to style it using grid for example if you have more and if you have a different size of the screen they, they're going to be different number of uh, g columns in inside so I'm going to add more of this and we style it and then we can remove it so we just uh, copy this one using alt shift arrow done let me see one two three four times i copy this one we're going to style it and then we're going to remove it and later we're going to add it using javascript so this is all working with javascript it's not uh, normal we are not adding it with this html here so we're going to add it dynamically using javascript later but we have done with the HTML part. In the next section, we're going to install this project using CSS. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have completed the HTML part of the project. In this section, we're going to install the project using CSS. Just if we look at the final version uh, real quick. So we have a title here and we're going to have some uh, shadow effect when we hover over these nodes. And when we hover over the button, we see a different design. And also we have a, a new morphism design, which is a kind of glassy design. So we have a different color inside the background and we can have a glassy and transparent uh, background color for the notes as well. The first things we need to do is to create the C uh, CSS file of the project. We can do that one by opening the explorer section. We just can use Ctrl Shift E and here we click on this icon to create a new file and we call it a style.css. 
The first things we need to do is to add a link to the CSS file within the HTML file. So we go back to index.html, we close the explorer section and just after the title tag, we add a link tag and we click on the third auto suggestion, the one with the CSS. And now we have a relationship between the HTML file and the CSS file. And the destination of this one, we use the href attribute and we just write down installed CSS as the address as both files are located at the same directory. Now we can use the styler CSS. So let's start styling the body section. So we add just write down body. We target the body and we just open a set of curly braces. First we remove the uh, default margin so we don't have any space between the elements and the wall of the browser. And then I want to change the background color. I, I want it to be a linear gradient. And this is going to be from left to right. So we just write to left. And uh, the first color is light blue. And the second one is light green. This is going to give us a color that starts from a blue to green and it starts from uh, it starts from the left to the right. So it from the left we see the green one and the, from the right we see the blue one. So if you open it, you can see it better. All right. And the other things I want to do, I want to change the font family. And we set the font family to Courier New, which is my favorite font, but you can use any font you prefer for your own project. The next things we want to uh, install is this heading here. If you remember, inside the body section, we add an H1 tag with a class of heading, and we just write down Note App. So here we can target that one using dot heading because it's it is a class. And after that, we want to change the I want to change the color of that to be dark blue. We can see it here. And I want it to bring it to the center using text align center like this. Then let's add some padding, padding to the top. So we add some space at the top of 10 pixels. And finally, I want to change the font size and make the size of the text bigger by using 35 pixels of font size. All right. So that was it for the heading section. Let's install this uh, font. Uh, the info text inside the HTML we ha uh, we have added a paragraph with a class of info text so we can target that one by using dot info dash text we open a set of curly braces and here uh, we can bring it to the center using a text aligned center and I want the color of that one to be dark blue as well. And uh, we can set the font size, the size of the text to be 18 pixels like this. So now it's time to install this, these notes and the button. If you look at the final version, you see the notes are on top of each other when we have a smaller screen. In the bigger screens, as the, uh, the size grows, we have more columns here. So we're going to target that div, this div with a class of app, which includes all the text area and the button. So we're going to 
style lists. So we just say dot app to target that div. I want to change the display to grid. So let's see here. When you set the display to grid, they come like a full screen first. But we can limit that one using the grid template columns. We're going to repeat that with the auto fill. So you just write down auto fill. And we want to auto fill it every 30 pixels. So we set this one to 30 pixels, the width of that one. And if this one gets, for example, 600 pixels, they come next to each other. And then we have more and more like this. So all of them, they became the same size. Even the button became the same size of the note. But there is no space between them. So we can just change the gap of that to 40 pixels. So we have a 40 pixels gap between these uh, grids, as you can see. So it's very easy to make a responsive design by grid system. So we have just added a grid template columns and we auto fill it by 300 pixels width. And we have added 40 pixels of gap. Now we can just bring them to the center using justify center, justify content center. So they come to the center of the screen like this. And also I want to push this text a little bit in, uh, push everything to the inside using padding, uh, pushing everything, just add some padding of 50 pixels. So this is going to have more space around this div so we can have maximum three grids in one screen. Now we can install this note here. So each of them, we want to add some shadow effect and also we want to have a transparent background color. So each text area, if you, if you pay attention, it has a class of, oh, it doesn't have any class actually. So we have to have a, uh, it has a class, sorry. It has a class of note here all the text areas. So I'm going to style it using dot note. Let's set the height of this one to 200 pixels. So let's see. So maybe we don't need that height. So first we need to remove the height and later we're going to add it if we need it. So we add some padding of 17 pixels. So we push everything inside like this. And we want to make the borders have corners. So we add the border radius of 15 pixels. And uh, the other things I want to do, I want to prevent the resizing because now you can resize this one. So it's, this is going to mess up the grid system. So we set the resize to none. And let's add some shadow. So by saying box shadow, I want it to be zero in the X axis, zero in the Y axis, but three pixels blurness, you can see. And I want the color of uh, 0, 0, 0 for black color and 30% transparency. So this is going to give us a nice shadow. And also, let's, uh, I think uh, everything is okay now. Let's change the font size to be 18 pixels. So let's refresh the page first. Okay, I think we need to add that height. So we just add the height of 
200 pixels. So this is going to be a state and we, we cannot change it. And let's change the color to be dark blue. So whatever we write down here, the text would be dark blue. And let's set the, well, let's uh, remove the border. So I don't want this black border. So we remove the border by just saying border none. This one looks better. And also when we click on it, we see a border too. So this one, we call it outline. So we can remove the outline by just saying outline none. Now, even we click, we don't see the outline, but we're going to add an outline ourselves by adding a box shadow. Then we have a background a background color of RGBA. We set the RGBA. We want a white background color by just adding 255, 255, 255. This is a white background color, but with 10% transparency. So we can see it like this. So now, you can see it's a, like a glassy design and any places they locate it. For example, this is a greener than this one. So it looks very nice. And in order for the size of this one to always be the same as the bot uh, that uh, button, we, we add the box sizing border box. So this is going to remove the extra sizing so we can adjust this one exactly like that button because uh, sometimes button has an extra things so this is going not going to cover that so we're going to add the box sizing here. Then we're going to uh, style this uh, placeholder so we just say dot note we target the placeholder by adding two colon. And we set the color to be gray. And also I wanted to have an opacity of 30%. So it's a uh, harder to read it. Empty this one. Okay. Looks okay. And also we I want to have some shadow more shadow when we I hover over it or when I click on it so we just say dot note we target the hover by just saying a clone hover so we target the hover pseudo class and also I want the, to target the focus pseudo class so we just say dot note focus so both of them I want when this one happens, I want to have a box shadow of 0 and 0 for the X and Y axis. But instead of these 3 pixels blurness, I want to have a 10 pixels blurness. And with the RGBA of the black color 0, 0, 0 and 0 0.3, which is the 30% transparency. Now we hover over it, you see the yeah, more shadow or if we click on it we see more shadow so click is focus hover when we hover over it so but this one is happening very fast we can add a transition so we make it like animation uh, more uh, smooth so we add a transition all we apply to everything and we just say 300 milliseconds with the ease effect so now when we hover over it, we, we, the shadow comes slower, like this. Now we, it's time to install this button. So we target the button. The button has a class of BTN. So we just target that one. We just say dot .BTN. And we set the height of that to be 200 pixels, similar to the the notes as you can see they are the same size 
But if you remember, we add box sizing. If you remove the box sizing, the size of the notes are bigger than the button. That's why we have added the box sizing. So let's go here. After the height, we add a border color. We set the border color to be an RGBA. Uh, white color with 37% of transparency, like this one. Then we want to have a background color, RGBA, white color with 27% of transparency. So we can see like this. And uh, let's set the border radius. We add a corner of 15 pixels. So we, we can now actually remove these text areas. So uh, actually we don't need them because later we're going to add these text areas using JavaScript. So we just had that one. I just can, uh, yeah, we, could, we just can remove all of them except one. Okay. So we can see the button now clear. So the border radius was 15 pixel. After that, we're going to set a font size of 70 pixels. So we have a bigger plus sign. And we set the font weight to be 700. And we set the color of the text to be an RGBA. Yeah, RGBA with the black color and 30% transparency like this. And we set the cursor to be pointer when we so when we hover over the button, we see a pointing hand. And now we want to target the hovering effect. When we uh, hover over the button, first thing first, we want to change the background color. We use RGBA to set the white color, but instead of, uh, we just uh, set it to be 55% transparency like this. And also I want the color to be an RGBA with the black color and 60% transparency. So it's, a, it's going to be a little bit darker, the plus sign. And here we also want to add some transition to apply to all with 300 milliseconds delay uh, and ease effect. Sorry, 300 millisecond duration. It's, a, it's similar to the one here. Yet yeah, that was it for the styling of the project. Uh, we have learned how to add the glassy design with the shadow effect and also this beautiful button. In the next section, we're going to learn how to add more functionalities like adding a new node or deleting a node by clicking by double click on the node using JavaScript. So we're going to learn many things. For example, if you refresh this page, you still see the notes. So the, all the notes are going to be stored in the uh, storage of the browser. So we call it a local storage. So you're going to learn how to get and write information from and to the local storage using JavaScript. So see you in the next section for the JavaScript part of the project. Welcome back.
In this section, we're going to work on the JavaScript part of the project. If you look at the final version, you can see by clicking on this button, we can add a new node. And by, click, uh, by double clicking on the node, we can delete it. So let me delete all of them first. Now we don't have any node. And if we click, we get a new node, which is empty. And we can just write something. For example, I just write hello. And this is going to update this node. And even we refresh the page, we see still the node. So let me show you how this system works. If we open the web developer tools using Ctrl Shift C and we go to applications and also we go to uh, local storage. You can see that inside the local storage, we have a key with the name of note app. All right. And then it, this one has a value which has an ID that we're going to produce randomly. And also it has a content which is for now is hello. If we add another one, for example, if I click on this button, I, I create another one you can see here it has a new id and the content should be empty for now the content is empty and if you write down something here for example nice we see the nice inside the content so that's why if you refresh the page we get all the information from this local storage and we repopulate this page so you don't see any changes. And also if you, for example, delete the nice one by double clicking on here and click on OK, you see that that particular object is removed from the array, the note app array. So we're going to do the same things. We're going to, in our project, we're going to uh, remove uh, and add these objects from the key note app. So we're going to use some methods called get item and set item inside the local storage to add and remove and update the data inside the local storage. So let's go to the uh, our website. And uh, let's refresh the page. So as you can see, we just have an empty node, but we are not able to create a new one. So we need to create a JavaScript file and add an event listener to this uh, button. So when we click on it, we, we're going to call a function that is going to populate a new node for us. So let's create a new JavaScript file. So we're going to open the Visual Studio Code and Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And here on the left side in the Explorer section, we click on this icon to create a new file and we call it index.js. We have the JavaScript file, which is empty, but we cannot use it yet because we need to add a script tag inside the index.html to add a link between these two files. The script tags always goes at the end of the body tag because we need all these uh, elements to be loaded in the browser and then we can manipulate them using JavaScript. So uh, just on the uh, opposite of the link tag that is going to be at the top inside the head section, we need to add the script tag at the end of the body section. So we just write down SC and we click on the second auto suggestion, the one with the SRC. 
And the source for this script tag would be index.js as both files, I mean the index.html and index.js are located at the same directory. So now we can use the JavaScript in our project. The first things we need to do is to bring this button. We want to have access to this button. Because the button has a class uh, as an ID of btn, we can target that one here using a method called get element by ID. And we just create a constant and we call this one btn element. And this is going to be equal to document because we want to target all the browser and any ID that has the name of btn would be targeted by this method get element by id now if we add an event listener to this one and just we uh, just add an event listener and the event we want to add is click so because we want to click on the button and this click is going to call a function and the, uh, we just call the function add note so now we, we can create this function. We just create this function here at the top and we call the function add note. So let's make this one camel case. So now add note. So let's test this one by console logging. For example, clicked, all right? So now if we go to our website and we open the console using F12, uh, make sure that you open the console by clicking on the console. Now the console is empty, but when we click on this button, we see that clicked is printed inside the console. If we click more, we see that more clicks is showing inside here. All right, so the function is working and the add event listener is working as well. So we need to work on the add note function and add more functionality to it. So we go back to Visual Studio Code and we delete this console log for now. Now we want to create, uh, for example, if you remember, we each object of the node has an ID and the content. So the ID is created randomly and the content at the beginning is just an empty string. So here we create a constant and we call it node object or I O B J. And this is going to be equal to an object. The first one is an ID which is going to be created randomly so we can use math method math for example dot random this is going to create a random number between 0 and 1 we need to call this one and we're going to multiply this one to a big number for example 100,000 all right and we need to make this one rounded. So we just say math.floor. And this is going to cover this random here. So we have the ID now. Let's create the content. The content for now is just an empty string. So we need to add a comma here at the end so let's now just console log the note object note obg so let's go back to our website now if we click on this button this is going to create an object with a random id and uh, with an empty content if you click again, it's going to create another one with another random no number. 
So the number is from zero to hundred thousand. So it's mostly it's going to be a random. You can add more numbers or letters to, to make it completely unique. But for simplicity, I just use the zero to hundred thousand. This is going to create a random number with an empty content. So now that we have created this object, based on this object, we need to create that note element. So we're going to create another constant and we call it note element. And this is going to be equal to another function. And the function is called create note element. And this is going to pass this note object first the ID and also we want to pass the content which is note object dot content so now we need to create this function this is not a JavaScript function we need to create this function so let's create it at the top so we create another function and this is going to be called create note element. And the input is ID and content. So we're going to have two things here inside the input of the function. So the first one is ID and the second one is content. All right. So now we have access to these two. We can console log and see. So we console log ID and the content. Uh, let's see in our website. Let's open the explorer section. Uh, sorry, the console section using F12. So each time we click, we get an ID and content. It's a different ID and content, uh, which is empty for now. So we have access to that ID and content from this function. So let's create the element. There is a method in JavaScript for creating an element. Uh, it is called uh, create element. So you just need to have const. We need it to create a constant. And the constant is called element. And this is going to be equal to document because we want to create the element inside the document. And we use the create element method, which is a JavaScript method. And this is going to take which element we want to create. For example, if you want to create a paragraph, we just write down P. If you want to create, for example, a h1 tag, you just write down h1. But because we want to create a text area, we just write down here text area. So this element is this, ele uh, this uh, element now. So we, cre we have created an element, a text area element. So now we have created this one. If you remember in, Java, in the HTML, the text area has many things. It has a class of note and it has also a placeholder. These two things were very important actually. So we need to create, add, add this one to the element as well. So because this element is completely empty. So we can just add a class name by just saying dot class list dot add and the class we want to add is just note this is similar to here class equals note this is going to be added to that element the next things we want to add is the placeholder so the placeholder is going to be empty notes similar to the one here we have added 
So this is the way we add elements and add attributes to the element inside the JavaScript. And also the this elements value, the value of this one is going to be to this content now. So we just say content because later we can add different content, not this one. For example, we can add something that we want to update inside this text area. So now we have created the class list, the placeholder, the value. All right. Now we want to add two things, two other things to this element. One, if you remember in the final version, if we double click, we can delete this uh, note. So we need to add an event listener, which listens to the double click. So when we go here, we can add this one here too. So we just say the element that we have created here, let's add an add event listener to that one. And the event listener we want to add to this one is double click. So we just write down dbl click, and this is going to uh, delete that uh, note. So we can create the delete here. For example, we create a function here that we can add the delete functionality. Because uh, for deleting, we need we need we want to add a warning like this, because this is asking you do you want to delete the node and if you click ok this is going to be deleted so we want to add this warning here so we we just create a constant and we call it warning and this is going to be equal to confirm because this is a confirm uh, window and the message for that one, we just say, do you want to delete this note? And we add a question mark. And if the answer for this one is OK, this warning would be true. So this warning can be true or false based on the answer. If the answer is OK, is true. If the answer is no or cancel, is going to be false. So we just add a condition here. If the note delete, sorry, the, if the warning is true, then delete the note. So we're going to create a function called delete. note and we should create this one which is getting the id of the node and also the element that we have created here so we want to remove the element later if we delete it so now we don't have this function let's create this function for now so we don't get an error so we create this function and we call it delete node just for now we just leave it empty Let's see if you get an error. No, we don't get an error now. So we have added the double click. The other things we want to add here. If you look at the final version. Now we just have the hello, for example. I can delete this hello and just say nice. You can see that the content is changed to nice. So we want to add the ability to update the note. So we need to add another event listener. So after this event listener, we're going to add another one, which is going to listen to everything happened inside the input. For example, any change happened inside the input. If this one happened, we want to create a function here that is going to update the note. So it's going to update the note and we're going to pass the ID and also we want to add the element value because we want to uh, change the value that we are uh, updating because uh, the content would be different. We want to update it. 
So we need to create this function as well. So I'm gonna create another function and I call it update note. So we're going to work on it later. So let's uh, see if we can see any results now. Oh no, we need to actually, when we create the note, we want to add it here. So if you remember here, inside the function add note, we have created a random number and we pass it through it to the create note element. After the creation, after the creation, we need to insert this one inside the DOM. What I mean by that, uh, if you look at the final version, when we add a new node, it is going to be added inside this array, but before the button. All right. There is a method in JavaScript, and it is called uh, insert before. So first thing first, we need to go to in the HTML. We need to target this div because we want to add this text area inside this div, a new text area inside this div, but before this button. So first thing first, we need to target this div. So inside the JavaScript at the top, I'm going to bring that uh, app element and this is going to be equal to document dot get element by id and the id we, that we are targeting is app because the id of this div is app so now we want to add that new element inside this app but before the the button so the things we do here we just target that app element and we just uh, use that method that I have mentioned, which is insert before. So we just say insert before, and this is going to take two things. If you see the note that we want to add and also the child that we want to be before that. So we want to add that note element that we have created by this function. We want to add this one but before the button the button was btn element so let me explain it again so we have target that div with the class with the idea of app and we have inserted this note that we have created here before the button so let's see if we, if we can see any result here so when we click here so let's see what error we have created. So the error is to execute insert on a node, the paragraph one is not the type node. So let's see. So the first one has an error because we haven't, I think, completed the create node function yet. So let's complete that one. Uh, let's see what we have missed here. So the create note element, the function is created here and uh, it, go, it gets the ID, it creates the element. Oh, sorry, we have created the element, but we didn't return it. So we need to, at the end, return that element. The return means that we have created this one, but what is the output of this function? We have the input here, but what is the output? The output, there are a lot of things inside this function happening, but we want to just the element goes outside of the function. Now this one goes outside and re be replaced by this note element here. So let's try now. So if you click on this one, we see a new note is added here. So we can add as much as we want here. But when we refresh the page, all of them goes away, goes away because 
we haven't saved any of them inside the local storage as you can see here We can fix this one by just adding uh, everything to the local storage inside the add node function. So after the inserting this uh, new created node, we can just create another function called save node. or save note local storage if you want to call it and we're going to pass it an object we, we call it notes but we need to create the notes first so here we just create a constant and we call it notes for at first we just make it an empty string but after creating this notes object we're going to push the new node inside this uh, notes so we just say notes dot push and this is going to be equal to node object that we have created here so we this is just an empty first and then we create this one and then we put it inside this node and then we're going to save it inside the local storage so now we're going to create this function the save node so we're going to create another function and we call it save node that is going to get the nodes first so we get the notes from the input and we're going to save this note inside the local storage. So we just call local storage dot for saving inside the local storage we use a method called set item and we need to call the key first if you remember inside the final version I'll show you the key is note app we can call it anything we like for example i call it note app like this and this is go uh, this is going to be equal to that note but we cannot save this array directly inside the local storage this is not allowed we need to change this one to the string because this is an array it is not allowed for a browser doesn't allow you to save an array inside the local storage for safety reason because you can just add some uh, malicious code inside the local storage but you can convert this one using json dot stringify a string this one should be dot a stringify and now we just put the notes that we are notes this should be notes from the input of the save note function so let's try this one now now we are inside the document we go to the local storage inside the application we go to the local storage here and uh, let's remove this one this is from the the final version we have this is completely empty now let's refresh our website and when we click on this one a new note is added in our browser and also you can see inside the local storage we have a new key and it is called note app with a new an array which is id with uh, this id and this content but the problem is when we click again this is going to be replaced by the new one because we always uh, here we, cr we set the notes to be empty and then we're going to push one new object inside this empty array so we can do uh, we can first
get the information from the local storage and then we're going to push the new one at the end of the array so instead of just uh, creating an empty array we are going to get all the nodes from the inside the local storage what I mean by that we're going to create a function called get node we're going to call this function and put it inside this nodes and this function we're going to create it here at the bottom so we create another function and we call it get note or get notes probably it makes more sense so let's change that one to get notes as well and this is going to get all the notes that is already inside the local storage so uh, it is very simple it is similar to the save notes so we're going to firstly because all inside the, the the local storage is a stringified already we need to convert that one to an array there is a method called parse and we call it parse we need to parse that one so we need to parse whatever inside the local storage so we just say local storage and for getting the a data we just use get item instead of set item and the get item is going to first we need to know which item to get and if you remember the key was note app so we're going to get everything inside this note app and if there is nothing inside if it's empty we're going to just have an empty array instead all right because we don't get an error all right so we get everything inside or if there is nothing we get an empty array so now we need to return this one if you remember we got an error before by not returning so the output of this function would be this parsing and this is going to be uh, this is going to go inside this notes whatever inside the local storage now if we come back to our website and if you we refresh the page and we delete this whatever inside we have now we're clicking we're going to create a new uh, note app inside the local storage if you click again we're going to get uh, create a new one that is added to the previous one and this is not replaced so as you can see we have two objects the first one is uh, the first element is this one and the second element is the and whatever we add it's going to be added inside the logo local storage so now after creating this one we need to have that ability to edit and delete these notes and also if we uh, when we refresh you see that everything else is gone so we don't have anything so we need to actually go get all the information that is already inside the lo local storage and populate all these nodes here so the fa the first one is actually is fake and it is inside the index that uh, html let me delete this one so we don't get confused that we have some note actually we don't have any note we can add it to the local storage is going is added but it's not shown inside the our browser so we need to create all of them so let's go back to index.js and before everything we're going to first get all the data from the storage and we're going to look through the all of them we get all the nodes and we populate the nodes inside that uh, this application element so we get we call that function that we have created get nodes that is going to get all the nodes from the local storage when we this one happened this is going to gives us 
all the nodes. So this is going to be equal to that nodes. So we want to uh, loop through this one. We're going to met use a method called for each. For each is going to give us each node. So this one is going to give us each node one by one. And we're going to populate this one. And uh, for example, we just call the node element each of them. And if you remember, we have created a function called create node element. So we're going to call this one and create the element that is going to have the node.id and also the content inside that node that we are getting from the each loop. All right, so we get and we create them first. And then inside this app.element, we're going to insert them. And if you remember, we, we want to insert them using insert before. And this is going to be that node element that we are creating here. And this is going to be before that button there. So now if you go to our website, we see all the nodes that inside the local storage. Even we refresh the page, we're going to repopulate them by this uh, line of code, this uh, get nodes for each, and we're going to populate them each time someone comes to the website. All right. So, for example, if I delete this uh, local storage and we refresh the page, we don't see any nodes because the local storage is completely empty. So let's add a new node. And so you can see it here. We refresh the page. We still see it inside the browser. So as I mentioned before, we want to have the ability to update this one. For example, if I write down something here, we don't see any change inside the content. The content is, is still empty. So we want to uh, actually complete that event listener that we have added. The, change, the updating based on the input. If you remember, we have created a function called update note, but now it is completely empty. Now it's time to complete this update note. So the update note is going to get two things, the ID and the content. So the content is coming from the, the element.value. So we have the ID and the content. Now we want to create, first thing first, we want to get all the nodes. We get all the nodes using the get nodes uh, function that we have created here. We get all the nodes from the local storage and we call it nodes. The things we want to do is to uh, change and uh, update the nodes inside it. So this is going to be called target. And we just filter through these nodes because we want to know which nodes we want to update. We, based on this ID, we're going to filter through that. So we're going to use a method called filter. And filter is going to give us a note, each note, but the note we are we want is the one with the ID equal to that ID that we are getting from here. And this is going to return, for example, this is going to return actually one uh, one element, but we need to target the first one here. So we just uh, say the zero, the element with, with the number zero, because it's the first one. Now we have the target, which is the node with this ID. We just want to change this, the content of this target. And this is going to be equal to this content that we are getting here. After the creating the uh, target, we're going to save the node 
we use the function save note. Let me see where was it? Yes, here save note that is getting, uh, and then we pass this notes here. So let's try this here. So now you can see that is empty. Now let's try to write something here. As soon as we write something, we see this is updated and it's called nice. And if we add something else, uh, let's see the second one. Now the second one, I just write, for example, job. All right, you can see this is job now. And if you click here, we can see the changes here as well. So we can add many, many notes you want. And also if you refresh the page, we see still the contents is there because they are coming from the local storage. So we have done with this part, but what about deleting? The deleting, if I, if I remember, we had an add event listener, which is going to target by double clicking on the note. When we double click, a window is going to pop up asking, do you want to delete this node? And if you click OK, you're going to call a function called delete node. But we haven't created this function yet. Actually, we have created the function, but we haven't completed the function delete node. So first thing first, they ask uh, with a warning, do you want to delete the fun uh, this node? If the answer is OK, this is going to call this function delete node so the input for delete node if you're here we pass the id and the elements so we're going to get that id and also we're going to get that element here all right and inside this delete node function first thing first if you remember we need to get the notes so we need to get the notes from the local storage and here we call it just note and we just say get notes but we don't want to get all of them we want to filter and we just want the one there with this id so we use the method called filter the things the filter does we want to keep all the nodes except the one with this node because we want to delete it so the trick for this one is we get the node here and we're going to keep all of them except with the one with the id of this id here but this one shouldn't be equal should be not equal it means Keep everything except the one with this ID. So this is going to filter in a way that keeps everything except the one that has this ID. So now we have the nodes. So we want to update the local storage, storage. So we just say save node. And we're going to pass this nodes here. Now we have updated the local storage, but we still haven't removed this element from the DOM. So if you look at the, our website, for example, if just look at this one from the local storage, the nice. So I double click here and I click OK. This is going to remove that nice from the array, but this, this is still inside the browser. But if you refresh the page, we, we don't see it. But we want to, this one happens simultaneously. We don't want to refresh the page. So as soon as we delete, for example, this job, we want this one to go away from the DOM as well. So we can do this one here by just uh, targeting that app element. And we wanted to use a method called remove child. And the child we want to remove is that element that is passed inside this function that that is uh, pa passed here inside this function 
all right so we want to remove that element now if we for example want to delete this one so let me fix this one and make it for example nice you see the first one is nice when i double click and i click on ok this is going to be removed from the local storage and also from the browser so if you you, you, see, you don't see it now and i refresh the page also you can only see this note i think we have added all the functionalities so let's see let's add more Let's close this one. So now, for example, we, I can edit this one. I can write down anything I want. And it stays in the local storage. I can delete this note, this note. So everything is working fine, I think, for our project. I hope you enjoyed the project and learned many things. Actually, there were many concepts inside this project, including how to save and restore from the local storage, how to edit, how to update an object, how to create an element inside the DOM, how to remove an element from a, another container. I hope you enjoyed and learned many things. See you in the next project. Welcome back to another project. In this project, I'm going to create a currency converter. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have two selector that is help us to select the currency. For example, the first one is US dollar and the second one is Australian dollar. You can choose between six, uh, seven currencies like Euro, Canadian Dollar, Indian Rupee, Japanese Yen, and Australian and US Dollar. So any change you do, it's going to be a request to an API that is going to give us the firstly the rate. Uh, rate. Uh, for example, one US Dollar is 81 Indian Rupee. And based on the input, the amount of the money we put, for example, 3000 US dollar is equal to 244 almost 1000 Indian rupee. So by changing each of them, you see uh, the instant change and instant request to the API. And this is going to fill the output and also the exchange rate. So we're going to use JavaScript to firstly fetch the data from the API and show it and fill these inputs by uh, changing their properties. So see you in the next section. So see you in the next section for the HTML part of the project. All right, let's start the project. As you can see, I have put the final version here as a reference. As you can see, we have a title here, currency converter. We have two select. We can uh, select the currency, the first currency, for example, US dollar. The second one you can use, uh, for example, Japanese yen. And you see the conversion rate and also the, the rate. And you can also change it here as well and you can put any number you like here so uh, first thing first we need to create the html part of the project so let me open the visual studio code but you can use any text editor you like so let me open a new window so i close this one now we're just starting from scratch. So let's close the Get Started tab. And in the File menu, we click on Open Folder. I would like to create the project as usual in my desktop. And uh, so I choose the desktop. And here I create a folder. And I uh, name the folder the name of the, our project. 
which is the currency converter. So after writing down the name, we press enter and we choose the folder here by clicking on the select folder. This is going to open the folder in our explorer section and here we can create the HTML, CSS and JavaScript file. So let me close the get started tab again and here on the left side in the explorer section we can click here to create a new file and we call the file index.html. All right, so now we have the, our HTML file on the right side, but it's, it is completely empty, we, but we can use an exclamation mark to add an HTML boilerplate. So we add an exclamation mark here and we get an uh, auto suggestion from Emmet. If we choose the first one, this is going to give us uh, an HTML boilerplate, which includes the doc type, which is the type of the HTML and the, the version of the HTML. And in our case, as we are using HTML5, we just need to have HTML here. Then we have the HTML tag, which is covering both of the head and the body tag. Here, the lang attribute defines the language of the page. And in our case, the language is English. Then we have the head tag, which covers the metadata tags and also the title tag. The first metadata defines the chart set uh, characteristics and we used UTF-8 which is uh, suggested by the HTML5 because it contains all the characters and symbols. The next one is related to the Internet Explorer. Uh, for the user who are using the Internet Explorer, they're going to use the recent rendering engine, the Microsoft Edge instead of Internet Explorer if they're using Internet Explorer. The next metadata tag is for the viewport height. So it's going to set the width of the screen to the device's width. For example, if you have a, a smaller screen like a mobile, you can see the uh, size of the website is smaller when you're using, for example, bigger screen like desktop, or tablets. So this is going to automatically detect the device and set the width to that device. And here we have the initial scale, which is the initial zoom level of the browser, and we set it to be 100%. Then we have the title, which is now document. If you open the browser now, we can see the, our website. I'm using the live server extension. So if you click here on the go live, this is going to open the uh, website inside the browser. The, uh, my, uh, my default browser is Chrome, so it's automatically open. So the, the website is completely empty, but we have a title document here. So now uh, let's, let me bring this one on the left side and the website on the right side so we can see everything uh, in real time, the changes. So let's close the Explorer section by dragging it to the left side. And the, do uh, the title is document. Let's change it to the name of our project, which is Currency Converter. All right, now the title is changed to Currency Converter. Now we can start making our HTML, fi uh, HTML file and codes inside the body section. As you can see from the final version, 
we have a container here that includes everything inside and we have a currency that is a h1 tag then we have a container here so let me draw it for you okay so we have a container here which is in, which includes a selector and also a, a, an input here and also we have another a container here so we can just make the first one and by just copying the first one we can achieve the second one because they are completely similar and finally we have just a paragraph at the end here okay let's start uh, creating this so in the side the body section as I mentioned we have a container here so we add a div with a class of container so we just say container and we add a dot here to add the class automatically so now if we press enter we get a div with a class of container so later we're going we can install this one using css by targeting this class so inside this container we have everything else for example we have the h1 tag so let me show you in the our uh, website that we are currently working on now we have the h1 tag the h1 tag is just the uh, saying currency converter the, uh, the name of the the website i can copy this one and put it here so we we see an h1 tag saying currency converter and we're going to style it later using CSS, but we, we are just making the HTML part of the project. So after the H1 tag, as I mentioned before, we have a div, we have a container that includes a selector and an input. So after that, we add a div with a class of, for example, we just say currency or currency container and inside this we have some selector so we add a select tag all right so we added select tag the select tag doesn't have the name but for just knowing which select we are choosing we add an ID here so later we can use JavaScript to target this and get the information from this select. So we just add an ID and then we just say currency uh, because it's the first currency here, we just call it currency dash first. All right. So this select, look as you can see, you can we have the select but the select doesn't have anything inside it. So we need to add the options here. So we, we add the option. The first option, the value is, for example, we just say Australian dollar. And inside that one, we say Australian dollar. So now we have one option. All right, so we can just copy this one and add another currencies as well so um, I want to add uh, totally uh, seven currencies and later you can add as much as you want so let's uh, copy this option using con uh, alt shift arrow done six more times because I want to add seven so the second one I can use the control D to select both of the second and I change it to Canadian dollar for example so now we have the option of Canadian dollar the sec uh, the third one is euro and make sure to write it down exactly like that the symbol of the currency because when we are fetching the data from the API the API only understand this format, not other things. 
So if you write it down lowercase or you just write down Australian dollar, it doesn't work. So you have to do it exactly like this. The next one, uh, I just choose the Great Britain pound. The next one, I just use the most popular one, for example, the Indian rupee and uh, Japan's yen. And finally, US dollar. Oh, I didn't change the other one. Okay. So now we have the selector with the seven currencies. The last thing is this input. We want to add the input inside this div. So we add an input with a type of in, uh, number. We just add input and the type for this one would be number. So the input is uh, the type of number because we just want to accept number for here. It doesn't have a name, and but the ID, we just call it worth first, means the value first. And we just set the initial value for that one to be one. So it's going to be one by default when the person comes to the website. And for the minimum amount, I just want it to be zero because we don't have a negative currency. Maybe we have uh, in uh, accounting, but in general, we don't have negative currency. So here, now we have finished this container for the currency, currency container. We can copy this one and make the second one easily. So we just use Alt Shift Arrow done to copy it. We just need to change a little bit. For example, this ID is currently first. This one it would be currently currency second. And the options are similar. Here, the input, the ID is uh, worth second. Okay. And yeah, everything else is okay. But here, in the second one, uh, because uh, as you can see, we can only change this first input. The, the second one we cannot change. So we make the second one disabled. So you cannot change the second one. And also, uh, we don't need to have a value or mean or something like that because this is just disabled. You don't need to do anything else. Okay, and for the currency, I wanted the, the US dollar to be as a default, always. When you refresh the page, now Australian dollar is the default. But if you just use the selected attribute, we can just make the US dollar as a default. And the second one, we can just make the Indian rupee default as well. Okay. So now the, we have finished, uh, or uh, sorry, one part left, this paragraph. So we just add a, another paragraph at the end. Just uh, this div. After this div, we add a paragraph. And this paragraph has a, sorry, it has a class of, exchange rate and also it has an ID of exchange rate and inside we just can hard code this one for now and late after styling and we can just make this one uh, dynamic using JavaScript so for now we just hard coded something all right, so everything else you see the from vinyl version is coming from API. So this is all just the real data. All right. So that was it for the HTML part of the project. In the next section, we're going to install this using CSS. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have completed the 
HTML part of the project. In this section, we're going to style the project using CSS. As you can see from the final version of the projects, we have a container here that is covering all everything. The background color of the website is yellow, but the background color of the container is kind of green. And everything is centered like this paragraph and the H1 tag here. And also these containers, this selector is on the left and also the input is on the right. The first thing we need to do is to just create the CSS file. So we need to open the Explorer section. We just can use Ctrl Shift E to open the Explorer section. And here we create a new file and we call it a style, lowercase a style dot CSS. So now we have the style CSS file here on the right side. Uh, but before using the CSS file, we need to add a link to the HTML file uh, to the <laughs> CSS file. So here, we just close this Explorer section and at the top, after the title, we add a link tag. And the link tag, we choose the link CSS. And here we add a link to the CSS file with the relationship between the HTML and the CSS uh, using the style sheet. The reason we just write down for the destination a style CSS because these two files are located at the same directory. So now we can use the CSS file in our project. So the first things we want to style is this body section because it's covering everything. So all the website is body. We just want to change the background color and it put, bring everything to the center. So let's put our website and we go to style CSS and we start with the body section. We add a, a set of curly braces. The first things I want to do, I want to change the background color to be yellow. We should see it now. Let me refresh. Yeah. So the background color is yellow. So in order to bring them to the center, two things we need to do. First is changing the display to flags. So it's, they're going to be uh, there. This container is going to be flex in the screen so we can change its position. So we change the display from block to flex. And we have to set a height for it. Oh, sorry. So the height is going to be 100% of the viewport height. It means the height is the height of the screen and we can now bring the this container to the center horizontally and vertically using justify content center for horizontally and align item center for vertically the other things i want to do is just uh, change the font family the, the font of the text is to carrier new. So this is kind of uh, this uh, font. And yeah, that was it for the body section. We also can remove the margin as well, the default margin and padding. So we have a better sliding later. So the, as you can see, the scroll, the unnecessary scroll is gone too. So after the body, now we need to install the this container. So in, in, in index.html, we add a div with a class of container that is covering everything. And now we want to install this div, which is here. And we want to change its background color. And also we want to bring everything to the center as well. 
So here, uh, after the body section, we target that container div because it's a class. We need to add a dot to target that. So we just say dot container. And we open a set of curly braces. So container, it's correct. And now we just change the background color first. The background color we want to choose is dark uh, cyan. It's kind of green color. Then I want to change the text color to be white and uh, text color. So we just need to add color here. And the color I want to use is Alice blue. Is kind of uh, white, but not completely white. After that, let's add some padding. So we add some space between the text and the container. So the padding I want to add is 20 pixels or I'll just make it 10 pixels. That's enough. That's fine. And uh, the other one things I want to do is change this border, I want to have a, a corner, rounded corner here. So I change the border radius to, for example, 5 pixels. So that is okay now, but uh, in the larger screen, we have like this. And then when we want to style it after that, so if we style other things, we need to add uh, more styling to the container. But for now, we just leave it like that. I'm going to add more later. So now we're going to target this currency container. We have two currency containers, one here and one here. So we want to target both of them. So I copy currency container and just paste it here. And I'm going to add some styling here. The first things I want to things I want to add is the padding of 20 pixels. So we add some space here. Then uh, the other things I want to do is change the display to flex. And I want to add the space between the selector and this input. So I can just do it by just adding the justify content, a space between. So we add a space between them. So like this. So everything looks okay. And uh, we can, uh, now we need to style just uh, this selector and this input. All right, so let's target this select. So as you can see from the index.html, the select is under this currently container. So we can target that select by just targeting that currency container and we add a space here and then we just say select because it's just a tag, we don't need to add dot here. And we added a set of curly braces. Now we can target the select. So the only things I want to do is just add a padding of 10 pixels. So we make it a little bit bigger. So it's easier to read. All right. So after the select, let's uh, target this input. So we, we can do the same type of things. We just uh, add the currency container and add a space and then we just say input because it it's just a child of this div. So we have this div and then we have this uh, select and then we have this input. So input is under this div. So we just need to add it like this so we target that. I want to remove the border so just uh, set the border to be zero. Then let's change the background color or we can just say background to be transparent. So no color for the input. 
So because we can just see the number here, then we can uh, increase the size. We just say fine font size 25 pixels. So make it bigger like this. Then uh, we can just text align. I want to bring this number to the right side. So we can just change the text align to right instead of left. So we can see the number on the right side. The other things we need to do is change the color. We just change the color to the same color of this H1 tag, which is Alice Blue. All right. So that was it for the input section. And uh, which now, as I mentioned before, we want to add something to the container later. So now we, we can notice that the, this H1 came to the left side and also this paragraph. We want them to be exactly in the center. So the things, the only things we need to add to this container is just add a text align and we set it to be instead of left to be center. Okay, now both of them are in the center. And the last things we need to uh, style is this paragraph. So we can target that. Uh, as you can see here, we have the paragraph and the class is exchange rate. So we can copy this. We add a dot here, paste it here, and we can target and uh, style it just now. So we just say font size. And the font size for this one is 16 pixels. So we make it bigger. And also we want to add some, uh, uh, we just add some font weight to be 600. So make it a little bit thicker. Let's see here how it looks. So it looks nice in all sizes. So let's, uh, the other things you, maybe you notice when we change the number, you see a line around this input. We can simply remove that one by just saying, we just target that select and it's focus and also so we, we just, uh, when we focus on this one, we want we don't want to see uh, something around it. And also when we, for the input, when we focus on it, we don't want to see anything as well. Focus means when we click. When we click on it or when, uh, the, uh, when we use tab and we go to this part, we call it focus. So we, 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 if you want to target the focus, you need to add a colon here. Now we can just remove the outline. We're just saying outline zero, or you, I think you can say outline none. So now we don't see anything around the input. Okay. So everything is good for the styling. So that was it for the CSS part of the project. In the next section, we're going to work on the JavaScript part of the project and we're going to learn how to uh, work with the currency converter API and get all these informations that we need and based on the selection. And we show it here inside this and also inside the output. So see you in the next section for the JavaScript part of the project. All right, in the last section, we have completed the CSS part of the project. In this section, we're going to start adding functionality to the project using JavaScript. So we have created this uh, UI using HTML and CSS, but just like the final version, we want to add a functionality. So when we change a currency or we change this input, we see the instant 
result in the output so each time we change something in these three inputs we are going to fetch the data from the, the uh, API which gives us the information about the currently currency converter so let's first uh, create the javascript file so here we need to open the explorer section using ctrl shift e and here on the left side we create a new file and we call it or we name it index.js Similar to the one we did for the installed CSS, we need to add a link to the JavaScript file within the HTML file. So let's close the Explorer section again using Ctrl B. And we need to add the link at the end of the body tag because all the pages, all the, the tags should be loaded and then the JavaScript uh, do the calculation otherwise the JavaScript cannot understand the page so on the contrary to the CSS that is loaded at the beginning we need to put the JavaScript at the end of the code so here at the end we add a script tag with the SRC which is the source uh, address and the address is just the, the name of the file, which is index.js, because the both of the HTML and the JavaScript files are located at the same directory. Now we can use the JavaScript in our project. So a few things we need to do. We need to bring these elements. The first, so we need to have this one, this one, these two inputs and also we want to have a change here as well so we need to have five things five elements we imported to javascript so we go to javascript and we import these five, uh, five elements so these five elements they have a id for example this paragraph has an id of exchange rate this input has the ID of worth second. This uh, selection has the ID of currently second. And the first one, these two are currently first, currency first, and also worth first. So we need to target these uh, elements by targeting their ID. So we can use the get element by ID method to get these elements. So uh, the first element, we just create a constant. We call the first element, for example, currency, currency first. And uh, we just add EL at the end. So it's, it stands for element. And this is going, we can get that one by targeting the document. Document is all, all the website. And we can just use get element by ID to target the, the, that element, which is this one. And the ID for that one is currency dash first. Okay. Now we have that element. Let's get the this input. So the input is just we call it worth first el. Similar to the first one, we just need to target the document. We use get element by id method, and we add the id name, which is the worth dash first okay so we can copy these two and create the second one get the second one so i copy both of them using alt shift arrow down and i just want to change this the the text first 
here so I choose the first and then I use Ctrl D to choose the other first and then I make this one second the only things I need to change is this S should be lowercase and this one as well so we got the these four elements the last things we we need is this element which is this paragraph with the idea of exchange rate so I can copy the exchange rate and and here I'm going to create a constant and I call it exchange a lowercase exchange rate element and this is going to be document dot get element by id and the id is the one that we have copied exchange rate all right so we have all the five elements now we can use them and we can manipulate them or we can get the data from them so we want to get the data from the these two selects and also this input so we want to get the element for, uh, the value of these three and we want to change the value of these two so and then we want to add a, a event listener to these uh, these uh, three so we want to listen to these three the the mean of the lesson is whatever change happens here we want to know and trigger a function and get the uh, get the information from api so one two three places if any numbers change or any selection change we want to trigger a function so First thing first, we create a function here. So we create a function and we call it, for example, uh, update, for example, rate, update rate. And uh, we want to, for example, this element, which is currently currency first element. So currently first element we want to add an add event listener to it and the event we want to listen we want to listen to the changes happening here so we want to, any change happen to this this uh, option this select we want to trigger that function here update rate so we're going to write down the update rate here so anytime any change happened to this element, we want to call this function. So we can tr uh, we can test this one. For example, we, I can come console log and say uh, called, okay. And if you open the console log using F12, let me bring this one at the bottom. So the console log is open now. If I change the this element, for example, I change from Euro to Japan Yen. Uh, we should see something in the console log. Let me refresh the page and we try again. So let's try this one. Currency first element, currency first element currency first let's check here we see that is it correct or okay currency first so that is correct and also we added a add event listener to it which is going to be triggered by change and this is going to call the 
function that we have created here update rate so let me try again so it's not working for some reason let me check this one is correct the script tag index.js so let me stop the video and find the problem i'll be back when the, i found it sorry just <laughs> i find out the mistake we were working on the the final version not the website that we have created so that was the funny things i was doing sorry about that so now we open in the correct tab so if we now change here from us dollar for example to euro we see that we we see the cult this console log so it's just working this add event listener so we can just uh, add the event listener to the this uh, this one and uh, this input as well so we can just uh, let me change it for example i just do do currently second element dot add event listener and this is going to be triggered when we change it and we just going to uh, call the update rate function okay now if we change this second input we also going to console log call and uh, let's add the event listener to this input as well so we uh, we target that one by just saying word first element and we add the event listener and this this one we want to target the number we don't we can use change or we can use the input we just say input so whatever change happened in the input we want to uh, call that function which is update rate so now whatever change we do you see we are calling the input or we just write something here and we press enter So 2000 is seated change here. Any change happens, we are calling this console log. All right. So after the adding the event listener, now we want to uh, complete this function and we just get the rates. All right. So the things we want to do, we want to use a website, an API. We, if you uh, if you search on Google exchange exchange rate uh, dash API in the search result you see a website with the URL exchange dash api.com so you can use this website and this website uh, it's completely free to use. Uh, but you you just need to add your email and get the uh, API key, all right? So I already actually signed up for this website and I got my API key. It is completely free, is uh, as you may, uh, as you can see, no credit card details details required for this uh, website. You just need to add your uh email here and get the api key so because i already got it I, I i i cannot do it again to show you but it's completely simple and easy to do it so when you do this one you're going to get uh, the api key and i show you how to use the api key so now we come back to the website and let's bring this one to the right side So instead of console log, so let's close this console log. We're going to fetch 
from that API. So we just say fetch and uh, fetch is going to have the address for the API key. So, but because the address is dynamic, because we want to uh, request based on the currency rate, for example, the currency name, US dollar and this input we want to request and we get this uh, information based on the second uh, input okay so it's going, going to be dynamic for getting a dynamic one we need to add a backtick here so backtick is located over the tab key it's not uh, a quote it's it's a different okay so here and the address for this one is h t t p s and when you uh, actually sign up for the website they give you the address too so you can copy that but i'm going to type it so it's v6 dot exchange rate dash api dot com and uh, after that we have a forward slash v6 and after that you have your api key that you get the, from the website so let me get mine from my email so i have copied my api key i'm going to paste it here so you use your own api key because i'm going to change this one after the video because it has a limit so for example just a thousand five hundred requests a month after that you need to pay so you, it's better to get your own API key. And uh, after the forward slash, we add latest. And uh, again, you put the forward slash. Now you need to put the first uh, currency, uh, currency value. So you just need to add a dollar sign because it's a, it's a variable you're putting. So in order to get the value of this first element, we can just target the dot value. So we copy this first one and put it here. And we just say dot and we add value here. So we get the value of that. For example, if it's US dollar, we get the US dollar. If it's Australian dollar, we get Australian dollar. Okay. After this, we're going to... Uh, yeah, that's enough for this one, for this. And after the fetching, we need to get the response. So in order to get the response, we just can just say dot then. So after requesting, after the fetching, give me the response. So the response comes here in the parenthesis and you need to uh, convert the response to the JSON. JSON is a type of uh, format that you can use. Now, the re response that is given you, you cannot use. You have to convert this one to JSON. So for co converting that, you just need to write down dot JSON. And you need to call it. JSON is just a, a JavaScript method. Okay. So after uh, converting it to the JSON, you can get the data. So after this, you just need to have uh, another dot then. All right. So another dot then, and this is going to give us the data. So now you can use the data here. So we're going to return and use the data. For example, I want to uh, show you so I just console log data so I'll show you the data let's see if we have done it correctly okay so let's open the console using f12 now if you change this one to for example the Australian dollar we get the data 
as you can see the result is successful and then uh, we get all the information the information we need is inside the conversion rates so the inside the conversion rates we have the all the conversion rates we need from the Australian dollar so we we requested Australian dollar here we got the all the currency for example Canadian dollar is 0 0.8991 and uh, for example euro is this much and this is all real data it's uh, happening now in the world the time that I'm recording the video so all these currently are available for you to get the conversion rate all right so so let's uh, instead of console log let's get the conversion rate here exchange rate here so I create a constant I just call it rate and this is going to be equal to this data with that we are getting and as I mentioned it's inside a, an array called conversion conversion let me see conversion underline rates okay but which conversion rates we, we want we want the conversion rate based on the second input so inside the console log you saw that they give us all the currency for example Canadian dollar US dollar and everything but which one do we want so we need to specify which one we need so based on the second input here this selector we can choose the one we desire so the this currently second element we just get the value dot value so we want this one this conversion rate so let me see what's the problem here uh, instead of this uh, parenthesis just change this one to a curly braces so this should be a curly braces okay now it's correct because we are returning directly we need to have a curly braces so now if we console log the rate we should see the rate here so now let me open the console log using f12 now if i choose for example the euro to Indian rupee is 84.77 to US dollar is 1.03 so based on the second one we are getting this one all right so now we can cr actually fill this one and make this one completed because we have the data and we can just replace this one and uh, show it here so in order to change that one it's uh, it's very simple we just say the this element which is uh, exchange rate element we target that one and we just add it inner HTML we change the inner HTML uh, sorry we can just change the inner text because we just want to change the text and uh, this is going to be dynamic too because it depends on the inputs so we just add a back tick here and we just say one for example the first input so we add a dollar sign and curly braces here and we want to show that one for example US dollar to uh, Indian rupee for example so it's going to be dynamic so this one should the should be the value of the uh, sorry this one should be the value of the first uh, select and so we just say currency first element dot value and we just add an equal here like this 
and uh, we just add the second one by just adding a dollar sign we just say currency second element dot value so let's see if, if it's working or not so we choose the australian dollar say so one australian dollar is equal to indian oh we just missed the this rate here so before this one we just add this rate as well so we add a so we can put it inside this so rates plus a, an a space and then plus this one okay like this so now we just choose the canadian dollar one canadian dollar is 60.63 indian rupees so it's working now all right but the problem is when the person comes in the website is just see the hard coded here that we have one us dollar equals to this one so in order to fix that we can call this function once one time at the top so we just say update rate and we just call it one time so when someone comes to the website it just sees the uh, the default selection which is us dollar and uh, indian rupee okay so we have fixed this one now we want to calculate the second input which is here all right So after this, we want to change the second one. The second one is worth second element. We want to change its value. So we need to just say dot value. And this one is equal to the first one, the first element dot value multiply to that rate that we have calculated so the rate multiplied to the first value this value for example one multiplied to the 81 is 81 if it's two is 163 three is going to be 244 all right so it's always going to be uh, updated and uh, this one is four digits here if you don't want to see the four digits for example you want to see only three or two you can simply just add the dot fixed uh sorry two fixed which is a java javascript method two fixed and then you can just write down the, the number of digits you want to see for example three uh, you just see three digits or if you put two you see two digits okay yeah that was it for our project and the javascript part i hope you enjoyed and learned many things uh, so, uh, so it's finished and i see you in the next project Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create a loan calculator. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have three inputs here. The first one is the loan amount. The second one is the interest rate. And the last one is the amount of months that we would like to pay the loan. For example, if you have a $100,000 loan with the 10% interest rate and if you want to pay this loan for 12 months we have to pay 9166.67 per night so any changes you do for example if you change the interest rate to 4% and you press enter you see the difference here inside the monthly payment so we're going to firstly, by using HTML, add these inputs 
Then we're going to style this project using CSS. And finally, with using JavaScript, we're going to get all these inputs data. And by just adding a form formulation, we can calculate the monthly payment and show it inside here in real time. So in the next section, we're going to start with the HTML part of the project. So see you in the next section. All right, let's start our project. I opened the final version of the project as our reference so we can just compare our code with the final version. And uh, let's start firstly create the HTML part of the project. So let me go to my desktop and I open the Visual Studio code. You can use any code text editor that you prefer. Once you open the Visual Studio code, we close the Get Started tab and inside the file, we click on the new, uh, new folder. Here we choose the folder we want to create the project inside it. I want to create the project inside the desktop as usual. So I click on desktop and here I create a new folder and I call it the same as the name of the project, which is the loan calculator. All right, now we just press enter and we choose the folder that we have created by clicking on the select folder. Here we close the get started tab again and here on the left side, which we call it uh, Explorer, we create the index.html file with the file we need to create the HTML file. So here we can click here on the this button or we can right click and click on the new file. And we call the file, as I mentioned, index.html. And we press enter. On the right side now we have our index.html file, which is completely empty but we can have an exclamation mark to create an HTML boilerplate. So we can just add exclamation mark. As you can see, we have a auto suggestion from Emmet. Then if you click on this one, the first auto suggestion, we get the HTML boilerplate. So let me explain this real quick because you might be familiar with this, but if you are the beginner and this is your first project, so let me explain it real quick. So the first line here is the doc type, which is as, uh, defining the version of the HTML. For example, if you are HTML 1, 2, 3, you have to mention here, but for HTML 5, you just need to have HTML here. Then the next tag, which is the closing tag. As you can see, we have HTML here and here. This is the tag that is covering all the HTML file, including the head tag and the body tag. And here the lang attribute defines the language of the page. And in our case, from the boilerplate, we got the English, but if you're working on a different language, you can just define your own language here. Then we have the head tag, which includes the metadata tag and also the title of the page. The first metadata tag defines the charset char char of the uh, page, and we're using UTF-8. UTF-8 is the standard that contains almost all the characters and symbols and it is recommended by html5 so the html5 the 
recommends us to use UTF-8 because, as I mentioned, it contains most of the characters and symbols, so we, the users won't have any problem seeing the website's characters and symbols. Then we have the next metadata tag, which is the compatibility metadata tag. And this one just tells the Internet Explorer to use the most recent rendering engine, which is Edge, because the Microsoft is, is not working on the Internet Explorer anymore. Their, their focus is on the Edge, Microsoft Edge, and they want the Internet Explorer to use the same uh, engine as well. Then we have the viewport metadata tag. It tells the, the first uh, one, which is content, defines the device's screen to be the width of the screen. For example, if you have a mobile screen, you see the uh, site smaller. If you have a desktop, you see the site bigger. And then we have the initial zoom scale of the browser, which is the 100% here. So if you want the 80% zoom level, for example, here we have 100% but you can have 80, 90, but the initial value is defined by this attribute. Then we have the title of the page. We just, now we have a document. You can see this title inside the browser. So let me open the browser where I'm uh, using the live server extension. And if you click here on go live at the bottom, uh, the browser is going to be open by our uh, HTML file. As you can see, index.html is open here and the title is document, as we mentioned here. So let me bring the web, the, brow, uh, the VS Code on the left side and the browser on the right side so you can see the changes in real time. And the title is now document. Let's change the title to the name of the project, which is loan calculator. So we just say loan calculator. All right. So now we can see the title is different, loan calculator. After that, as you can see from the final version, we have a title. And we have three inputs and finally we have monthly payments. Okay. And all of them are inside a container. So we want to have a div first that contains all these things inside it. So inside a body tag, we add a div as a container. We use that div. Then we have a H1 tag, which uh, the just we want to say loan calculator here so we just say loan calculator all right so you can see the h1 tag here and um, we're going to style it later using css but for now we're just having the html the next one we have uh, uh, three inputs and also we have a paragraph here okay so after this h1 tag we have a paragraph and uh, it just says loan amount and after that we just have a dollar sign okay and inside this paragraph we have an input so we just add an input and the type of the input is number. So I just choose input clone number. We get the auto suggestion. If you click on the auto suggestion, it's going to populate the input with the type of number. The reason we choose number because we want to only allow the user have number in that inside this input, nothing else. So if you put the if you don't mention type number, they can even uh, put the string or alphabet. Okay, so it doesn't have a name this input, but the ID is unique here because we wanna later 
detect uh, which input is using. So we have to put ID for each of the uh, inputs. So the first input, the ID would be, for example, loan dash uh, amount. So I just let me write loan dash amount okay and uh, we also have a minimum and maximum amount so the minimum for this one the would be one and we also have a maximum we just say for example five hundred thousand dollars for example you can choose anything you like and also we have a value. So we want to have a default value. For example, in the final version, the default value is 10,000 for the loan amount, for the interest rate is 10 and for the months to pay is 12. So here we just choose a value here. Okay. And the value for this one is, for example, we just say $10,000 because we want the just initial value between 10,000. The other thing, the other inputs are very similar to the first one. So we can just copy this paragraph using Alt Shift arrow down two times. And we're going to fill the other inputs and change them here. So the, the title for the next input would be, for example, interest rate. So we just say interest rate and we just add the percentage here. The mean value for this is different. We just set it to be zero and also we want the maximum to be 100%. So just uh, it's no interest rate is 100% but we just in case we just put like this and the value for this one we just say 10% interest rate all right and also for changing the value as you can see when we change this one one by one goes up we don't want this uh, interest rate to, ch to be changed one by one uh, the step would be one we, we can change the step here and the step for this one, we just want to set it to be 0.1. So it's going to be changed like this. Okay. And finally, the last input is just months to pay. So let me write down here, months to pay. And uh, so the type is number. Also, we didn't change the ID for the this one. We, I forgot to change it. So be sure to change this one to interest rate. So interest dash rate. And for this one, the ID is months. So this one should be months to pay. And the ID is months dash to dash pay. Okay, these are the unique IDs that we can track later the inputs, they changed in the inputs. And also the minimum and maximum for the months to pay. For example, the minimum we just say six months, and the maximum, for example, 48 months. And the value. For this input, for example, we set it to be 12. Okay. So we've done with the input parts. And the last part is just a, a paragraph here saying monthly payment. So here we just add a paragraph and we just say monthly payment. Okay, and we add a clone here. So that was it for the HTML part of the projects. So in the next section, we're going to use CSS to style the projects. So see you in the next section.
All right. In the last section, we have completed the HTML part of the project. In this section, we're going to start the projects using CSS. As you can see from the final version, the container is in the middle of the screen and also the input is uh, occupying the whole space of the container. So we just need to bring them in the center and also style them with CSS. So first thing first, we need to create the CSS file. So we can open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And here we just uh, uh, create a file and we just name the file a style dot CSS and we press enter. In order to use the CSS file, we need to go to the index.html and we add a link to this CSS file. So we go to index.html, just after the title, we add a link tag. We just write link and in the auto suggestions, we click on the one with the CSS. So this is going to make a link between the HTML and the CSS file. As you can see, the relationship is the style sheet and the destination of the file is a style.css because they are both on the same directory. So we don't need to add anything else. We just need to add the name of the style.css. Now we can use the style.css inside the uh, our project. So we close the explore section so we have more space. And also we want to add more things here, for example, classes and other things. Because we want to target these elements, for example, this paragraph or input, we need to know how we need to add a class to them to target them inside the style CSS. So for each of the inputs, I'm going to add a class with, uh, with the name of input. So I'm going to add them together using the dual cursor. So I just keep the alt and choose the other input as well. And we just can write class for all of them. And we press enter and inside the class, we just put the, uh, we just say inputs. So we can now target this input all of them using this class and also for the this div i want to have a class and we just call it container okay and also for the this monthly payment paragraph i want to just add a class and i call it payment all right so now we can just target them easily inside the style.css. So inside the style.css, first thing first, we're going to style the body section. So we just write here body. And we open a set of curly braces. The first thing I want to do, I want to remove the a space between the text, this container and the, the wall of the browser. So we can simply do that using just adding the padding zero and also margin zero. So this is going to remove the space around us so we can simply install them now. And then we want to add the height and display flex. So we want to change the display to flex because we want to bring the container to container to the center so we need to, to change the display to from block to flex and also we have to set the height for it because we want to bring them to the center vertically so we need to have a height of 100% so the CSS knows that uh, bringing to the center is just bringing in the middle of the 100% of the height so we set the height of to be 100% of the viewport height. So whatever view we have, we set the 100% uh, of it. 
And now we can bring this container to the center. First thing, we want to bring it horizontally using justify content center. As you can see, it came to the center horizontally. For bring it uh, to the center vertically, we can use align items center. So this is possible because we have used the height 100% viewport height. Otherwise, we couldn't reach that. And also, we want I wanted to change the font family to courier new courier mono space. So this is kind of a cool uh, font. So that's it for the body section. Now we want to target this div that is containing all of them. So this is a div with a class of container. So we can simply target that using dot container. All right, and we in, uh, we add a set of curly braces. So the the things we want to do, we want to change the, the background color to be similar to the final version, which is kind of green color. And uh, we just need to say background or background color. We just change it to dark cyan, this color. And I want the text to be white. These texts, I want them to be white to be easier to be read. So we just change the color to be Alice blue, which is kind of white, but it's not completely white. And we add a padding. We want to add a space around the text. So add a padding, 20 pixels. And also I want these borders to be rounded. So we can simply achieve that using border radius 10 pixels. Okay. So now we have completed the container. Let's install these inputs. So we know we know we know that that the inputs they have the class of input. So we can target them using dot input. Okay. And uh, they want, uh, I want to do, I want to change the width to be 100% firstly. So they're going to cover all the space. And also we, uh, we can change the font size to make the size of the font bigger. And I'll set it to be 20 pixels. And also we want to change the height. So we want to have a bigger height and it's said to be 30 pixels. Okay. That looks fine. Let's just install this paragraph here. We have added a class with the name of payments here. So we can target that using dot payment and the things we want to i want to do is just to change the font weight to be 600 to make it a little bit thicker like this and also make it a little bit larger using font size to be 20 pixels okay i think it looks fine So that was it for the CSS part of the projects. In the next section, we're going to add functionality and calculate the loan using JavaScript. So see you in the next section for the JavaScript part of the project. All right, in the last section, we have completed the CSS part of the project. In this section, we are going to add more functionality to the website using JavaScript. So we want to calculate 
firstly, the interest of the loan. And also after that, we want to uh, calculate the monthly payment. And we want to replace this one with the one uh, is calculated. And we just say monthly payment, for example, $1,000 per month or what? similar to this one. The first thing we need to do is just get these numbers from these forms and we track the changes here. So uh, the first step is to create the uh, JS file, the JavaScript file. So we need to open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E and here on the left side we can create a new file and we call it index dot js similar to the one we have done for the css we need to add a link to the html file for the javascript file as well so here but the javascript file the link should be at the end the css is at the beginning but the javascript is at the end the reason is we want the Com the page is completely loaded and then we get the data and bring it to the JavaScript and calculate it inside the JavaScript. Otherwise, we don't have access to the website anymore. So we, you should always put the link of the JavaScript at the end of the body section. In order to do that, we need to just add a, a script tag. We just write SC and we can get the this auto suggestion saying a script uh, double colon src so the, the src which is the destination of the link as the both files are located at the same directory is just index.js now we can use the javascript file inside the project so we can close this section and uh, the things we want to do is track the changes inside the input okay we can bring the all of them inside the javascript the other way that is easier is to add an unchanged event listener inside the input section that is going to call a function inside this file so we have three inputs so let me choose all of them by using alt keeping the alt and clicking so we need to add and unchange event listener. The unchange event listener. So let me. Uh, we were I was typing here as well. So let me choose it again. So here, here, and here. Okay. So I write down unchange. And I get this suggestion on change. I click, I uh, press enter. This on change is going to trigger a function. So we need to put the function. So we just call the function calculate loan, for example, anything you can put. Just we open and close a parenthesis the reason we put the parenthesis is we want to call the function if you don't put the parenthesis it's not going to call the function okay so we need to now create this function inside the index.js file all right so we go to index.js and we create the function here so we just create a function we can click here on the function statement in the auto suggestion. The name of the function is calculate loan. And it doesn't have any parameters. So each time we just change this uh, form, we're going to call this function. Let's try it. For example, we console log. Uh, we just say change and let's uh, open the X uh, let's use Ctrl Shift C to open the uh, 
console here. So we click here on the console and each time we change the input, we choose, we just have to call the function, which is console logging change. You see each of them is calling the function because all these inputs, they have the unchanged on that. All right. So instead of console logging here, we're going to, so let me delete this console log. So we're going to get the value of these inputs. We want to get the values and we want to calculate the interest and monthly payment from these values. So for example, we want to get the first value. For example, we want to get this loan amount value. The things we need to do, we just say loan, loan amount value. This is just the name. And this name is equal to document. We want to target the document. Document is all the website. So we just uh, use get element by ID, which is a method from JavaScript that is going to get the ID. For example, the ID of the first input is loan amount. So we can copy this one and just inside a parenthesis and a double quote, we can put the loan amount. And we can target inside this using uh, the target the value. So because we want to get the value of that. All right. So now if we, let me fix this. If we console log now the loan amount value, and here if you open the console, uh, if you open the console using F12, for example, let me bring it down. So now the console is open here. We open the console here. Now, if you change this loan amount, for example, it's now 10,000. If you make it 10,000 and one, you can see the 10,000 and one here. So we are getting the, this amount and console logging it by just uh, calling it here. Okay, any amount we write down here, for example, 300, we see here, okay? Similar to the one we have done for the loan amount value, we can do for the interest rate, months to pay, and other things as well. So let's do it here. Let's close. Uh, let's delete the console log, and we just get the interest rate value. This is, uh, this is similar, we just target the document and we use the get element by ID method. And this is uh, inside, it should be the ID of that input. The ID of the input of this second input is interest dash rate. So we can copy it, copy it and paste it here. And we can target the value here, we're just saying dot value. Let's do it for the months to pay as well. So we just say months to pay value. And this is going to be equal to document dot get element by ID. And inside the parentheses, we just put the ID of the next input which is months dash to dash pay and we put it inside a double quote and we target the value like this now we have the value of the all the inputs now we can calculate the interest in order to calculate the interest we just let me just make another constant and we call it interest So interest is equal to, uh, this is the way we calculate interest. We just have to have loan amount value 
and this is going to be multiplied by the interest value the interest rate value multiply by 0 0.01 which is the converting the interest rate to percent because uh, this is just in 10 but by uh, multiplying to 0 0.01 we're going to convert it to percent then uh, all of them is going to be over or uh, divided by months to pay value okay now we have the amount of interest now we can calculate the monthly payment so the monthly payment we just write down monthly payment is going to be equal to we add a parenthesis we just say loan amount value over months to pay value plus the interest that we have calculated here so we just say interest okay this is the way we calculate the monthly payment so this is not related to javascript this is just a formulation the uh, the accountant used to cal uh, calculate the monthly payment but the way we calculate and write down the formulation is like this inside the javascript now we want to put the, this amount inside here okay so first thing first we need to get this we have it here a paragraph saying monthly payment but it doesn't have an id we can target it by the class but the simpler way is to add an id here and we just call it payment and inside the index.js we can change the uh, html inside this paragraph by just saying we just target the document we get that element by using the get element by id and the id was the payment and we want to change inside this element we want to change the the inner html of this place okay so dot html inner html should be equal and uh, because it's dynamic we want to put the monthly payment inside and monthly payment is a variable we need to add a backtick here backtick is located over tab tab key it's different from the normal quote so some students may they make this mistake so this is a different things so you add a back take and inside the back take we just write down monthly payment and this is going to be equal to a uh, this monthly payment but because this is dynamic we need to put it as a variable so in it should be inside a dollar and a curly braces and now we can copy this monthly payment and put it here okay now whatever we have changed here for example we make this is 10,000 we make a 10,001 this is going to calculate the monthly payment all right this one too but as you can see sometimes these ditches digits are too long and we don't need actually this kind of digits we can just uh, round this one or just keep these two two digits the simplest way is just add to this monthly payment we just add a two fix method from javascript we just say dot two fixed and we want to fix it to two digits so we just say two here okay now if we change this one you see that we have only two digits here okay now anything you type you can just see the monthly payment dynamically so we can easily calculate any loan amount using this website 
that was it for our project uh, and that was for the javascript part i hope you enjoyed and learned many things see you in the next project welcome back to another project in this project we are going to create a weight converter as you can see from the final version of the project we have an input which we can change the number that we prefer for the pounds for example i just write down 100 and simultaneously we see the result inside here for the weight in kilogram after 10 seconds the result is going to be removed and the uh, input is empty so we're going to use a method called set timeout to do this trick and also we, we, we have added an error situation for example if I put a mi minus number we see an error here for example minus 100 we get please enter a valid number so we're going to learn how to handle the error situation as well and how to remove that error message after two seconds so first thing first we need to add the an event listener for the input and by adding that event listener we're going to call a function to do the desired functionalities in the next section we're going to create the html part of the project so see you in the next section Alright, welcome back to the project. In this section, we're going to create the HTML part of the project. I have put the final version inside the browser in order for us to compare our code with the final version. The first thing we need to do is to create an HTML file for our project. So I'm going to use a Visual Studio Code as a text editor, but you can use any text editor you prefer. So after opening the Visual Studio Code, we can close the Get Started tab, and in the File menu, we can click on the Open Folder. So in this way, we can create the folder that we desire, and we're going to create the project inside that folder. I want to create the project inside the desktop. So I'm going to create a folder inside the desktop and I'm going to call it the name of the project. So let's change the name of the folder and then we call it weight converter. So after pressing enter we have changed the re uh, and renamed the folder now we can click on the select folder to select the folder here we can close the get started tab again and inside the explorer section which is now by default on the folder that we have created as you can see weight converter now we can create our html file here by clicking on this icon and we just name the file index.html and we press enter. Now we have the file on the right side. Uh, the, it's completely empty, but we can use an exclamation mark like this and use the emit abbreviations using this auto suggestion to create the HTML boilerplate, which gives us the doc type an HTML tag, head tag, and the body tag. Let me explain each of them real quick, and then we can start doing our own project. So the first line is related to the doc type, which tells the browser which version of HTML we are using. For HTML5, we just need to have an HTML attribute here, just HTML, nothing else. Then we have the HTML tag, which is covering all the website, including the head tag and the body tag. 
the length attribute inside the HTML tag, the opening tag, sets the language of the page. And in our case, we have chosen English for our project. Then we have the head tag, which includes the metadata tag and also the title tag. The first metadata tag related is related to the chart set attribute and we have chosen by default UTF-8 which is recommended by HTML5 because it nearly contains all the characters and symbols. So the users that are using and uh, seeing our website won't have any problem seeing the characters and symbols inside the pages. Then we have the metadata tag which uh, sets the this metadata tag is for compatibility reason because the people who are still using Internet Explorer but they don't get any support for that. So this is going to tell the Internet Explorer to use the most recent rendering engine which is Edge, Microsoft Edge. So Microsoft is also is just now working on the Edge and does not support the Internet Explorer. So the Internet Explorer browser is going to automatically use the Edge instead. Then we have the Viewport Metadata tag, which sets the width of the screen to the device's width. For example, if we have a mobile screen and the screen is a smaller, the width of the browser is going to be set is smaller than the time. For example, we are using a bigger screen like tablet or a laptop screen. The next section inside this metadata tag is going to set the initial zoom level of the browser, which by default is 100% by just putting one here. Then we have the title which sets the title of the page. Let me show you the title inside the browser. So now we can open the browser using the extension that you might probably install, or I highly recommend you install this. It's called Live Server. And then you can click on the Go Live to open the browser automatically into the port 5500 and with the index.html uh, open here. So the title is document. Let's bring the website on the right side so we can see the changes in real time. And let's close the explorer section to have more space. So let's bring this one here. So now we can change the title and see it uh, inside the tab of the browser we set the title to be the name of the project which is weight converter so we can see the changes here inside the browser and now we're gonna we can start uh, working on the elements inside the browser and we can put it inside the body section so if you look at the final version, let me draw it for you. So we have a container here, which is just inside the and the center of the screen. The con uh, this container is just a, an empty div with a class of container. Then we have a title here, the H1 tag, setting the title of the a website which is a weight converter then we have another div here which includes a label and also one input here on the right side you can see then finally we have something else here let me show it with a different color so this is the this is the place that you see the result. For example, when you change the pounds here, for example, I set 100 pounds, you see that the kilogram is 45. 
So, uh, but if you make a mistake, for example, you don't put anything, you get an error here. For example, we just put zero. Please enter a valid number. So we're going to have another paragraph here for the error as well. So let's start adding these things to our website. So as I mentioned, we have a div with a class of container that is going to cover everything inside it. So we're going to write down dot container and using Emmet abbreviation, we can get a div with a class of container. Inside this container, we're going to have an H1 tag for the heading of the website. And we're going to add a class of heading. So later we're going to style this heading using CSS using this class. So we just write down h1.heading and we press enter. We get an h1 tag with the class of heading. And inside the h1 tag, we're going to say the name of the project, which is weight converter. We see it here inside the browser in real time. So we're going to use CSS to install this later and target that using this class. After that, we're going to have the, this label and the input. They are going to be inside a div. So we're going to have a div with a class of input dash container. And this is going to cover a label, which is going to be for pounds. So I just write down pounds. And the text inside this label is pounds with a clone. We should see it now here. After the label, we're going to have an input. The, the input is going to be with the type of number. So we can add input clone number. And this is going to give us a, an input with a class of number. The name, uh, we, we don't need a name, but we can, we can just, uh, maybe we can delete this name. For this project, we don't need the name. ID is going to be input because we want to target this one later using JavaScript. So we need to add an ID and we can style this using a class with the name of input as well. And we can change the step here. So let me show you what's, what the step is. Now, if we want to change the number, it goes one by one. But uh, you can change the steps. We just say, for example, I want it to be changed 0.1. So each of them is going to increase by 0.1. So that was it for this section for the input container. After that, we're going to have a paragraph saying your weight in kilogram is and here we're going to have a span which is just an empty something but we can target this one separately later using JavaScript so we're going to add uh, for example a hard-coded something here for example uh, 300 for now but later we're going to calculate this one based on the input and show it uh, here. And this span is going to have an ID of result. All right. So uh, we're going to add the error as well. So we're going to have a paragraph with a class of error and also with the ID of error because we want to change it later as well. Then we have inside the paragraph, we just write down now error for the styling reason. So we know how to style it. And later we're going to show this one dynamically using JavaScript as well. We can change the text, we can change its 
color and etc using javascript but for now that is enough for the html part so we have added the head tag the inputs and the label we, we have added the paragraph with the span and also we have added another paragraph for the error so in the next section we're going to install the project using css and we're going to make and achieve this styling which is a new morphism design using css so see you in the next section for the css part of the project All right, in the last section, we have completed the HTML part of the project. In this section, we're going to start the project using CSS. If you look at the final version here, you can see that we have a container here that is going to be just uh, aligned in the center of the browser both vertically and uh, horizontally. And also we have a title here. We just want to change the color and then we have this uh, input section. And finally we have two sections for the result and an error. And also we're going to set the background color of the screen to be these three colors which we are going to use the linear uh, grid gradient for uh, adding the background color so i'm going to show you how to do it inside the css file so the first things we need to do is to create the css file so in the, inside the visual studio code we're going to open the explorer section and here on the left, inside the Explorer section, we click, we click on this icon to create a new file and we call it a style.css and we press enter. Now we have the file on the right side here inside this tab. But before using this file, we need to add a link to this file within the HTML code. So we need to come back to the index.html. Let me close this. And here after the title tag, we need to add a link to the CSS stack. We just not, uh, we just write link and we click on the third auto suggestion, the one with the CSS. This is going to give us a link with the relationship between the index.html and install a CSS. And here the href attribute defines the destination of the file and as both files are located at the same directory, we need to just write down here a style.css. So now we can use the CSS file and we can start a styling our project. The first place we want to style is this body section. We want to change its background color and want to bring everything to the center using display flex. So we're going to target the body by just writing down body. Let's see it inside the final, uh, this uh, working project tab. First, we remove the default margin by setting it to zero. This is going to remove the uh, space around all elements. Then we can change the background color we just say background. We want to use linear gradient or linear gradient. So I want the color to be this way. So like a first color, second color, and third color. So we can just set that by just using two left top. And we set the first color to be yellow we set the second color to be light blue and finally we set the last color to yellow as well so two yellow and uh, you can see this is yellow 
blue and yellow but you can see it it's just uh, repeated three times because the height of the screen is not defined so we need to set the mean height to be 100% of the viewport height which is going to change the height to the device's uh, height uh, I, I've just added some zoom level here if you remove the zoom level you can see this is just the height of the browser and now we can change the display to flex to bring everything to the center so we can change the justify content to center to bring everything to the center hor uh, horizontally then we can use align item center to bring everything to the center vertically the other things I want to do for the body section I want to change the font family and we s I want to set it to be courier new so this is my favorite font and uh, you but you can use any font that you prefer in your project let's set the color of the fonts to be dark cyan uh, this is not kind of visible now but we, we want to add another background color for the container so this is going to be better so after this we're going to install the container this container which is covering everything this div with the class of container so we add a div with the class of we have the div with the class of container we want to target that because it is a class we need to add a dot here and after the dot we need to say container and let's first change the background color so we can see everything clearly I want to set the color RGBA RGBA stands for red green blue alpha for the red green and blue I want to add 255 which gives us the white color and I want to add for the alpha which is setting the transparency level I want, to, uh, I want it to be 0.3 which is transparent and you can see the color through it so this is going to give us a glassy design or uh, they call it neomorphism okay so after that we're going to add a padding so this is a space around the element inside this container and we're going to set it to be 20 pixels in order to this uh, container to be more visible we can add some box shadow we can add some back shadow around it so you make it more visible so we add a box shadow we set the x-axis shadow to be 0 y-axis to be 4 pixels we can see it here 10 pixels uh, blurness so this is going to blur the, the shadow around the element but we have more on the y-axis because it has 4 pixels here then we want to change the color we don't want it to be uh, green we can use RGBA again but this time instead of white we give give it 0, 0, 0 for black and 0.3 for transparency so this is going to give us a dark black uh, color but with some transparency so it's similar to a shadow effect let's make the uh, around this container rounded by using border radius and we set the border radius to be 10 pixels so this is the size of the container we can set the width to be 85 per, uh, percent and then this 85 percent is going to cover 85% of the full size as you can see the space around it changes by changing the browser 
a size but I want this one to be a smaller when we have a bigger screen so the simplest way is to use max width of 450 pixels like this so this is kind of nice now so that's it for the container section. Let's uh, continue with the other section. So after that, after this container, we have this heading, the weight converter. So we can install that heading here. Or I feel the heading, the size, everything is fine. We don't need to touch it. So we just uh, install this input container which is covering the label and the input. So I'm going to install the input container. So we just say dot input container to target that class. And I want them to be next to each other but with the space between them so I change the display to flex and set the justify content to be a space between so this is going to separate two uh, elements inside a div and let's use align item center to bring them uh, exactly in the center vertically so you maybe you you don't notice it but when we increase the size of the input, this pound is a bit off and it's a, a bit uh, here. So it's not in the middle if we don't use align item center. So let's uh, increase the size of the font to be 18 pixels. And also we set the font weight to be 700, which makes it bit bolder then we can target this input the input has a class of input here as you can see so we can target that one by just saying dot input I want to change the padding so let's add some padding and this is going to be 10 pixels So let's see, inside the final version, we have a placeholder, but we didn't add for our own website. We can add the placeholder simply by just inside the input, we add a placeholder and we just say like this one, enter number. So we just say enter number like this. So now we can see the styling and effects here as well. So after setting up the padding, we can set the width. I want the width to be 70%. So this is going to help us to have a responsive design. So when we have a bigger size, we have a bigger input, or if we open the dev tools, and we choose this section for the mobile responsive design. If we decrease the size, you can see the input size decreases as well. So this is going to help us to create a responsive design. But if you set, for example, with 200 pixels, it works now, but when we decrease the size, it goes off the container. So the best design is to use percentage for the width okay so that's it so let's bring it this to the right side so after the width we're going to add a background color so we just say background and i want it to have an rgba with the white color and 30% transparency and also I want the border color as well to make it uh, more beautiful so the border color is going to be an RGBA2 
with white color but the transparency I want it to be 50% which gives us this uh, beautiful design and finally let's add some font size of 18 pixels to make it bigger we can add some uh, optional border radius as well so make it 10 pixel border radius we can set the color now if you type you see the color is black we can set the color to be dark green and when we click on it i don't want to see this border so we can remove that by using outline none this is completely optional actually this is the outline is recommended for websites so it's good for uh, people with disability to understand the website but uh, just for the the purpose of our own website we're going to remove it because uh, we should this is our preference so you can keep it the outline you can change the color of outline as well it's totally up to you so after the input we're going to install this error i want to make the color of the error this paragraph with the class of error i want the color of the error to be red so i just target that one by just using dot error and i set the color to be red as simple as that all right so that was it for our css part of the project we have made the website responsive for all sizes including the mobile and the desktop and also we have added the background color using the linear gradient and finally we have created a glassy design using the RGBA color for the background of this container. In the next section, we're going to add more functionality to the website, like the final version. So we're going to calculate the kilogram based on the pounds. And also we want to uh, just add this uh, error message if the number is zero or less than zero. So in the next section, we're going to work on the more functionality. So see you in the next section for the JavaScript part of the project. All right, welcome back. In the last section, we have completed the CSS part of the project. In this section, we're going to add more functionality to the project using JavaScript. So if you look at the final version, we have this input. If we change the input, we go up, we see the real time change inside this section, which is showing the kilogram ver uh, conversion of the pounds. And if you go, for example, we just write down minus something, we get an error, please enter a valid number. And the error is going to is going to uh, go away after two seconds if you look at this goes away after two seconds and the number here if you write down 10 this one is going to removed after 10 seconds this one and this one gets empty too just pay attention so we're going to use a set time out which is going to call a function after a set period of time. So we're going to, for example, after 10 seconds or two seconds, we're going to remove something or set the value of some inputs to empty string. So we're going to learn how to use set time out in this section. And also we're going to learn how to get the information from this input and simultaneously change the output the other sections so the first things we need to do is to create a file for the javascript so we need to go back to the visual studio code and we open the 
explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And here we can create a new file and we call it index.js. Before using the JavaScript file, we need to add a link to the JavaScript file within the HTML file. And we need to do it at the end of the body tag. Despite and on the contrary of the link tag to the style CSS, which is, which is located in the head tag, the JavaScript link tag should be at the end of the body uh, tag. The reason for this is because we are, we need the elements to be loaded and we get the elements and give it to the JavaScript. Otherwise, we don't have access to the elements if we put the a script tag at the beginning or in the head tag. So we can just write down SC and we click on the second auto suggestion, the one with the SRC. So now we have this S script tag. The SRC attribute defines the destination of the JavaScript file. And as both files are located at the same directory, we can use and just write down index js for the destination and now we are able to use javascript in our project let's close the explore section to have more space and uh, let's bring the website to the right side so we can see the changes in real time The first thing I want to do is remove this error inside the html file because we want to create this text using JavaScript. So we don't want to see anything at the beginning. So now we go to the JavaScript. The, the things we want to do is to add, add an event listener to this input. So we need to bring this input inside the JavaScript. If you remember here, the input has an ID of input. So we can target that one using the method called get element by ID. So we need to create a constant and we call it input element. And this is going to be equal to document because we want to target document inside the browser. And this is going to just, we can uh, call this uh, method, which is get element by ID and the ID we want to pass here is input because the ID of the input was input. So now we have access to this element. We can add the add event listener to this input. So we just say input element dot add event listener and the event we want to add to this one is input. So any change happens to the input we want to call a function and we want to call the function update results. So let's create the function at the top here. So we call, we create a function and we call it update results. And for now we just console log something. For example, we just console log change. So now if you open the console inside the browser using F12, uh, let's bring this one to the bottom so you can see. So this is on the console. If we change something here, for example, I change the number, any change you see that we are console logging the word change here. So we have created the add event listener correctly and also we are using the function correctly as well and instead of this instead of this uh, console logging just a change i want to console log whatever inside this input we have access to this input element so we have the input element. We can target its value by just saying dot 
value. So now, for example, if you write down here 100, we get the 100 each time a number change. For example, you do 100.23 and you see everything here. So we can get the value of this input by just targeting its value. So now we want to make firstly the error. So we create a, a, a condition here. For example, we say if the input element dot value is less than zero or is none. Is none means uh, it doesn't have any value. So if it's empty or it's less than zero, we want to call, uh, we want to do something. So we just say input that value. If the input that value is none or it's less than zero, we want to, yeah, let's, let's close this. So we want to do something. So we want to uh, just first thing, uh, first things first. We want to get this error. So the error has the ID of error. So we can target that one here by using the get element by ID method. So we create a constant and we just call it error element. And this is going to be equal to document because we want to target all the browser. And we just say get element by ID and the ID we want to pass is error. So now we can have and manipulate this error element. So we just write down here error element. And if you want to change the inner text to be, for example, please enter a correct or valid number. So now, if the number is zero, we should see the change inside the error element. So let's see what we... So we have called this one and the, uh, the ID was error. And the inner text is this one as well. Let's add some condition here too. So let's, uh, let's use minus 10. So now we can see the please enter a valid number appears here. All right. So, oh, we didn't care, include the zero here. So I'm going to add a uh, less than or equal zero here. So now if we just uh, if zero or less than zero we see that please enter a valid number. But if it's more than uh, zero we want to remove this uh, error or we want to remove it after a specific uh, time. So we can do that by just adding a set timeout method here. So we just say set timeout. The set timeout has two things, a function and a number. So we're going to create a function here like this. And this is the second parameter is the how many seconds you want this function after how many seconds you want to call this function for example i want to call it after two seconds this is milliseconds so 2000 milliseconds is equal to two seconds so we want to do something for example we want to re uh, set the result yeah, sorry we set the error element dot inner text we want to set that to an empty string all right, so now we get the error. After two seconds, it's going to away. Okay, you see, but it has some problem because if you get the, another error, but the previous time is not reset. So be, because 
uh, maybe someone persisting to put the error, you get a lot of these things. So, and then you don't get an error. So we want to reset this set timeout each time we change the number here. So here, before the set timeout, first we need to just uh, create a name for the set timeout. So at first, at the top, we create a let and we just create a name for that one. For example, we just say error time. And then we set the this error time equal to this set timeout. And before calling that set timeout, we need to clear the cl use the clear timeout and we pass this error time. This is going to reset the timeout, the set timeout. So now if you go down, you see always we get the error. And it doesn't go away. So until I stop, and this is going to go away. So after also removing this, uh, make it empty, I want to actually make this input, uh, remove the value from the input as well. So now it's minus 0.2, we get the error. But after removing the error, I want to make this one to be removed too. So we need to have a, uh, we just set the input element. So we need to just uh, target that input element. We can just, yeah, we can just put it here. We just say input element dot value because we want to change its value. And we want to set the value to be, for example, uh, an empty string as well. So, so we just say minus one. And then after two seconds, this is going to be cleared. And also the error is going to be removed as well. So we, ha we can have access to the top number, but we cannot go back here. Okay, so that was it for the error part. So if there is no error, so we want to do other things. So if there is a positive number or there is something here, we want to do other things. So we want to have access to this 300. So this 300, let me uh, remove this 300. We want access to this ID of results. So we're going to bring that item here as well. We just create a constant and we just call it result element. And this is going to be equal to document to target all the browser. And we can use get element by ID to get that element, which has the ID of results. So now we can manipulate this result element here so here we just uh, set the result element dot inner text. We want this one to, to be converted to weight. So we want uh, firstly the value of the input element. So we just say input element dot value. And we want to divide this one to 2.2. .2 so this is going to give us the, let's test it. So you see the number here. Sometimes if you put some uh, something else, you get an error. So we need to always convert this value to number by just adding a plus here. This is going to convert even a, a string to number. So for when you're using a input with a, a type of number, always remember to add this plus, otherwise you get some issue. And also, I don't want uh, too many decimals for the number. So I can fix that one by just adding a method inside uh, the JavaScript called to fixed. 
and this uh, we we want to set the decimal numbers to just the uh, two and now we just have two decimal numbers here all right so let's close this console we don't need it anymore also i want to remove uh, this one make it empty and also remove the result after 10 seconds so as a practice it's very similar to the error you can pause the video and do it yourself and uh, try it yourself and compare it with the one I do after you see my result. So pause the video and do the challenge. All right. I hope that you have done it yourself because it's a good practice because I have already done it one time. So it's very similar. So let's do it here. So we're going to have a set timeout. So set timeout, as I mentioned, it has a function and it has a number here for calling the function after this amount. For example, I wanted to call the function after 10 seconds. So inside the function, first thing first, I want to set the result element dot inner text to be an empty string. And also I want to uh, set the input element dot value to be an empty string as well. So and then as I mentioned here, because you get a conflict, for example, if when I'm uh, increasing the number after 10 seconds is going to remove my number. As you can see, it gets kind of messy then I cannot do anything here so you need to reset the set timeout so I'm going to call and create another variable called result time and then I just make this one equal to this set timeout and here I can just use the clear timeout method and call this result time so now whatever we do here we just increase the number even more than 10 seconds each time we change the number actually we are resetting the set timeout but as soon as i stop after 10 seconds, we're going to see that the input is going to be empty and also we're going to remove this number here as well, as you can see now. So that was it for our project. I hope you enjoyed and learned many things. We have learned how to use set timeout method, how to reset the set timeout and how to call a function while we are changing the input so that you can see the uh, the number simultaneously change in the output and also we, we have learned how to handle the error if we, we want a certain condition in our project i hope you enjoyed uh, and uh, learned many things see you in the next project